Section one of the art of cookery made plain and easy, which far exceeds anything of the kind yet published. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Art of Cookery Made Plain and Easy by Hannah Glass To the Reader I believe I have attempted a branch of cookery which nobody has yet thought worth their while to write upon. But as I have both seen and found by experience that the generality of servants are greatly wanting in that point, therefore I have taken upon me to instruct them in the best manner I am capable, and, I dare say, that every servant who can but read will be capable of making a tolerable good cook, and those who have the least notion of cookery cannot miss of being very good ones. If I have not wrote in the high polite style, I hope I shall be forgiven, for my intention is to instruct the lower sort, and therefore must treat them in their own way. For example, when I bid them lard a fowl, if I should bid them lard with large lardoons, they would not know what I meant. But when I say they must lard with little pieces of bacon, they know what I mean. So in many other things in cookery, the great cooks have such a high way of expressing themselves, that the poor girls are at a loss to know what they mean. And in all receipt books yet printed, there are such an odd jumble of things as would quite spoil a good dish. And indeed some things so extravagant that it would be almost a shame to make use of them when a dish can be made full as good, or better, without them. For example, when you entertain ten or twelve people, you shall use for a cullis a leg of veal and a ham, which, with the other ingredients, makes it very expensive, and all this only to mix with other sauce and again the essence of ham for sauce to one dish when i will prove it for about three shillings i will make as rich and high a sauce as all that will be when done for example take a large deep stew pan half a pound of ham fat and lean together cut the fat and lay it over the bottom of the pan then take a pound of veal cut it into thin slices beat it well with the back of a knife lay it all over the ham then have six pennyworth of the coarse lean part of the beef cut thin and well beat lay a layer of it all over with some carrot then the lean of the ham cut thin and laid over that then cut two onions and strew over a bundle of sweet herbs four or five blades of mace six or seven cloves, a spoonful of allspice or Jamaica pepper, half a nutmeg beat, a pigeon beat all to pieces, lay that all over, half an ounce of truffles and morals, then the rest of your beef, a good crust of bread toasted very brown and dry on both sides. You may add an old cock beat to pieces. Cover it close and let it stand over a slow fire two or three minutes, then pour on boiling water enough to fill the pan. Cover it close and let it stew till it is as rich as you would have it, and then strain off all that sauce. Put all your ingredients together again, fill the pan with boiling water, put in a fresh onion, a blade of mace, and a piece of carrot. Cover it close and let it stew till it is as strong as you want it. This will be full as good as the essence of ham for all sorts of fowls, or indeed most made dishes, mixed with a glass of wine and two or three spoonfuls of ketchup. When your first gravy is cool, skim off all the fat, and keep it for use. 
this falls far short of the expense of a leg of veal and ham and answers every purpose you want if you go to market the ingredients will not come to above half a crown or for about eighteen pence you may make as much good gravy as will serve twenty people take twelve penneth worth of coarse lean beef which will be six or seven pounds cut it all to pieces flour it well take a quarter of a pound of good butter put it into a little pot or large deep stew pan and put in your beef keep stirring it and when it begins to look a little brown pour in a pint of boiling water stir it all together put in a large onion a bundle of sweet herbs two or three blades of mace five or six cloves a spoonful of allspice a crust of bread toasted and a piece of carrot then pour in four or five quarts of water stir all together cover close and let it stew till it is as rich as you would have it when enough strain it off mix it with two or three spoonfuls of ketchup and half a pint of white wine then put all the ingredients together again and put in two quarts of boiling water cover it close and let it boil till there is about a pint strain it off well add it to the first and give it a boil together this will make a great deal of rich good gravy you may leave out the wine according to what use you want it for so that really one might have a genteel entertainment for the price the sauce of one dish comes to but if gentlemen will have french cooks they must pay for french tricks a frenchman in his own country will dress a fine dinner of twenty dishes and all genteel and pretty for the expense he will put an english lord to for dressing one dish but then there is the little petty profit i have heard of a cook that used six pounds of butter to fry twelve eggs when everybody knows that understands cooking that half a pound is full enough or more than need be used but then it would not be french so much is the blind folly of this age that they would rather be imposed on by a french booby than give encouragement to a good english cook i doubt i shall not gain the esteem of those gentlemen however let it be as it will it little concerns me but should i be so happy as to gain the good opinion of my own sex i desire no more that will be a full recompense for all my trouble and i only beg the favour of every lady to read my book throughout before they censure me and then i flatter myself i shall have their approbation i shall not take upon me to meddle in the physical way farther than two receipts which will be of use to the public in general one is for the bite of a mad dog and the other if a man should be near where the plague is he shall be in no danger which if made use of would be found of very great service to those who go abroad nor shall i take it upon me to direct a lady in the economy of her family for every mistress does or at least ought to know what is most proper to be done there therefore i shall not fill my book with a deal of nonsense of that kind which i am very well assured none will have regard to i have indeed given some of my dishes french names to distinguish them because they are known by those names and where there is a great variety of dishes and a large table to cover so there must be variety of names for them and it matters not whether they be called by a french dutch or english name so they are good and done with as little expense as the dish will allow of i shall say no more only hope my book 
will answer the ends i intend it for which is to improve the servants and save the ladies a great deal of trouble end of section one section two of the art of cookery made plain and easy by hannah glass this librivox recording is in the public domain the editor's preface the art of cookery like all other arts is subject to the variations of fashion and the improvements of taste therefore notwithstanding the just claim of mrs glass's book on that subject to the approbation of the public yet it was apprehended that a careful revisal might render this new edition of her work still more acceptable and more useful how far the editor has succeeded the public will determine but to enable them to judge of his performance it will be necessary to give a sketch of the improvements and alterations on a careful perusal of the last edition the editor noted the deficiencies in many receipts which he hath supplied by adding what was wanting and rectifying what appeared to be wrong in the compositions either as to quantity or quality in the chapter on roasting and boiling he hath made several necessary alterations in point of time in performing those operations of the culinary art and given his directions in as plain clear and comprehensive a manner as possible that the learner may not be at a loss how to proceed he hath also made many alterations and improvements in the chapter on made dishes in that on soups and broths finding room for correction he hath made such amendments and alterations as were requisite and introduced several new ones the chapters on pies and for lent have also received the necessary additions and corrections as to the directions for the sick the editor hath not presumed to make any alteration the author appears to be the best judge of the directions she lays down in this department of her book he hath however expunged her directions for dressing turtle both real and mock and inserted directions adopted to the method he hath constantly and successfully practised for many years and which he is perfectly convinced will answer the expectation of the reader in the course of the corrections alterations and additions made in the work the editor hath endeavoured to be as concise but as intelligible as possible he hath not laid down any rules or inserted any receipts which are not warranted by experience in a course of practice for many years and hopes he has finished his undertaking as a good cook which will sufficiently apologize for every defect of language as a good writer the first has always been his profession to the latter he makes no pretensions End of section two. Section three of the art of cookery made plain and easy by Hannah Glass. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter one, part one of roasting, boiling, etc that professed cooks will find fault with touching upon a branch of cookery which they never thought worth their notice is what i expect however this i know it is the most necessary part of it and few servants there are that know how to roast and boil to perfection i do not pretend to teach professed cooks but my design is to instruct the ignorant and unlearned 
which will likewise be of great use in all private families, and in so plain and full a manner that the most illiterate and ignorant person who can but read will know how to do everything in cookery well. I shall first begin with roast and boiled of all sorts, and must desire the cook to order her fire according to what she is to dress. If anything very little or thin, then a pretty little brisk fire, that it may be done quick and nice. If a very large joint, then be sure a good fire be laid to cake. Let it be clear at the bottom, and when your meat is half done, move the dripping pan and spit a little from the fire, and stir up a good brisk fire, for according to the goodness of your fire, your meat will be done sooner or later. Beef. If beef, be sure to paper the top and baste it well all the time it is roasting, and throw a handful of salt on it. When you see the smoke draw to the fire, it is near enough. Then take off the paper, baste it well, and drudge it with a little flour to make a fine froth. Never salt your roast meat before you lay it to the fire, for that draws out all the gravy. If you would keep it a few days before you dress it, dry it very well with a clean cloth, then flour it all over and hang it where the air will come to it. But be sure always to mind that there is no damp place about it. If there is, you must dry it well with a cloth. Take up your meat and garnish your dish with nothing but horseradish. Mutton and Lamb as to roasting of mutton, the loin, the chine of mutton, which is the two loins, and the saddle, which is the two necks and part of the shoulders cut together, must have the skin raised and skewered on, and, when near done, take off the skin, baste, and flour it to froth it up. All other sorts of mutton and lamb must be roasted with a quick, clear fire, without the skin being raised, or paper put on. You should always observe to baste your meat as soon as you lay it down to roast, sprinkle some salt on, and, when near done, drudge it with a little flour to froth it up. Garnish mutton with horseradish, lamb with cresses or small salading. Veal as to veal, you must be careful to roast it of a fine brown. If a large joint, a very good fire. If a small joint, a pretty little brisk fire. If a fillet or loin, be sure to paper the fat that you lose as little of that as possible. Lay it some distance from the fire till it is soaked. Then lay it near the fire. When you lay it down, baste it well with good butter and when it is near enough, baste it again and drudge it with a little flour. The breast you must roast with the caul on till it is enough, and skewer the sweetbread on the back side of the breast. When it is nigh enough, take off the caul, baste it, and drudge it with a little flour. Pork Pork must be well done, or it is apt to surfeit. When you roast a loin, Take a sharp penknife and cut the skin across to make the crackling eat better. The chine must be cut, and so must all pork that has the rind on. Roast a leg of pork thus. Take a knife as above and score it. Stuff the knuckle part with sage and onion, chopped fine with pepper and salt, or cut a hole under the twist and put the sage, etc. there and skewer it up with a skewer. Roast it crisp, because most people like the rind crisp, which they call crackling. Make some good apple sauce and send up in a boat, then have a little drawn gravy to put in the dish. This they call a mock goose. The spring, or hand of pork, if very young, roasted like a pig, eats very well. Or take the spring and cut off the shank or knuckle, and sprinkle sage and onion over it, and roll it round, and tie it with a string, and roast it two hours, otherwise it is better boiled. The spare rib should be basted with a little bit of butter, 
a very little dust of flour, and some sage shred small, but we never make any sauce to it but apple sauce. The best way to dress pork griskins is to roast them, baste them with a little butter and sage, and a little pepper and salt. Few eat anything with these but mustard. To roast a pig. Spit your pig and lay it to the fire, which must be a very good one at each end, or hang a flat iron in the middle of the grate. Before you lay your pig down, take a little sage, shred small, a piece of butter as big as a walnut, and a little pepper and salt. Put them into the pig, and sew it up with coarse thread. Then flour it all over very well, and keep flouring it till the eyes drop out, or you find the crackling hard. Be sure to save all the gravy that comes out of it, which you must do by setting basins or pans under the pig in the dripping pan as soon as you find the gravy begins to run. When the pig is enough, stir the fire up brisk, take a coarse cloth with about a quarter of a pound of butter in it, and rub the pig all over till the crackling is quite crisp, and then take it up. Lay it in your dish, and with a sharp knife cut off the head, and then cut the pig in two before you draw out the spit. Cut the ears off the head, and lay at each end, and cut the under jaw in two, and lay on each side. Melt some good butter, take the gravy you saved and put into it, boil it, and pour it into the dish with the brains bruised fine, and the sage mixed all together, and then send it to table. Another way to roast a pig. Chop some sage and onion very fine, a few crumbs of bread, a little butter, pepper and salt rolled up together, put it into the belly and sew it up before you lay down the pig. Rub it all over with sweet oil. When it is done, take a dry cloth and wipe it, then take it into a dish, cut it up, and send it to table with the sauce as above. Different sorts of sauce for a pig. Now you are to observe there are several ways of making sauce for a pig. Some do not love any sage in the pig, only a crust of bread but then you should have a little dried sage rubbed and mixed with the gravy and butter some love bread sauce in a basin made thus take a pint of water put in a good piece of crumb of bread a blade of mace and a little whole pepper boil it for about five or six minutes and then pour the water off take out the spice and beat up the bread with a good piece of butter and a little milk or cream some love a few currants boiled in it, a glass of wine and a little sugar, but that you must do just as you like it. Others take half a pint of good beef gravy and the gravy which comes out of the pig with a piece of butter rolled in flour, two spoonfuls of ketchup, and boil them all together. Then take the brains of the pig and bruise them fine. Put all these together with the sage in the pig and pour into your dish. It is a very good sauce. When you have not gravy enough comes out of your pig with the butter for sauce, take about half a pint of veal gravy and add to it, or stew the petty toes, and take as much of that liquor as will do for sauce, mixed with the other. Note well, some like the sauce sent in a boat, or basin. To roast the hind quarter of pig, Lamb fashion. At the time of the year when house lamb is very dear, take the hind quarter of a large roasting pig, take off the skin and roast it, and it will eat like lamb with mint sauce, or with a salad or Seville orange. Half an hour will roast it. To bake a pig. If you should be in a place where you cannot roast a pig, lay it in a dish, flour it all over well, and rub it over with butter. Butter the dish you lay it in, and put it into the oven. When it is enough, draw it out of the oven's mouth, and rub it over with a buttery cloth. Then put it into the oven again till it is dry. Take it out, and lay it in a dish. Cut it up, take a little veal gravy, and take off the fat in the dish it was baked in, and there will be some good gravy at the bottom. 
put that to it with a little piece of butter rolled in flour boil it up and put it into the dish with the brains and sage in the belly some love a pig brought whole to table then you are only to put what sauce you like into the dish to melt butter in melting of butter you must be very careful let your saucepan be well tinned take a spoonful of cold water a little dust of flour and half a pound of butter cut to pieces be sure to keep shaking your pan one way for fear it should oil when it is all melted let it boil and it will be smooth and fine a silver pan is best if you have one to roast geese turkeys etc when you roast a goose turkey or fowls of any sort take care to singe them with a piece of white paper and baste them with a piece of butter drudge them with a little flour and sprinkle a little salt on and when the smoke begins to draw to the fire and they look plump baste them again and drudge them with a little flour and take them up sauce for a goose for a goose make a little good gravy and put it into a basin by itself and some apple sauce into another sauce for a turkey for a turkey good gravy in the dish and either bread or onion sauce in a basin or both sauce for fowls to fowls you should put good gravy in the dish and either bread parsley or egg sauce in a basin sauce for ducks for ducks a little gravy in the dish and onion sauce in a cup if liked sauce for pheasants and partridges pheasants and partridges should have gravy in the dish and bread sauce in a cup and poveroy sauce to roast larks put a small bird spit through them and tie them on another roast them and all the time they are roasting keep basting them very gently with butter and sprinkle crumbs of bread on them till they are almost done then let them brown before you take them up the best way of making crumbs of bread is to rub them through a fine colander and put in a little butter into a stew pan melt it put in your crumbs of bread and keep them stirring till they are of a light brown put them on a sieve to drain a few minutes lay your larks in a dish and the crumbs all round almost as high as the larks with plain butter in a cup and some gravy in another to roast woodcocks and snipes put them on a little bird spit and tie them on another and put them down to roast take a round of a threepenny loaf and toast it brown and butter it then lay it in a dish under the birds baste them with a little butter take the trail out before you spit them and put into a small stew pan with a little gravy simmer it gently over the fire for five or six minutes add a little melted butter to it put it over your toast in the dish and when your woodcocks are roasted put them on the toast and set it over a lamp or chafing dish for three minutes and send them to table to roast a pigeon take some parsley shred fine a piece of butter as big as a walnut a little pepper and salt tie the neck end tight tie a string round the legs and rump and fasten the other end to the top of the chimney piece baste them with butter and when they are enough lay them in the dish and they will swim with gravy you may put them on a little spit and then tie both ends close to broil a pigeon when you broil them do them in the same manner and take care your fire is very clear and set your gridiron high that they may not burn and have a little parsley and butter in a cup you may split them and broil them with a little pepper and salt and you may roast them only with a little parsley and butter in a dish directions for geese and ducks as to geese and ducks you should have sage and onions shred fine with pepper and salt put into the belly put only pepper and salt into wild ducks easterlings widgeon teal and all other sort of wild fowl with gravy in the dish or some like sage and onion in one 
to roast a hare take your hare when it is cased truss it in this manner bring the two hind legs up to its sides pull the fore legs back put your skewer first into the hind leg then into the fore leg and thrust it through the body put the fore leg on and then the hind leg and a skewer through the top of the shoulders and back part of the head which will hold the head up make a pudding thus take a quarter of a pound of beef suet as much crumb of bread a handful of parsley chopped fine some sweet herbs of all sorts such as basil marjoram winter savoury and a little thyme chopped very fine a little nutmeg grated some lemon peel cut fine pepper and salt chop the liver fine and put in with two eggs mix it up and put it into the belly and so or skewer it up then spit it and lay it to the fire which must be a good one a good sized hare takes one hour and so on in proportion different sorts of sauce for a hare take for sauce a pint of cream and half a pound of fresh butter put them in a saucepan and keep stirring it with a spoon till the butter is melted and the sauce is thick then take up the hare and pour the sauce into the dish another way to make sauce for a hare is to make good gravy thickened with a little piece of butter rolled in flour and pour it into your dish you may leave the butter out if you do not like it and have some currant jelly warmed in a cup or red wine and sugar boiled to a syrup done thus take a pint of red wine a quarter of a pound of sugar and set over a slow fire to simmer for about a quarter of an hour you may do half the quantity and put it into your sauce boat or basin to broil steaks first have a very clear brisk fire let your gridiron be very clean put it on the fire and take a chafing dish with a few hot coals out of the fire put the dish on it which is to lay your steaks on then take fine rump steaks about half an inch thick put a little pepper and salt on them lay them on the gridiron and if you like it take a shallot or two or a fine onion and cut it fine put it into your dish keep turning your steaks quick till they are done for that keeps the gravy in them when the steaks are enough take them carefully off into your dish that none of the gravy be lost then have ready a hot dish and cover and carry them hot to table with the cover on you may send shallot in a plate chopped fine directions concerning the sauce for steaks if you love pickles or horseradish with steaks never garnish your dish because both the garnishing will be dry and the steaks will be cold but lay those things on little plates and carry to table the great nicety is to have them hot and full of gravy general directions concerning broiling as to mutton and pork steaks you must keep them turning quick on the gridiron and have your dish ready over a chafing dish of hot coals and carry them to table covered hot when you broil fowls or pigeons always take care your fire is clear and never baste anything on the gridiron for it only makes it smoked and burnt general directions concerning boiling as to all sorts of boiled meats allow a quarter of an hour to every pound be sure the pot is very clean and skim it well for everything will have a scum rise and if that boils down it make the meat black all sorts of fresh meat you are to put in when the water boils but salt meat when the water is warm to boil a ham when you boil a ham put it into your copper when the water is pretty warm for cold water draws the colour out when it boils be careful it boils very slowly a ham of twenty pounds takes four hours and a half larger and smaller in proportion keep the copper well skimmed a green ham wants no soaking but an old ham must be soaked sixteen hours in a large tub of soft water to boil a tongue 
a tongue if salt soak it in soft water all night boil it three hours if fresh out of the pickle two hours and a half and put it in when the water boils take it out and pull it trim it garnish with greens and carrots to boil fowls and house lamb fowls and house lamb boil in a pot by themselves in a good deal of water and if any scum arises take it off they will be both sweeter and whiter than if boiled in a cloth a little chicken will be done in fifteen minutes a large chicken in twenty minutes a good fowl in half an hour a little turkey or goose in an hour and a large turkey in an hour and a half sauce for a boiled turkey the best sauce for a boiled turkey is good oyster and celery sauce make oyster sauce thus take a pint of oysters and set them off strain the liquor from them put them in cold water and wash and beard them put them into your liquor in a stew pan with a blade of mace and some butter rolled in flour and a quarter of a lemon boil them up then put in half a pint of cream and boil it all together gently take the lemon and mace out squeeze the juice of the lemon into the sauce then serve it in your boats or basins make celery sauce thus take the white part of the celery cut it about one inch long boil it in some water till it is tender then take half a pint of veal broth a blade of mace and thicken it with a little flour and butter put in half a pint of cream boil them up gently together put in your celery and boil it up then pour it into your boats sauce for a boiled goose sauce for a boiled goose must be either onions or cabbage first boiled and then stewed in butter for five minutes sauce for boiled ducks or rabbits to boil ducks or rabbits you must pour boiled onions over them which do thus take the onions peel them and boil them in a great deal of water shift your water then let them boil about two hours take them up and throw them into a cullender to drain then with a knife chop them on a board and rub them through a cullender put them into a saucepan just shake a little flour over them put in a little milk or cream with a good piece of butter and a little fat set them over the fire and when the butter is melted they are enough but if you would have onion sauce in half an hour take your onions peel them and cut them in thin slices put them into milk and water and when the water boils they will be done in twenty minutes then throw them into a cullender to drain and chop them and put them into a saucepan shake in a little flour with a little cream if you have it and a good piece of butter stir all together over the fire till the butter is melted and they will be very fine the sauce is very good with roast mutton and it is the best way of boiling onions to roast venison take a haunch of venison and spit it rub some butter all over your haunch take four sheets of paper well buttered put two on the haunch then make a paste with some flour a little butter and water roll it out half as big as your haunch and put it over the fat part then put the other two sheets of paper on and tie them with some pack thread lay it to a brisk fire and baste it well all the time of roasting if a large haunch of twenty four pounds it will take three hours and a half except it is a very large fire then three hours will do smaller in proportion to dress a haunch of mutton hang it up for a fortnight and dress it as directed for a haunch of venison different sorts of sauce for venison you may take either of these sauces for venison currant jelly warmed or a pint of red wine with a quarter of a pound of sugar simmered over a clear fire for five or six minutes or a pint of vinegar and a quarter of a pound of sugar simmered till it is a syrup end of section three
Section 4 of The Art of Cookery Made Plain and Easy by Hannah Glass. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 1, Part 2 of Roasting, Boiling, etc. From To Roast Mutton, Venison Fashion. Take a hind quarter of fat mutton and cut the leg like a haunch. Lay it in a pan with the back side of it down. Pour a bottle of red wine over it and let it lie twenty four hours. Then spit it and baste it with the same liquor and butter all the time it is roasting at a good quick fire. Two hours will do it. Have a little good gravy in a cup and sweet sauce in another. A good fat neck of mutton eats finely done thus. To keep venison or hares sweet, or to make them fresh when they stink. If your venison be very sweet, only dry it with a cloth and hang it where the air comes. If you would keep it any time, dry it very well with clean cloths, rub it all over with ground pepper, and hang it in an airy place, and it will keep a great while. If it stinks or is musty, take some lukewarm water and wash it clean. Then take fresh milk and water lukewarm and wash it again. Then dry it in clean cloths very well, and rub it all over with ground pepper, and hang it in an airy place. When you roast it, you need only wipe it with a clean cloth, and paper it as before mentioned. Never do anything else to venison, for all other things spoil your venison, and take away the fine flavour. And this preserves it better than anything you can do. A hare you may manage just the same way. To roast a tongue and udder. Parboil them first for two hours, then roast it, stick eight or ten cloves about it, baste it with butter, and have some gravy and galantine sauce, made thus. Take a few bread crumbs and boil in a little water. Beat it up, then put in a gill of red wine, some sugar to sweeten it. Put it in a basin or boat. To roast rabbits. Baste them with good butter and drudge them with a little flour. Half an hour will do them at a very quick, clear fire. And, if they are very small, twenty minutes will do them. Take the liver with a little bunch of parsley and boil them and then chop them very fine together. Melt some good butter and put half the liver and parsley into the butter. Pour it into the dish and garnish the dish with the other half. Let your rabbits be done of a fine light brown or put the sauce in a boat. To roast a rabbit, hair fashion. Lard a rabbit with bacon. Roast it as you do a hare, with a stuffing in the belly, and it eats very well. But then you must make gravy sauce. But if you do not lard it, white sauce. Made thus. Take a little veal broth, boil it up with a little flour and butter to thicken it. Then add a gill of cream. Keep it stirring one way till it is smooth. Then put it in a boat or in the dish. Turkeys, pheasants, etc. may be larded. You may lard a turkey or pheasant or anything, just as you like it. To roast a fowl, pheasant fashion. If you should have but one pheasant and want two in a dish, take a large full-grown fowl Keep the head on, and truss it just as you do a pheasant. Lard it with bacon, but do not lard the pheasant, and nobody will know it. Rules to be observed in roasting. In the first place, take great care the spit be very clean, and be sure to clean it with nothing but sand and water. Wash it clean, and wipe it with a dry cloth for oil, brick dust, and such things will spoil your meat. Beef To roast a piece of beef about ten pounds will take an hour and a half at a good fire. Twenty pounds weight will take three hours if it be a thick piece. But if it be a thin piece of twenty pounds weight, 
two hours and a half will do it, and so on according to the weight of your meat, more or less. Observe, in frosty weather, your beef will take half an hour longer. Mutton A leg of mutton of six pounds will take an hour at a quick fire. If frosty weather, an hour and a quarter. Nine pounds, an hour and a half. A leg of twelve pounds will take two hours. If frosty, two hours and a half. A large saddle of mutton will take three hours, because of papering it. A small saddle will take an hour and a half, and so on, according to the size. A breast will take half an hour at a quick fire. A neck, if large, an hour. If very small, little better than half an hour. A shoulder, much about the same time as a leg. A chine of twelve pounds, an hour and a half, and so on. Pork. Pork must be well done. To every pound allow a quarter of an hour. For example, a joint of twelve pounds weight, three hours, and so on. If it be a thin piece of that weight, two hours will roast it. Directions concerning beef, mutton, and pork. These three you may baste with fine, nice dripping. Be sure your fire be very good and brisk, but do not lay your meat too near the fire for fear of burning or scorching. Veal. Veal takes much the same time roasting as pork, but be sure to paper the fat of a loin or fillet and baste your veal with good butter. House lamb. If a large forequarter, an hour and a half. If a small one, an hour. The outside must be papered, basted with good butter, and you must have a very quick fire. If a leg, about three quarters of an hour. A neck, a breast, or shoulder, three quarters of an hour. If very small, half an hour will do. A pig. If just killed, an hour. If killed the day before, an hour and a quarter. If a very large one, an hour and a half. But the best way to judge is when the eyes drop out and the skin is grown very hard. Then you must rub it with a coarse cloth with a good piece of butter rolled in it till the crackling is crisp and of a fine light brown. A hare. You must have a quick fire. If it be a small hare, put three pints of milk and half a pound of fresh butter in the dripping pan, which must be very clean and nice. If a large one, two quarts of milk and half a pound of fresh butter. You must baste your hare well with this all the time it is roasting, and when the hare has soaked up all the butter and milk, it will be enough. Put your gravy and hot currant jelly in boats. A turkey. A middling turkey will take an hour, a very large one, an hour and a quarter, a small one, three quarters of an hour. You must paper the breast till it is near done enough, then take the paper off and froth it up. Your fire must be very good. A goose. Observe the same rules. Fowls. A large fowl, three quarters of an hour, a middling one, half an hour, very small chickens, twenty minutes. Your fire must be very quick and clear when you lay them down. Tame ducks. Observe the same rules. Wild ducks, twenty minutes. If you love them well done, twenty-five minutes. Teal, widgeon, etc. Widgeon, a quarter of an hour. Teal, eleven or twelve minutes. Woodcocks, twenty-five minutes. Partridges and snipes, twenty minutes. Pigeons and larks, twenty minutes. Directions concerning poultry. If your fire is not very quick and clear when you lay your poultry down to roast, it will not eat near so sweet or look so beautiful to the eye. To keep meat hot. The best way to keep meat hot, if it be done before your company is ready, is to set the dish over a pan of boiling water. 
cover the dish with a deep cover so as not to touch the meat, and throw a cloth over all. Thus you may keep your meat hot a long time, and it is better than over-roasting and spoiling the meat. The steam of the water keeps the meat hot, and does not draw the gravy out, or draw it up, whereas if you set a dish of meat any time over a chafing dish of coals, it will dry up all the gravy and spoil the meat. To dress greens, roots, etc. Always be very careful that your greens be nicely picked and washed. You should lay them in a clean pan for fear of sand or dust, which is apt to hang round wooden vessels. Boil all your greens in a copper saucepan by themselves, with a great quantity of water. Boil no meat with them, for that discolours them. Use no iron pans, etc., for they are not proper, but let them be copper, brass, or silver. To dress spinach. Pick it very clean, and wash it in five or six waters. Put it in a saucepan that will just hold it, throw a little salt over it, and cover the pan close. Do not put any water in, but shake the pan often. You must put your saucepan on a clear, quick fire. As soon as you find the greens are shrunk and fallen to the bottom, and that the liquor which comes out of them boils up, they are enough. Throw them into a clean sieve to drain, and squeeze it well between two plates, and cut it in any form you like. Lay it in a plate or small dish, and never put any butter on it, but put it in a cup. To dress cabbages, etc. Cabbage and all sorts of young sprouts must be boiled in a great deal of water. When the stalks are tender, or fall to the bottom, they are enough. Then take them off before they lose their colour. Always throw salt in your water before you put your greens in. Young sprouts you send to table just as they are, but cabbage is best chopped and put into a saucepan with a good piece of butter, stirring it for about five or six minutes till the butter is all melted, and then send it to table. To dress carrots. Let them be scraped very clean, and when they are enough, Rub them in a clean cloth, then slice them into a plate, and pour some melted butter over them. If they are young spring carrots, half an hour will boil them. If large, an hour. But old sandwich carrots will take two hours. To dress turnips. They eat best boiled in the pot, and when enough, take them out and put them in a pan, and mash them with butter a little cream, and a little salt, and send them to table. Pare your turnips and cut them into dice, as big as the top of one's finger. Put them into a clean saucepan, and just cover them with water. When enough, throw them into a sieve to drain, and put them into a saucepan with a good piece of butter and a little cream. Stir them over the fire for five or six minutes, and send them to table. To dress parsnips. They should be boiled in a great deal of water, and when you find they are soft, which you will know by running a fork into them, take them up and carefully scrape all the dirt off them, and then with a knife scrape them all fine, throwing away all the sticky parts, and send them up plain in a dish with melted butter. To dress broccoli. Strip all the little branches off, till you come to the top one. Then, with a knife, peel off all the hard outside skin, which is on the stalks and little branches, and throw them into water. Have a stew pan of water with some salt in it. When it boils, put in the broccoli, and when the stalks are tender, it is enough. Then send it to table with a piece of toasted bread, soaked in the water the broccoli is boiled in under it the same way as asparagus, with butter in a cup. The French eat oil and vinegar with it. To dress potatoes. You must boil them in as little water as you can, without burning the saucepan. Cover the saucepan close, and when the skin begins to crack, they are enough. 
drain all the water out and let them stand covered for a minute or two then peel them lay them in your plate and pour some melted butter over them the best way to do them is when they are peeled to lay them on a gridiron till they are of a fine brown and send them to table another way is to put them into a saucepan with some good beef dripping cover them close and shake the saucepan often for fear of burning to the bottom when they are of a fine brown and crisp take them up in a plate then put them into another for fear of the fat and put butter in a cup to dress cauliflowers take your flowers cut off all the green part and then cut the flowers into four and lay them into water for an hour then have some milk and water boiling put in the cauliflowers and be sure to skim the saucepan well when the stalks are tender take them carefully up and put them into a cullender to drain then put a spoonful of water into a clean stew pan with a little dust of flour about a quarter of a pound of butter and shake it round till it is all finely melted with a little pepper and salt then take half the cauliflower and cut it as you would for pickling lay it into the stew pan turn it and shake the pan round ten minutes will do it lay the stewed in the middle of your plate and the boiled round it pour the butter you did it in over it and send it to table another way cut the cauliflower stalks off leave a little green on and boil them in spring water and salt about fifteen minutes will do them take them out and drain them send them whole in a dish with some melted butter in a cup to dress french beans first string them then cut them in two and afterwards across but if you would do them nice cut the bean into four and then across which is eight pieces lay them into water and salt and when your pan boils put in some salt and the beans when they are tender they are enough they will be soon done take care they do not lose their fine green lay them in a plate and have butter in a cup to dress artichokes wring off the stalks and put them into cold water and wash them well then put them in when the water boils with the tops downwards that all the dust and sand may boil out an hour and a half will do them to dress asparagus scrape all the stalks very carefully till they look white then cut all the stalks even alike throw them into water and have ready a stew pan boiling put in some salt and tie the asparagus in little bundles let the water keep boiling and when they are a little tender take them up if you boil them too much you lose both colour and taste cut the round of a small loaf about half an inch thick toast it brown on both sides dip it in the asparagus liquor and lay it in your dish pour a little butter over the toast then lay your asparagus on the toast all round the dish with the white tops outward do not pour butter over the asparagus for that makes them greasy to the fingers but have your butter in a basin and send it to table directions concerning garden things most people spoil garden things by overboiling them all things that are green should have a little crispness for if they are overboiled they neither have any sweetness or beauty to dress beans and bacon when you dress beans and bacon boil the bacon by itself and the beans by themselves for the bacon will spoil the colour of the beans always throw some salt into the water and some parsley nicely picked when the beans are enough which you will know by their being tender throw them into a cullender to drain take up the bacon and skin it throw some raspings of bread over the top and if you have an iron make it red hot and hold over it to brown the top of the bacon if you have not one hold it to the fire to brown put the bacon in the middle of the dish and the beans all round 
close up to the bacon and send them to table with parsley and butter in a basin to make gravy for a turkey or any sort of fowls take a pound of the lean part of the beef hack it with a knife flour it well have ready a stew pan with a piece of fresh butter when the butter is melted put in the beef fry it till it is brown and then pour in a little boiling water shake it round and then fill up with a tea kettle of boiling water stir it all together and put in two or three blades of mace four or five cloves some whole pepper an onion a bundle of sweet herbs a little crust of bread baked brown and a little piece of carrot cover it close and let it stew till it is as good as you would have it this will make a pint of rich gravy to make veal mutton or beef gravy take a rasher or two of bacon or ham lay it at the bottom of your stew pan put your meat cut in thin slices over it then cut some onions turnips carrots and celery a little thyme and put over the meat with a little allspice put a little water at the bottom then set it on the fire which must be a gentle one and draw it till it is brown at the bottom which you may know by the pans hissing then pour boiling water over it and stew it gently for one hour and a half if a small quantity less time will do it season it with salt brown colouring for made dishes take four ounces of sugar beat fine put it into an iron frying pan or earthen pipkin set it over a clear fire and when the sugar is melted it will be frothy put it higher from the fire until it is a fine brown keep it stirring all the time fill the pan up with red wine take care it don't boil over add a little salt and lemon put a little cloves and mace a shallot or two boil it gently for ten minutes pour it in a basin till it is cold then bottle it for use to make gravy if you live in the country where you cannot always have gravy meat when your meat comes from the butchers take a piece of beef a piece of veal and a piece of mutton cut them into as small pieces as you can and take a large deep saucepan with a cover lay your beef at the bottom then your mutton then a very little piece of bacon a slice or two of carrot some mace cloves whole pepper black and white a large onion cut in slices a bundle of sweet herbs and then lay in your veal cover it close over a slow fire for six or seven minutes shaking the saucepan now and then then shake some flour in and have ready some boiling water pour it in till you cover the meat and something more cover it close and let it stew till it is quite rich and good then season it to your taste with salt and strain it off this will do for most things to bake a leg of beef do it just in the same manner as before directed in the making gravy for soups etc and when it is baked strain it through a coarse sieve pick out all the sinews and fat put them into a saucepan with a few spoonfuls of the gravy a little red wine a little piece of butter rolled in flour and some mustard shake your saucepan often and when the sauce is hot and thick dish it up and send it to table it is a pretty dish to bake an ox's head do just in the same manner as the leg of beef is directed to be done in making the gravy for soups etc and it does full as well for the same uses if it should be too strong for anything you want it for it is only putting some hot water to it cold water will spoil it to boil pickled pork be sure you put it in when the water boils if a middling piece an hour will boil it if a very large piece an hour and a half or two hours if you boil pickled pork too long it will go to a jelly you will know when it is done by trying it with a fork 
End of section four. Section five of the art of cookery made plain and easy by Hannah Glass. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter two, part one, made dishes. To dress Scotch collops. Take a piece of fillet of veal, cut it in thin pieces about as big as a crown piece, but very thin. Shake a little flour over it. Then you put a little butter in a frying pan and melt it. Put in your collops and fry them quick till they are brown, then lay them in a dish. Have ready a good ragout made thus. Take a little butter in your stew pan and melt it, then add a large spoonful of flour. Stir it about till it is smooth, then put in a pint of good brown gravy. Season it with pepper and salt. Pour in a small glass of white wine, some veal sweetbreads, forcemeat balls, truffles and morels, ox palates, and mushrooms. Stew them gently for half an hour. Add the juice of half a lemon to it. Put it over the collops and garnish with rashers of bacon. Some like the Scotch collops made thus. Put the collops into the ragout and stew them for five minutes. To dress white collops. Cut the veal the same as for Scotch collops. Throw them into a stew pan. Put some boiling water over them and stir them about. Then strain them off. Take a pint of good veal broth and thicken it. Add a bundle of sweet herbs with some mace. Put sweetbread forcemeat balls and fresh mushrooms. If no fresh to be had, use pickled ones washed in warm water. Stew them about 15 minutes. Add the yolk of two eggs and a pint of cream. Beat them well together with some nutmeg grated and keep stirring till it boils up. Add the juice of a quarter of a lemon, then put it in your dish. Garnish with lemon to dress a fillet of veal with collops. For an alteration, take a small fillet of veal, cut what collops you want, then take the udder and fill it with forcemeat, roll it round, tie it with a pack thread across and roast it. Lay your collops in the dish and lay your udder in the middle. Garnish your dishes with lemon. To make forcemeat balls. Now you are to observe that forcemeat balls are a great addition to all made dishes, made thus. Take half a pound of veal and half a pound of suet, cut fine and beat in a marble mortar or wooden bowl. Have a few sweet herbs and parsley shred fine, a little mace dried and beat fine, a small nutmeg grated or half a large one a little lemon peel cut very fine, a little pepper and salt, and the yolks of two eggs. Mix all these well together, then roll them in little round balls, and some in little long balls. Roll them in flour, and fry them brown. If they are for anything of white sauce, put a little water in a saucepan, and when the water boils, put them in, and let them boil for a few minutes but never fry them for white sauce. Truffles and morels, good in sauces and soups. Take half an ounce of truffles and morels. Let them be well washed in warm water to get the sand and dirt out. Then simmer them in two or three spoonfuls of water for a few minutes. Then put them with the liquor into the sauce. They thicken both sauce and soup and give it a fine flavour. To stew ox palates. Stew them very tender, which must be done by putting them into cold water, and let them stew very softly over a slow fire till they are tender. Then take off the two skins, cut them in pieces, and put them either into your made dish or soup. And cock's combs and artichoke bottoms cut small and put into the made dish. Garnish your dishes with lemon, sweetbread stewed, or white dishes, 
and fried for brown ones, and cut in little pieces. To ragu a leg of mutton. Take all the skin and fat off, cut it very thin the right way of the grain, then butter your stew pan, and shake some flour into it. Slice half a lemon and half an onion, cut them very small, a little bundle of sweet herbs and a blade of mace. Put all together with your meat into the pan, stir it a minute or two, and then put in six spoonfuls of gravy, and have ready an anchovy mince small. Mix it with some butter and flour, stir it all together for six minutes, and then dish it up. To make a brown fricassee. You must take your rabbits or chickens and skin the rabbits, but not the chickens. Then cut them into small pieces and rub them over with yolks of eggs. Have ready some grated bread, a little beaten mace, and a little grated nutmeg mixed together, and then roll them in it. Put a little butter into a stew pan, and when it is melted, put in your meat. Fry it of a fine brown, and take care they do not stick to the bottom of the pan. Then pour the butter from them, and pour in half a pint of brown gravy, a glass of white wine, a few mushrooms, or two spoonfuls of the pickle, a little salt, if wanted, and a piece of butter rolled in flour. When it is of a fine thickness, dish it up and send it to table. You may add truffles and morels and coxcombs. To make a white fricassee. Take two chickens and cut them in small pieces. Put them in warm water to draw out the blood. Then put them into some good veal broth. If no veal broth, a little boiling water and stew them gently with a bundle of sweet herbs and a blade of mace till they are tender. Then take out the sweet herbs add a little flour and butter, boil together to thicken it a little, then add half a pint of cream and the yolk of an egg beat very fine, some pickled mushrooms. The best way is to put some fresh mushrooms in at first, if no fresh, then pickled. Keep stirring it till it boils up, then add the juice of half a lemon. Stir it well to keep it from curdling, then put it in your dish, Garnish with lemon. To fricassee rabbits, lamb, or veal. Observe the directions given in the preceding article. A second way to make a white fricassee. You must take two or three rabbits or chickens, skin them, and lay them in warm water, and dry them with a clean cloth. Put them into a stew pan with a blade or two of mace, a little black and white pepper an onion, a little bundle of sweet herbs, and do but just cover them with water. Stew them till they are tender, then with a fork take them out, strain the liquor, and put them into the pan again with half a pint of the liquor and half a pint of cream, the yolks of two eggs beat well, half a nutmeg grated, a glass of white wine, a little piece of butter rolled in flour, and a gill of mushrooms, Keep stirring all together, all the while one way, till it is smooth and of a fine thickness, and then dish it up. Add what you please. A third way of making a white fricassee. Take three chickens, skin them, cut them into small pieces, that is, every joint asunder, lay them in warm water for a quarter of an hour, take them out and dry them with a cloth, then put them into a stew pan with milk and water, and boil them tender. Take a pint of good cream, a quarter of a pound of butter, and stir it till it is thick. Then let it stand till it is cool, and put to it a little beaten mace, half a nutmeg grated, a little salt, and a few mushrooms. Stir all together, then take the chickens out of the stew pan, throw away what they are boiled in, clean the pan and put in the chickens and sauce together keep the pan shaking round till they are quite hot and dish them up garnish with lemon to fricassee rabbits lamb sweetbreads or tripe do them the same way 
another way to fricassee tripe take a piece of double tripe and cut it in pieces of about two inches put them in a saucepan of water with an onion and a bundle of sweet herbs boil it till it is quite tender then have ready a bechamel made thus take some lean ham cut it in thin pieces and put it in a stew pan and some veal having first cut off all the fat put it over the ham cut an onion in slices some carrot and turnip a little thyme cloves and mace and some fresh mushrooms chopped put a little milk at the bottom and draw it gently over the fire be careful it does not scorch then put in a quart of milk and half a pint of cream stew it gently for an hour thicken it with a little flour and milk season it with salt and a very little cayenne pepper bruised fine then strain it off through a tammy put your tripe into it toss it up and add some forcemeat balls mushrooms and oysters blanched then put it into your dish and garnish with fried oysters or sweetbreads or lemons to ragu hogs feet and ears take your ears out of the pickle they are soused in or boil them till they are tender then cut them into long thin bits about two inches long and about as thick as a quill put them into your stew pan with half a pint of good gravy or as much as will cover them a glass of white wine a good deal of mustard a good piece of butter rolled in flour and a little pepper and salt stir all together till it is of a fine thickness and then dish it up the hog's feet must not be stewed but boiled tender then slit them in two and put the yolk of an egg over and crumbs of bread and broil or fry them put the ragout of ears in the middle and the feet round it note they make a very pretty dish fried with butter and mustard and a little good gravy if you like it then only cut the feet and ears in two you may add half an onion cut small to fry tripe cut your tripe in long pieces of about three inches wide and all the breadth of the double put it in some small beer batter or yolks of eggs have a large pan of good fat and fry it brown then take it out and put it to drain dish it up with plain butter in a cup tripe a la kilkenny this is a favourite irish dish and is done thus take a piece of double tripe cut in square pieces have twelve large onions peeled and washed clean cut them in two and put them on to boil in clean water till they are tender then put in your tripe and boil it ten minutes pour off almost all the liquor shake a little flour in and put some butter in and a little salt and mustard shake it all over the fire till the butter is melted then put it in your dish and send it to table as hot as possible garnish with barberries or lemon a fricassee of pigeons take eight pigeons new killed cut them in small pieces and put them in a stew pan with a pint of white wine and a pint of water season your pigeons with salt and pepper a blade or two of mace an onion a bundle of sweet herbs a good piece of butter just rolled in very little flour cover it close and let them stew till there is just enough for sauce and then take out the onion and sweet herbs beat up the yolks of three eggs grate half a nutmeg in and with your spoon push the meat all to one side of the pan and the gravy to the other side and stir in the eggs keep them stirring for fear of turning to curds and when the sauce is fine and thick shake all together and then put the meat into the dish pour the sauce over it and have ready some slices of bacon toasted and fried oysters throw the oysters all over and lay the bacon round garnish with lemon a fricassee of lamb stones and sweetbreads 
have ready some lamb stones blanched parboiled and sliced and flour two or three sweetbreads if very thick cut them in two the yolks of six hard eggs whole a few pistachio nut kernels and a few large oysters fry these all of a fine brown then pour out all the butter and add a pint of drawn gravy the lamb stones some asparagus tops about an inch long some grated nutmeg a little pepper and salt two shallots shred small and a glass of white wine stew all these together for ten minutes then add the yolks of three eggs beat very fine with a little cream and a little beaten mace stir all together till it is of a fine thickness and then dish it up garnish with lemon to hash a calf's head boil the head almost enough then take the best half and with a sharp knife take it nicely from the bone with the two eyes lay it in a little deep dish before a good fire and take great care no ashes fall into it and then hack it with a knife cross and cross grate some nutmeg all over the yolks of two eggs a very little pepper and salt a few sweet herbs some crumbs of bread and a little lemon peel chopped very fine baste it with a little butter then baste it again keep the dish turning that it may be all brown alike cut the other half and tongue into little thin bits and set on a pint of drawn gravy in a saucepan a little bundle of sweet herbs an onion a little pepper and salt a glass of white wine and two shallots boil all these together a few minutes then strain it through a sieve and put it into a clean stew pan with the hash flour the meat before you put it in and put in a few mushrooms a spoonful of the pickle two spoonfuls of ketchup and a few truffles and morels stir all these together for a few minutes then beat up half the brains and stir into the stew pan and a little piece of butter rolled in flour take the other half of the brains and beat them up with a little lemon peel cut fine a little nutmeg grated a little beaten mace a little thyme shred small a little parsley the yolk of an egg and have some good dripping boiling in a stew pan then fry the brains in little cakes about as big as a crown piece fry about twenty oysters dipped in the yolk of an egg toast some slices of bacon fry a few forcemeat balls and have ready a hot dish if pewter over a few clear coals if china over a pan of hot water pour in your hash then lay in your toasted head throw the forcemeat balls over the hash and garnish the dish with fried oysters the fried brains and lemon throw the rest over the hash lay the bacon round the dish and send it to table to hash a calf's head white take a pint of white gravy a large wine glass of white wine a little beaten mace a little nutmeg and a little salt throw into your hash a few mushrooms a few truffles and morels first parboiled a few artichoke bottoms and asparagus tops if you have them a good piece of butter rolled in flour the yolks of two eggs half a pint of cream and one spoonful of mushroom ketchup stir it all together very carefully till it is of a fine thickness then pour it into your dish and lay the other half of the head as before mentioned in the middle and garnish as before directed with fried oysters brains lemon and forcemeat balls fried to bake a calf's head take the head pick it and wash it very clean take an earthen dish large enough to lay the head on rub a little piece of butter all over the dish then lay some long iron skewers across the top of the dish and lay the head on them skewer up the meat in the middle that it do not lie on the dish then grate some nutmeg all over it a few sweet herbs shred small some crumbs of bread a little lemon peel cut fine and then flour it all over 
stick pieces of butter in the eyes and all over the head and flour it again let it be well baked and of a fine brown you may throw a little pepper and salt over it and put into the dish a piece of beef cut small a bundle of sweet herbs an onion some whole pepper a blade of mace two cloves a pint of water and boil the brains with some sage when the head is enough lay it on a dish and set it to the fire to keep warm then stir all together in the dish and boil it in a saucepan strain it off put it into the saucepan again add a piece of butter rolled in flour and the sage and the brains chopped fine a spoonful of ketchup and two spoonfuls of red wine boil them together take the brains beat them well and mix them with the sauce pour it into the dish and send it to table you must bake the tongue with the head and do not cut it out it will lie the handsomer in the dish to bake a sheep's head do it the same way and it eats very well to dress a lamb's head boil the head and pluck tender but do not let the liver be too much done take the head up hack it cross and cross with a knife grate some nutmeg over it and lay it in a dish before a good fire then grate some crumbs of bread some sweet herbs rubbed a little lemon peel chopped fine a very little pepper and salt and baste it with a little butter then throw a little flour over it and just as it is done to the same baste it and drudge it take half the liver the lights the heart and tongue chop them very small with six or eight spoonfuls of gravy or water first shake some flour over the meat and stir it together then put in the gravy or water a good piece of butter rolled in a little flour a little pepper and salt and what runs from the head in the dish simmer all together a few minutes and add half a spoonful of vinegar pour it into your dish lay the head in the middle of the mincemeat have ready the other half of the liver cut thin with some slices of bacon broiled and lay round the head garnish the dish with lemon and send it to table to ragu a neck of veal cut a neck of veal into steaks flatten them with a rolling pin season them with salt pepper cloves and mace lard them with bacon lemon peel and thyme dip them in the yolks of eggs make a sheet of strong cap paper up at the four corners in the form of a dripping pan pin up the corners butter the paper and also the gridiron and set it over a fire of charcoal put in your meat let it do leisurely keep it basting and turning to keep in the gravy and when it is enough have ready half a pint of strong gravy season it high put in mushrooms and pickles forcemeat balls dipped in the yolks of eggs oysters stewed and fried to lay round and at the top of your dish and then serve it up if for a brown ragout put in red wine if for a white one put in white wine with the yolks of eggs beat up with two or three spoonfuls of cream to ragout a breast of veal take your breast of veal put it into a large stew pan put in a bundle of sweet herbs an onion some black and white pepper a blade or two of mace two or three cloves a very little piece of lemon peel and just cover it with water when it is tender take it up bone it put in the bones boil it up till the gravy is very good then strain it off and if you have a little rich beef gravy add a quarter of a pint put in half an ounce of truffles and morels a spoonful or two of ketchup two or three spoonfuls of white wine and let them all boil together in the meantime flour the veal and fry it in butter till it is of a fine brown then drain out all the butter and pour the gravy you are boiling to the veal with a few mushrooms boil all together till the sauce is rich and thick and cut the sweetbread into four a few forcemeat balls are proper in it lay the veal in the dish and pour the sauce all over it garnish with lemon 
or thus half roast a breast of veal then cut it in square pieces put it into a stew pan with half a pint of gravy a pint of water a bundle of sweet herbs an onion stuck with cloves a little mace and stew it till it is tender then take it out and pull out all the bones strain the gravy through a sieve then put it into the stew pan again with a spoonful of mustard some truffles and morels a sweetbread cut in pieces one artichoke bottom about twenty force meat balls some butter rolled in flour enough to thicken it boil it up till it is of a proper thickness season it with pepper and salt then put in your veal stew it for five minutes add the juice of half a lemon then put your meat into the dish the ragu all over it garnish with lemon and beetroot another way to ragu a breast of veal you may bone it nicely flour it and fry it of a fine brown then pour the fat out of the pan and the ingredients as above with the bones when enough take it out and strain the liquor then put in your meat again with the ingredients as before directed a breast of veal in hodgepodge take a breast of veal cut the brisket into little pieces and every bone asunder then flour it and put half a pound of good butter into a stew pan when it is hot throw in the veal fry it all over of a fine light brown and then have ready a tea kettle of water boiling pour it into the stew pan fill it up and stir it round throw in a pint of green peas a fine lettuce whole clean washed two or three blades of mace a little whole pepper tied in a muslin rag a little bundle of sweet herbs a small onion stuck with a few cloves and a little salt cover it close and let it stew an hour or till it is boiled to your palate if you would have soup made of it if you would only have sauce to eat with the veal you must stew it till there is just as much as you would have for sauce and season it with salt to your palate take out the onion sweet herbs and spice and pour it all together into your dish it is a fine dish if you have no peas pare three or four cucumbers scoop out the pulp and cut it into little pieces and take four or five heads of celery clean washed and cut the white part small when you have no lettuces take the little hearts of savoys or the little young sprouts that grow on the old cabbage stalks about as big as the top of your thumb note if you would make a very fine dish of it fill the inside of your lettuce with force meat and tie the top close with a thread stew it till there is but just enough for sauce set the lettuce in the middle and the veal round and pour the sauce all over it garnish your dish with rasped bread made into figures with your fingers this is the cheapest way of dressing a breast of veal to be good and serve a number of people to collar a breast of veal take a very sharp knife and nicely take out all the bones but take care you do not cut the meat through pick all the fat and meat off the bones then grate some nutmeg all over the inside of the veal a very little beaten mace a little pepper and salt a few sweet herbs shred small some parsley a little lemon peel shred small a few crumbs of bread and the bits of fat picked off the bones roll it up tight stick one skewer in to hold it together but do it clever that it stands upright in the dish tie a pack thread across it to hold it together spit it then roll the caul all round it and roast it an hour and a quarter will do it when it has been about an hour at the fire take off the caul drudge it with flour baste it well with fresh butter and let it be of a fine brown for sauce take tuppence worth of gravy beef cut it and hack it well then flour it fry it a little brown then pour into your stew pan some boiling water stir it well together then fill your pan two parts full of water 
put in an onion a bundle of sweet herbs a little crust of bread toasted two or three blades of mace four cloves some whole pepper and the bones of the veal cover it close and let it stew till it is quite rich and thick then strain it boil it up with some truffles and morels a few mushrooms a spoonful of ketchup two or three bottoms of artichokes if you have them add a little salt just enough to season the gravy take the pack thread off the veal and set it upright in the dish cut the sweetbread into four and broil it of a fine brown with a few forcemeat balls fried lay these round the dish and pour in the sauce garnish the dish with lemon and send it to table to collar a breast of mutton do it the same way and it eats very well but you must take off the skin another way to dress a breast of mutton collar it as before roast it and baste it with half a pint of red wine and when that is all soaked in baste it well with butter have a little good gravy set the mutton upright in the dish pour in the gravy have a sweet sauce as for venison and send it to table do not garnish the dish but be sure to take the skin off the mutton the inside of a sirloin of beef is very good done this way if you do not like the wine a quart of milk and a quarter of a pound of butter put into the dripping pan does full as well to baste it to force a leg of lamb with a sharp knife carefully take out all the meat and leave the skin whole and the fat on it make the lean you cut out into force meat thus to two pounds of meat add two pounds of beef suet cut fine and beat in a marble mortar till it is very fine and take away all the skin of the meat and suet then mix it with four spoonfuls of grated bread eight or ten cloves five or six large blades of mace dried and beat fine half a large nutmeg grated a little pepper and salt a little lemon peel cut fine a very little thyme some parsley and four eggs mix all together put it into the skin again just as it was in the same shape sew it up roast it baste it with butter cut the loin into steaks and fry it nicely lay the leg in the dish and the loin round it with stewed cauliflower as in page seventeen all round upon the loin pour a pint of good gravy into the dish and send it to table if you do not like the cauliflower it may be omitted to boil a leg of lamb let the leg be boiled very white an hour will do it cut the loin into steaks dip them into a few crumbs of bread and egg fry them nice and brown boil a good deal of spinach and lay in the dish put the leg in the middle lay the loin round it cut an orange in four and garnish the dish and have butter in a cup some love the spinach boiled then drained put into a saucepan with a good piece of butter and stewed to force a large fowl cut the skin down the back and carefully slit it up so as to take out all the meat mix it with one pound of beef suet cut it small and beat them together in a marble mortar take a pint of large oysters cut small two anchovies cut small one shallot cut fine a few sweet herbs a little pepper a little nutmeg grated and the yolks of four eggs mix all together and lay this on the bones draw over the skin and sew up the back put the fowl into a bladder boil it an hour and a quarter stew some oysters in good gravy thickened with a piece of butter rolled in flour take the fowl out of the bladder lay it in your dish and pour the sauce over it garnish with a lemon it eats much better roasted with the same sauce End of section 5section six of the art of cookery made plain and easy by hannah glass this librivox recording is in the public domain 
Chapter Two, Part Two, Made Dishes, from To Roast Turkey the Genteel Way. First, cut it down the back, and with a sharp penknife bone it. Then make your force meat thus: take a large fowl or a pound of veal, as much grated bread, half a pound of suet cut and beat very fine, a little beaten mace, two cloves half a nutmeg grated, about a large teaspoonful of lemon peel, and the yolks of two eggs. Mix all together with a little pepper and salt, fill up the places where the bones came out, and fill the body that it may look just as it did before. Sew up the back and roast it. You may have oyster sauce, celery sauce, or just as you please. Put good gravy in the dish, and garnish with lemon is as good as anything. Be sure to leave the pinions on. To stew a turkey or fowl. First let your pot be very clean. Lay four clean skewers at the bottom. Lay your turkey or fowl upon them. Put in a quart of gravy. Take a bunch of celery, cut it small, and wash it very clean. Put it into your pot with two or three blades of mace. Let it stew softly till there is just enough for sauce, then add a good piece of butter rolled in flour, two spoonfuls of red wine, two of ketchup, and just as much pepper and salt as will season it. Lay your fowl or turkey in the dish, pour the sauce over it, and send it to table. If the fowl or turkey is enough before the sauce, take it up and keep it up till the sauce is boiled enough then put it in let it boil a minute or two and dish it up to stew a knuckle of veal be sure to let the pot or saucepan be very clean lay at the bottom four clean wooden skewers wash and clean the knuckle very well then lay it in the pot with two or three blades of mace a little whole pepper a little piece of thyme a small onion a crust of bread and two quarts of water cover it down close make it boil then only let it simmer for two hours and when it is enough take it up lay it in a dish and strain the broth over it Another way to stew a knuckle of veal. Clean it as before directed, and boil it till there is just enough for sauce. Add one spoonful of ketchup, one of red wine, and one of walnut pickle, some truffles and morels, or some dried mushrooms cut small. Boil it all together, take up the knuckle, lay it in a dish, pour the sauce over it, and send it to table. Note, it eats very well done as the turkey before directed. To ragu a piece of beef. Take a large piece of the flank, which has fat at the top, cut square, or any piece that is all meat and has fat at the top, but no bones. The rump does well. Cut all nicely off the bone, which makes fine soup. Then take a large stew pan and with a good piece of butter fry it a little brown all over, flouring your meat well before you put it into the pan. Then pour in as much gravy as will cover it, made thus. Take about a pound of coarse beef, a little piece of veal cut small, a bundle of sweet herbs, an onion, some whole black pepper and white pepper, two or three large blades of mace, four or five cloves, a piece of carrot, a little piece of bacon, steeped in vinegar a little while, a crust of bread, toasted brown. Put to this a quart of white wine, and let it boil till half is wasted. While this is making, pour a quart of boiling water into the stew pan, cover it close, and let it be stewing softly. When the gravy is done, strain it, Pour it into the pan where the beef is, take an ounce of truffles and morels, cut small, some fresh or dried mushrooms, cut small, two spoonfuls of ketchup, and cover it close. Let all this stew till the sauce is rich and thick, 
then have ready some artichoke bottoms cut into four and a few pickled mushrooms give them a boil or two and when your meat is tender and your sauce quite rich lay the meat into a dish and pour the sauce over it you may add a sweetbread cut in six pieces a palate stewed tender cut into little pieces some cock's combs and a few forcemeat balls these are a great addition but it will be good without note for variety when the beef is ready and the gravy put to it add a large bunch of celery cut small and washed clean two spoonfuls of ketchup and a glass of red wine omit all other ingredients when the meat and celery are tender and the sauce rich and good serve it up it is also very good this way take six large cucumbers scoop out the seeds pare them cut them into slices and do them just as you do the celery beef tremblonque take the fat end of a brisket of beef and tie it up close with pack thread put it in a pot of water and boil it six hours very gently season the water with a little salt a handful of allspice two onions two turnips and a carrot in the meanwhile put a piece of butter in a stew pan and melt it then put in two spoonfuls of flour and stir it till it is smooth put in a quart of gravy a spoonful of ketchup the same of browning a gill of white wine carrots and turnips and cut the same as for haricot of mutton stew them gently till the roots are tender season with pepper and salt skim all the fat clean off put the beef in a dish and pour the sauce all over garnish with pickle of any sort or make a sauce thus chop a handful of parsley one onion four pickled cucumbers one walnut and a gill of capers put them in a pint of good gravy and thicken it with a little butter rolled in flour and season it with pepper and salt boil it up for ten minutes and then put over the beef or you may put the beef in a dish and put greens and carrots round it to force the inside of a sirloin of beef take a sharp knife and carefully lift up the fat of the inside take out all the meat close to the bone chop it small take a pound of suet and chop fine about as many crumbs of bread a little thyme and lemon peel a little pepper and salt half a nutmeg grated and two shallots chopped fine mix and beat all very fine in a marble mortar with a glass of red wine then put it into the same place cover it with the skin and fat skewer it down with fine skewers and cover it with paper do not take the paper off till the meat is on the dish take a quarter of a pint of red wine two shallots shred small boil them and pour into the dish with the gravy which comes out of the meat it eats well spit your meat before you take out the inside another way to force a sirloin when it is quite roasted take it up and lay it in the dish with the inside uppermost with a sharp knife lift up the skin hack and cut the inside very fine shake a little pepper and salt over it with two shallots cover it with the skin and send it to table you may add red wine or vinegar just as you like sirloin of beef on epigram roast a sirloin of beef take it off the spit then raise the skin carefully off and cut the lean part of the beef out but observe not to cut near the ends or sides hash the meat in the following manner cut it in pieces about as big as a crown piece put half a pint of gravy into a toss pan an onion chopped fine two spoonfuls of ketchup some pepper and salt six small pickled cucumbers cut in thin slices and the gravy that comes from the beef a little butter rolled in flour put the meat in and toss it up for five minutes put it on the sirloin and then put the skin over and send it to table garnish with horseradish 
you may do the inside instead of the outside if you please to force the inside of a rump of beef you may do it just in the same manner only lift up the outside skin take the middle of the meat and do as before directed put it into the same place and with fine skewers put it down close a rolled rump of beef cut the meat all off the bone whole slit the inside down from top to bottom but not through the skin spread it open take the flesh of two fowls and beef suet an equal quantity and as much cold boiled ham if you have it a little pepper an anchovy a nutmeg grated a little thyme a good deal of parsley a few mushrooms and chop them all together beat them in a mortar with a half pint basin full of crumbs of bread mix all these together with four yolks of eggs lay it into the meat cover it up and roll it round stick one skewer in and tie it with a pack thread cross and cross to hold it together take a pot or large saucepan that will just hold it lay a layer of bacon and a layer of beef cut in thin slices a piece of carrot some whole pepper mace sweet herbs and a large onion lay the rolled beef on it just put water enough to cover the top of the beef cover it close and let it stew very softly on a slow fire for eight or ten hours but not too fast when you find the beef tender which you will know by running a skewer into the meat then take it up cover it up hot boil the gravy till it is good then strain it off and add some mushrooms chopped some truffles and morels cut small two spoonfuls of red or white wine the yolks of two eggs and a piece of butter rolled in flour boil it together set the meat before the fire baste it with butter and throw crumbs of bread all over it when the sauce is enough lay the meat into the dish and pour the sauce over it take care the eggs do not curdle or you may omit the eggs to boil a rump of beef the french fashion take a rump of beef boil it half an hour take it up lay it into a large deep pewter dish or stew pan cut three or four gashes in it all along the side rub the gashes with pepper and salt and pour into the dish a pint of red wine as much hot water two or three large onions cut small the hearts of eight or ten lettuces cut small and a good piece of butter rolled in a little flour lay the fleshy part of the meat downwards cover it close let it stew two hours and a half over a charcoal fire or a very slow coal fire observe that the butcher chops the bone so close that the meat may lie as flat as it can in the dish when it is enough take the beef lay it in the dish and pour the sauce over it note when you do it in a pewter dish it is best done over a chafing dish of hot coals with a bit or two of charcoal to keep it alive beef escarlo take a brisket of beef half a pound of coarse sugar two ounces of bay salt one ounce of saltpetre a pound of common salt mix all together and rub the beef lay it in an earthen pan and turn it every day it may lie a fortnight in the pickle then boil it and serve it up either with savoys cabbage or greens or peas pudding note it eats much finer cold cut into slices and sent to table beef a la daub take a rump and bone it or a part of the leg of mutton piece or a piece of the buttock cut some fat bacon as long as the beef is thick and about a quarter of an inch square take eight cloves four blades of mace a little allspice and half a nutmeg beat very fine chop a good handful of parsley fine some sweet herbs of all sorts chopped fine and some pepper and salt roll the bacon in these and then take a large larding pin or a small bladed knife 
and put the bacon through and through the beef with the larding pin or knife when that is done put it in a stew pan with brown gravy enough to cover it chop three blades of garlic very fine and put in some fresh mushrooms or champignons two large onions and a carrot stew it gently for six hours then take the meat out strain off the gravy and skim all the fat off put your meat and gravy into the pan again put a gill of white wine into the gravy and if it wants seasoning season with pepper and salt stew them gently for half an hour add some artichoke bottoms truffles and morels oysters and a spoonful of vinegar put the meat in a soup dish and the sauce over it or you may put turnips cut in round pieces and carrots cut round some small onions and thicken the sauce then put the meat in and stew it gently for half an hour with a gill of white wine some like savoys or cabbage stewed and put into the sauce to make beef a la mode take a small buttock or leg of mutton piece of beef or a clod or a piece of buttock of beef also two dozen of cloves as much mace and half an ounce of allspice beat fine chop a large handful of parsley and all sorts of sweet herbs fine cut fat bacon as for beef a la daube and put it into the spice etc and into the beef the same put it into a pot and cover it with water chop four large onions very fine and six cloves of garlic six bay leaves and a handful of champignons or fresh mushrooms put all into the pot with a pint of porter or ale and half a pint of red wine put in some pepper and salt some cayenne pepper a spoonful of vinegar strew three handfuls of bread raspings sifted fine over all cover the pot close and stew it for six hours or according to the size of the piece if a large piece eight hours then take the beef out and put it in a deep dish and keep it hot over some boiling water strain the gravy through a sieve and pick out the champignons or mushrooms skim all the fat off clean put it into your pot again and give it a boil up if not seasoned enough season it to your liking then put the gravy over your beef and send it to table hot or you may cut it in slices if you like it best or put it to get cold and cut it in slices with the gravy over it for when the gravy is cold it will be in a strong jelly beef a la mode in pieces you must take a buttock of beef cut it into two pound pieces lard them with bacon fry them brown put them into a pot that will just hold them put in two quarts of broth or gravy a few sweet herbs an onion some mace cloves nutmeg pepper and salt when that is done cover it close and stew it till it is tender skim off all the fat lay the meat in the dish and strain the sauce over it you may serve it up hot or cold beef olives take a rump of beef cut it into steaks of half an inch thick cut them as square as you can and about ten inches long cut a piece of fat bacon as wide as the beef and about three parts as long put some yolk of an egg on the beef put the bacon on it and the yolk of an egg on the bacon and some good savoury forcemeat on that some yolk of an egg on the forcemeat then roll them up and tie them round with a string in two places put some yolk of an egg on them and some crumbs of bread then fry them brown in a large pan of good beef dripping take them out and put them to drain take some butter and put into a stew pan melt it and put in a spoonful of flour stir it well till it is smooth then put a pint of good gravy in and a gill of white wine put in the olives and stew them for an hour add some mushrooms truffles and morels forcemeat balls and sweetbreads cut in small square pieces some ox palates 
season with pepper and salt and squeeze the juice of half a lemon toss them up be careful to skim all the fat off then put them in your dish garnish with beetroot and lemon veal olives cut them out of a leg of veal and do them the same as beef olives with the same sauce and garnish or thus cut some slices of a leg of veal about three inches long and two broad cut them thin spread them on the table and hack them with the back of a knife put some yolk of egg over them and some savoury forcemeat on the egg as thick as the veal then some yolk of egg over it roll them up tight and tie them with a string rub them all over with yolk of egg and strew bread crumbs over them have ready a pan of boiling fat fry them of a gold colour put them before the fire to drain have ready the following ragout put about two ounces of butter in your stew pan and melt it put a spoonful of flour and stir it about till it is small put a pint of gravy a glass of white wine some pepper and salt a little cloves and mace a little ham or lean bacon cut fine two shallots cut fine and half a lemon stew them gently for ten minutes strain it through a sieve skim off the fat and put it into your pan again add a sweetbread cut in pieces artichoke bottoms cut in pieces some forcemeat balls a few truffles and morels and mushrooms a spoonful of ketchup give them a boil up put your olives in the dish and pour the ragout over them garnish with lemon beef collops take some rump steaks or any tender piece cut like scotch collops only larger hack them a little with a knife and flour them put a little butter in a stew pan and melt it then put in your collops and fry them quick for about two minutes put in a pint of gravy a little butter rolled in flour seasoned with pepper and salt cut four pickled cucumbers in thin slices half a walnut and a few capers a little onion shred fine stew them five minutes then put them into a hot dish and send them to table you may put half a glass of white wine into it to stew beef steaks take rump steaks pepper and salt them lay them in a stew pan pour in half a pint of water a blade or two of mace two or three cloves a little bundle of sweet herbs an anchovy a piece of butter rolled in flour a glass of white wine and an onion cover them close and let them stew softly till they are tender then take out the steaks flour them fry them in fresh butter and pour away all the fat strain the sauce they were stewed in and pour it into the pan toss it all up together till the sauce is quite hot and thick if you add a quarter of a pint of oysters it will make it the better lay the steaks into the dish and pour the sauce over them garnish with any pickle you like to fry beef steaks take rump steaks pepper and salt them fry them in a little butter very quick and brown take them out and put them into a dish pour the fat out of the frying pan and then take half a pint of hot gravy if no gravy half a pint of hot water and put into the pan and a little butter rolled in flour a little pepper and salt and two or three shallots chopped fine boil them up in your pan for two minutes then put it over the steaks and send them to table a second way to fry beef steaks cut the lean by itself and beat them well with the back of a knife fry them in just as much butter as will moisten the pan pour out the gravy as it runs out of the meat turn them often do them over a gentle fire then fry the fat by itself and lay upon the meat and put to the gravy a glass of red wine half an anchovy a little nutmeg a little beaten pepper and a shallot cut small give it two or three little boils season it with salt to your palate pour it over the steaks and send them to table a pretty side dish of beef 
roast a tender piece of beef lay fat bacon all over it and roll it in paper baste it and when it is roasted cut about two pounds in thin slices lay them in a stew pan and take six large cucumbers peel them and chop them small lay over them a little pepper and salt and stew them in butter for about ten minutes then drain out the butter and shake some flour over them toss them up pour in half a pint of gravy let them stew till they are thick and dish them up to dress a fillet of beef it is the inside of a sirloin you must carefully cut it all out from the bone grate some nutmeg over it a few crumbs of bread a little pepper and salt a little lemon peel a little thyme some parsley shred small and roll it up tight tie it with a pack thread roast it put a quart of milk and a quarter of a pound of butter into the dripping pan and baste it when it is enough take it up untie it leave a little skewer in it to hold it together have a little good gravy in the dish and some sweet sauce in a cup you may baste it with red wine and butter if you like it better or it will do very well with butter only beef steaks rolled take three or four beef steaks flat them with a cleaver and make a force meat thus take a pound of veal beat fine in a mortar the flesh of a large fowl cut small half a pound of cold ham chopped small the kidney fat of a loin of veal chopped small a sweetbread cut in little pieces an ounce of truffles and morels first stewed and then cut small some parsley the yolks of four eggs a nutmeg grated a very little thyme a little lemon peel cut fine a little pepper and salt and half a pint of cream mix all together lay it on your steaks roll them up firm of a good size and put a little skewer into them put them into the stew pan and fry them of a nice brown then pour all the fat out and put in a pint of good fried gravy as in page nineteen put one spoonful of ketchup two spoonfuls of red wine a few mushrooms and let them stew for half an hour take up the steaks cut them in two lay the cut side uppermost and pour the sauce over it garnish with lemon note before you put the force meat into the beef you are to stir it all together over a slow fire for eight or ten minutes to stew a rump of beef having boiled it till it is little more than half enough take it up and peel off the skin take salt pepper beaten mace grated nutmeg a handful of parsley a little thyme winter savoury sweet marjoram all chopped fine and mixed and stuff them in great holes in the fat and lean the rest spread over it with the yolks of two eggs save the gravy that runs out put to it a pint of claret and put the meat in a deep pan pour the liquor in cover it close and let it bake two hours then put it into the dish strain the liquor through a sieve and skim off the fat very clean then pour it over the meat and send it to table another way to stew a rump of beef you must cut the meat off the bone lay it in your stew pan cover it with half gravy and half water put in a spoonful of whole pepper two onions a bundle of sweet herbs some salt and a pint of red wine cover it close set it over a stove or slow fire for four hours shaking it sometimes and turning it four or five times keep it stirring till dinner is ready take ten or twelve turnips cut them into slices the broad way then cut them into four flour them and fry them brown in beef dripping be sure to let your dripping boil before you put them in then drain them well from the fat lay the beef in your soup dish toast a little bread very nice and brown cut in three corner dice lay them into the dish and the turnips likewise skim the fat off clean strain in the gravy and send it to table 
if you have the convenience of a stove put the dish over it for five or six minutes it gives the liquor a fine flavour of the turnips makes the bread eat better and is a great addition season it with pepper and salt to your palate portugal beef take a rump of beef cut it off the bone cut it across flour it fry the thin part brown in butter the thick end stuffed with suet boiled chestnuts an anchovy an onion and a little pepper stew it in a pan of strong broth and when it is tender lay both the fried and stewed together in your dish cut the fried in two and lay on each side of the stewed strain the gravy it was stewed in put to it some pickled gherkins chopped and boiled chestnuts thicken it with a piece of butter rolled in flour a spoonful of browning give it two or three boils up season it with salt to your palate and pour it over the beef garnish with lemon end of section six Section 7 of The Art of Cookery Made Plain and Easy by Hannah Glass. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 2, Part 3 Made Dishes. From To Stew a Rump of Beef or Brisket, the French Way. Take a rump of beef, cut it from the bone, take half a pint of white port and half a pint of bread, a little vinegar some cloves and mace half a nutmeg beat fine some parsley chopped and all sorts of sweet herbs a little pepper and salt mix the herbs spice and wine all together lay your beef in an earthen pan put the mixture over it and let it lay all night then take the beef and put it into a deep stew pan with two quarts of good gravy the wine etc an onion chopped fine some carrot and two or three bay leaves you may put in some thick rashers of bacon at the bottom of your pan stew it very gently for five hours if twelve pounds if eight or nine four hours and keep the stew pan closed covered then take the meat out and strain the liquor through a sieve skim all the fat off put it into your stew pan with some truffles and morels artichoke bottoms blanched and cut in pieces or some carrots and turnips cut as for haricot of mutton or a few savoys tied up in quarters and stewed till tender boil it up season it with a little cayenne pepper and salt to your palate then put the meat in just to make it hot dish it up garnish with dried sippets or lemon and beetroot to stew beef gobbets get any piece of beef except the leg cut it in pieces about the bigness of a pullet's egg put them in a stew pan cover them with water let them stew skim them clean and when they have stewed an hour take mace cloves and whole pepper tied in a muslin rag loose some celery cut small put them into the pan with some salt turnips and carrots pared and cut in slices a little parsley a bundle of sweet herbs and a large crust of bread you may put in an ounce of barley or rice if you like it cover it close and let it stew till it is tender take out the herbs spices and bread and have ready fried a french roll cut in four Dish up all together and send it to table. Beef Royal Take a sirloin of beef or a large rump, bone it and beat it very well, then lard it with bacon, season it all over with salt, pepper, mace, cloves and nutmeg, all beat fine, some lemon peel cut small, and some sweet herbs. In the meantime, make a strong broth of the bones take a piece of butter with a little flour brown it put in the beef keep it turning often till it is brown then strain the broth put all together into a pot put in a bay leaf a few truffles and some ox palates cut small 
cover it close and let it stew till it is tender take out the beef skim off all the fat pour in a pint of claret some fried oysters an anchovy and some gherkins shred small boil all together put in the beef to warm thicken your sauce with a piece of butter rolled in flour or mushroom powder or butter rolled in flour lay your meat in the dish pour the sauce over it and send it to table this may be eat either hot or cold a tongue and udder forced first parboil your tongue and udder blanch the tongue and stick it with cloves as for the udder you must carefully raise it and fill it with force meat made with veal first wash the inside with the yolk of an egg then put in the force meat tie the ends close and spit them roast them and baste them with butter when enough have good gravy in the dish and sweet sauce in a cup note for variety you may lard the udder to fricassee neat's tongues brown take neat's tongues boil them tender peel them cut them into thin slices and fry them in fresh butter then pour out the butter put in as much gravy as you shall want for sauce a bundle of sweet herbs an onion some pepper and salt and a blade or two of mace a glass of white wine simmer all together half an hour then take out your tongue strain the gravy put it with the tongue in the stew pan again beat up the yolks of two eggs a little grated nutmeg a piece of butter as big as a walnut rolled in flour shake all together for four or five minutes dish it up and send it to table to force a tongue boil it till it is tender let it stand till it is cold then cut a hole at the root end of it take out some of the meat chop it with as much beef suet a few pippins some pepper and salt a little mace beet some nutmeg a few sweet herbs and the yolks of two eggs beat all together well in a marble mortar stuff it cover the end with a veal caul or buttered paper roast it baste it with butter and dish it up have for sauce good gravy a little melted butter the juice of an orange or lemon and some grated nutmeg boil it up and pour it into the dish to stew neat's tongues whole take two tongues let them stew in water just to cover them for two hours then peel them put them in again with a pint of strong gravy half a pint of white wine a bundle of sweet herbs a little pepper and salt some mace cloves and whole pepper tied in a muslin rag a spoonful of capers chopped turnips and carrots sliced and a piece of butter rolled in flour let all stew together very softly over a slow fire for two hours then take out the spice and sweet herbs and send it to table you may leave out the turnips and carrots or boil them by themselves and lay them in a dish just as you like to ragout ox palates take four ox palates and boil them very tender clean them well cut some in square pieces and some long take and make a rich coolie thus put a piece of butter in your stew pan and melt it put a large spoonful of flour to it stir it well till it is smooth then put a quart of good gravy to it chop three shallots and put in a gill of lisbon cut some lean ham very fine and put in also half a lemon boil them twenty minutes then strain it through a sieve put it into your pan and the palates with some forcemeat balls truffles and morels pickled or fresh mushrooms stewed in gravy season with pepper and salt to your liking and toss them up five or six minutes then dish them up garnish with lemon or beetroot to fricassee ox palates after boiling your palates very tender which you must do by setting them on in cold water and letting them do softly then blanch and scrape them clean 
take mace nutmeg cloves and pepper beat fine rub them all over with those and with crumbs of bread have ready some butter in a stew pan and when it is hot put in the pallets fry them brown on both sides then pour out the fat and put to them some mutton or beef gravy enough for sauce an anchovy a little nutmeg a little piece of butter rolled in flour and the juice of a lemon let it simmer altogether for a quarter of an hour dish it up and garnish with lemon to roast ox palates having boiled your palates tender blanch them cut them into slices about two inches long lard half with bacon then have ready two or three pigeons and two or three chicken peepers draw them truss them and fill them with force meat let half of them be nicely larded spit them on a bird spit thus a bird a pallet a sage leaf and a piece of bacon and so on a bird a pallet a sage leaf and a piece of bacon take coxcombs and lambstones parboiled and blanched lard them with little bits of bacon large oysters parboiled and each one larded with one piece of bacon put these on a skewer with a little piece of bacon and a sage leaf between them tie them on a spit and roast them then beat up the yolks of three eggs some nutmeg a little salt and crumbs of bread baste them with these all the time they are roasting and have ready two sweetbreads each cut in two some artichoke bottoms cut into four and fried and then rub the dish with shallots lay the birds in the middle piled upon one another and lay the other things all separate by themselves round about in the dish have ready for sauce a pint of good gravy a quarter of a pint of red wine an anchovy the oyster liquor a piece of butter rolled in flour boil all these together and pour into the dish with a little juice of lemon garnish your dish with lemon to dress a leg of mutton a la royale having taken off all the fat skin and shank bone lard it with bacon season it with pepper and salt and a round piece of about three or four pounds of beef or leg of veal lard it have ready some hog's lard boiling flour your meat and give it a colour in the lard then take the meat out and put it into a pot with a bundle of sweet herbs some parsley an onion stuck with cloves two or three blades of mace some whole pepper and three quarts of gravy cover it close and let it boil very softly for two hours meanwhile get ready a sweetbread split cut into four and broiled a few truffles and morels stewed in a quarter of a pint of strong gravy a glass of red wine a few mushrooms two spoonfuls of ketchup and some asparagus tops boil all these together then lay the mutton in the middle of the dish cut the beef or veal into slices make a rim round your mutton with the slices and pour the ragout over it when you have taken the meat out of the pot skim all the fat off the gravy strain it and add as much to the other as will fill the dish garnish with lemon a leg of mutton a la oat gout let it hang a fortnight in an airy place then have ready some cloves of garlic and stuff it all over rub it with pepper and salt roast it have ready some good gravy and red wine in the dish and send it to table to roast a leg of mutton with oysters take a leg of about two or three days killed stuff it all over with oysters and roast it garnish with horseradish to roast a leg of mutton with cockles stuff it all over with cockles and roast it garnish with horseradish a shoulder of mutton on epigram roast it almost enough then very carefully take off the skin about the thickness of a crown piece and the shank bone with it at the end then season that skin and shank bone with pepper and salt a little lemon peel cut small and a few sweet herbs and crumbs of bread 
then lay this on the gridiron and let it be of a fine brown in the meantime take the rest of the meat and cut it like a hash about the bigness of a shilling save the gravy and put to it with a few spoonfuls of strong gravy half an onion cut fine a little nutmeg a little pepper and salt a little bundle of sweet herbs some gherkins cut very small a few mushrooms two or three truffles cut small two spoonfuls of wine either red or white and throw a little flour over the meat let all these stew together very softly for five or six minutes but be sure it does not boil take out the sweet herbs and put the hash into the dish lay the broiled upon it and send it to table a harico of mutton take a neck or loin of mutton cut it into thick chops flour them and fry them brown in a little butter take them out and lay them to drain on a sieve then put them into a stew pan and cover them with gravy put in a whole onion and a turnip or two and stew them till tender then take out the chops strain the liquor through a sieve and skim off all the fat put a little butter in the stew pan and melt it with a spoonful of flour stir it well till it is smooth then put the liquor in and stir it well all the time you are pouring it or it will be in lumps put in your chops and a glass of lisbon have ready some carrot about three quarters of an inch long and cut round with an apple corer some turnips cut with a turnip scoop a dozen small onions all blanched well put them to your meat and season with pepper and salt stew them very gently for fifteen minutes then take out the chops with a fork lay them in your dish and pour the ragout over it garnish with beetroot to french a hind saddle of mutton it is the two chumps of the loins cut off the rump and carefully lift up the skin with a knife begin at the broad end but be sure you do not crack it nor take it quite off then take some slices of ham or bacon chopped fine a few truffles some young onions some parsley a little thyme sweet marjoram winter savoury a little lemon peel all chopped fine a little mace and two or three cloves beat fine half a nutmeg and a little pepper and salt mix all together and throw over the meat where you took off the skin then lay on the skin again and fasten it with two fine skewers at each side and roll it in well buttered paper it will take two hours roasting then take off the paper baste the meat strew it all over with crumbs of bread and when it is of a fine brown take it up for sauce take six large shallots cut them very fine put them into a saucepan with two spoonfuls of vinegar and two of white wine boil them for a minute or two pour it into the dish and garnish with horseradish another french way called saint menu take the hind part of a chine of mutton take off the skin lard it with bacon season it with pepper salt mace cloves beet and nutmeg sweet herbs young onions and parsley all chopped fine take a large oval or a large gravy pan lay layers of bacon and then layers of beef all over the bottom lay in the mutton then lay layers of bacon on the mutton and then a layer of beef put in a pint of wine and as much good gravy as will stew it put in a bay leaf and two or three shallots cover it close put fire over and under it if you have a close pan and let it stand stewing for two hours when done take it out strew crumbs of bread all over it and put it into the oven to brown strain the gravy it was stewed in and boil it till there is just enough for sauce lay the mutton into a dish pour the sauce in and serve it up you must brown it before a fire if you have not an oven cutlets a la maintenon a very good dish take a neck of mutton cut it into chops 
in every chop must be a long bone take the fat off the bone and scrape it clean have some bread crumbs parsley marjoram thyme winter savoury and basil all chopped fine grate some nutmeg on it some pepper and salt mix these all together melt a little butter in a stew pan dip the chop in the butter then roll them in the herbs and put them in half sheets of buttered paper leave the end of the bone bare then broil them on a clear fire for twenty minutes send them up in the paper with poveroy sauce in a boat made thus chop four shallots fine put them in half a gill of gravy a little pepper and salt and a spoonful of vinegar boil them up one minute then put it in your boat to make a mutton hash cut your mutton in little bits as thin as you can strew a little flour over it have ready some gravy enough for sauce wherein sweet herbs onion pepper and salt have been boiled strain it put in your meat with a little piece of butter rolled in flour and a little salt a shallot cut fine a few capers and gherkins chopped fine toss all together for a minute or two have ready some bread toasted and cut into thin sippets lay them round the dish and pour in your hash garnish your dish with pickles and horseradish note some love a glass of red wine or walnut pickle you may put just what you will into a hash if the sippets are toasted it is better to dress pigs petty toes put your petty toes into a saucepan with half a pint of water a blade of mace a little whole pepper a bundle of sweet herbs and an onion let them boil five minutes then take out the liver lights and heart mince them very fine grate a little nutmeg over them and shake a little flour on them let the feet do till they are tender then take them out and strain the liquor put all together with a little salt and a piece of butter as big as a walnut shake the saucepan often let it simmer five or six minutes then cut some toasted sippets and lay round the dish lay the mincemeat and sauce in the middle and the petty toes split round it you may add the juice of half a lemon or a very little vinegar a second way to roast a leg of mutton with oysters stuff a leg of mutton with mutton suet salt pepper nutmeg and the yolks of eggs then roast it stick it all over with cloves and when it is about half done cut off some of the underside of the fleshy end in little bits put these into a pipkin with a pint of oysters liquor and all a little salt and mace and half a pint of hot water stew them till half the liquor is wasted then put in a piece of butter rolled in flour shake all together and when the mutton is enough take it up pour this sauce over it and send it to table to dress a leg of mutton to eat like venison take a hind quarter of mutton and cut the leg in the shape of a haunch of venison save the blood of the sheep and steep it for five or six hours then take it out and roll it in three or four sheets of white paper well buttered on the inside tie it with a pack thread and roast it basting it with good beef dripping or butter it will take two hours at a good fire for your mutton must be fat and thick about five or six minutes before you take it up take off the paper baste it with a piece of butter and shake a little flour over it to make it have a fine froth and then have a little good drawn gravy in a basin and sweet sauce in another do not garnish with anything to dress mutton the turkish way first cut your meat into thin slices then wash it in vinegar and put it into a pot or saucepan that has a close cover to it put in some rice whole pepper and three or four whole onions let all these stew together skimming it frequently when it is enough take out the onions and season it with salt to your palate lay the mutton in a dish and pour the rice and liquor over it 
note the neck or leg are the best joints to dress this way put into a leg four quarts of water and a quarter of a pound of rice to a neck two quarts of water and two ounces of rice to every pound of meat allow a quarter of an hour being close covered if you put in a blade or two of mace and a bundle of sweet herbs it will be a great addition when it is just enough put in a piece of butter and take care the rice do not burn to the pot in all these things you should lay skewers at the bottom of the pot to lay your meat on that it may not stick a shoulder of mutton with a ragout of turnips take a shoulder of mutton get the blade bone taken out as neat as possible and in the place put a ragout done thus take one or two sweetbreads some coxcombs half an ounce of truffles some mushrooms a blade or two of mace a little pepper and salt stew all these in a quarter of a pint of good gravy and thicken it with a piece of butter rolled in flour or yolks of eggs which you please let it be cold before you put it in and fill up the place where you took the bone out just in the form it was before and sew it up tight take a large deep stew pan or one of the round deep copper pans with two handles lay at the bottom thin slices of bacon then slices of veal a bundle of parsley thyme and sweet herbs some whole pepper a blade or two of mace three or four cloves a large onion and put in just thin gravy enough to cover the meat cover it close and let it stew two hours then take eight or ten turnips pare them and cut them into what shape you please put them into boiling water and let them be just enough throw them into a sieve to drain over the hot water that they may keep warm then take up the mutton drain it from the fat lay it in a dish and keep it hot covered strain the gravy it was stewed in and take off all the fat put in a little salt a glass of white wine two spoonfuls of ketchup and a piece of butter rolled in flour boil them together till there is just enough for sauce then put in the turnips give them a boil up pour them over the meat and send it to table you may fry the turnips of a light brown and toss them up with the sauce but that is according to your palate note for a change you may leave out the turnips and add a bunch of celery cut and washed clean and stewed in a very little water till it is quite tender and the water almost boiled away pour the gravy as before directed into it and boil it up till the sauce is good or you may leave both these out and add truffles morels fresh and pickled mushrooms and artichoke bottoms note well a shoulder of veal without the knuckle half roasted very quick and brown and then done like the mutton eats well do not garnish your mutton but garnish your veal with lemon to stuff a leg or shoulder of mutton take a little grated bread some beef suet the yolks of hard eggs three anchovies a bit of onion some pepper and salt a little thyme and winter savoury twelve oysters and some nutmeg grated mix all these together shred them very fine work them up with raw eggs like a paste stuff your mutton under the skin in the thickest place or where you please and roast it for sauce take some of the oyster liquor some claret one anchovy a little nutmeg a bit of onion and a few oysters stew all these together then take out your onion pour sauce under your mutton and send it to table garnish with horseradish oxford john keep a leg of mutton till it is stale cut it into thin collops and take out all the sinews and fat season them with pepper and salt a little beaten mace and strew among them a little shred parsley thyme and three or four shallots 
put about a quarter of a pound of butter in a stew pan and make it hot put all your collops in keep them stirring with a wooden spoon till they are three parts done and then add a pint of gravy a little juice of lemon and thicken it with butter rolled in flour let them simmer four or five minutes and they will be enough take care you do not let them boil nor have them ready before you want them for they will grow hard fry some bread sippets and throw over and round them and send them up hot mutton rump a la braise take six mutton rumps and boil them for fifteen minutes in water take them out cut them in two and put them into a stew pan with half a pint of good gravy a gill of white wine an onion stuck with cloves a little salt and cayenne pepper cover them close and stew them till tender take them out and the onion skim off all the fat thicken the gravy with a little butter rolled in flour a spoonful of browning the juice of half a lemon boil it up till it is smooth but not too thick put in your rumps give them a toss or two dish them up hot garnish with horseradish and beetroot for variety you may leave the rumps whole and lard six kidneys on one side and do them the same as the rumps only not boil them and put the rumps in the middle of the dish the kidneys round them with sauce over all the kidneys make a pretty side dish of themselves sheep's rumps with rice take six rumps put them into a stew pan with some mutton gravy enough to fill it stew them about half an hour take them up and let them stand to cool then put into the liquor a quarter of a pound of rice an onion stuck with cloves and a blade or two of mace let it boil till the rice is as thick as a pudding but take care it do not stick to the bottom which you must do by stirring it often in the meantime take a clean stew pan put a piece of butter into it dip your rumps in the yolks of eggs beat and then in crumbs of bread with a little nutmeg lemon peel and a very little thyme in it fry them in the butter of a fine brown then take them out lay them in a dish to drain pour out all the fat and toss the rice into that pan stir it all together for a minute or two then lay the rice into the dish and the rumps all round upon the rice have ready four eggs boiled hard cut them into quarters lay them around the dish with fried parsley between them and send it to table End of section 7section eight of the art of cookery made plain and easy by hannah glass this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter two part four made dishes from to bake lamb and rice take a neck or loin of lamb half roast it take it up cut it into steaks then take half a pound of rice boiled in a quart of water ten minutes put it into a quart of good gravy with two or three blades of mace and a little nutmeg do it over a stove or slow fire till the rice begins to be thick then take it off stir in a pound of butter and when that is quite melted stir in the yolks of six eggs first beat then take a dish and butter it all over take the steaks and put a little pepper and salt over them dip them in a little melted butter lay them into the dish pour the gravy which comes out of them over them and then the rice beat the yolks of three eggs and pour all over send it to the oven and bake it better than half an hour a forced leg of lamb take a large leg of lamb cut a long slit on the back side and take out the meat but take great care you do not deface the other side then chop the meat small with marrow half a pound of beef suet some oysters an anchovy washed an onion some sweet herbs a little lemon peel and some beaten mace and nutmeg 
Beat all these together in a mortar. Stuff it up in the shape it was before. Sew it up and rub it over with the yolks of eggs beaten. Spit it, flour it all over, lay it to the fire and baste it with butter. An hour will roast it. You may bake it if you please, but then you must butter the dish and lay the butter over it. Cut the loin into steaks, season them with pepper, salt and nutmeg, lemon peel cut fine and a few sweet herbs. Fry them in fresh butter of a fine brown, then pour but all the butter, put in a quarter of a pint of white wine, shake it about and put in half a pint of strong gravy wherein good spice has been boiled, a quarter of a pint of oysters and the liquor, some mushrooms and a spoonful of the pickle, a piece of butter rolled in flour and the yolk of an egg beat. Stir all these together till thick, then lay your leg of lamb in the dish and the loin round it. Pour the sauce over it and garnish with lemon. To fry a loin of lamb. Cut your lamb into chops, rub it over on both sides with the yolk of an egg and sprinkle some breadcrumbs, a little parsley, thyme, marjoram and winter savoury chopped very fine and a little lemon peel chopped fine. Fry it in butter of a nice light brown. Send it up in a dish by itself. Garnish with a good deal of fried parsley. Another way of frying a neck or loin of lamb. Cut it into thin steaks, beat them with a rolling pin, fry them in half a pint of ale, season them with a little salt and cover them close. When enough, take them out of the pan, lay them in a plate before the fire to keep hot and pour all out of the pan into a basin. Then put in half a pint of white wine, a few capers, the yolks of two eggs beat, with a little nutmeg and a little salt. Add to this the liquor they were fried in, and keep stirring it one way all the time till it is thick. Then put in the lamb, keep shaking the pan for a minute or two, lay the steaks into the dish, pour the sauce over them, and have some parsley in a plate before the fire to crisp. Garnish your dish with that and lemon. To make a ragout of lamb. Take a four quarter of lamb, cut the knuckle bone off, lard it with little thin bits of bacon, flour it, fry it of a fine brown, and then put it into an earthen pot or stew pan. Put to it a quart of broth or good gravy, a bundle of herbs, a little mace, two or three cloves and a little whole pepper. Cover it close and let it stew pretty fast for half an hour. Pour the liquor all out, strain it, keep the lamb hot in the pot till the sauce is ready. Take half a pint of oysters, flour them, fry them brown, drain out all the fat clean that you fried them in, skim all the fat off the gravy, then pour it into the oysters. Put in an anchovy and two spoonfuls of either red or white wine. Boil all together till there is just enough for sauce. Add some fresh mushrooms, if you can get them, and some pickled ones, with a spoonful of the pickle, or the juice of half a lemon. Lay your lamb in the dish and pour the sauce over it. Garnish with lemon. Lamb Cutlets Fricasseed Take a leg of lamb, cut it in thin cutlets across the grain, put them in a stew pan. In the meantime, make some good broth with the bones and shank, etc., enough to cover the collops. Put it into the cover with a bundle of sweet herbs, an onion, a little cloves and mace tied in a muslin rag, stew them gently for ten minutes. Take out the collops, skim the fat off, and take out the sweet herbs and mace. Thicken it with butter rolled in flour. Season it with salt and a little cayenne pepper. Put in a few mushrooms, truffles and morels, clean washed. Some forcemeat balls, three yolks of eggs beat up in half a pint of cream, some nutmeg grated. Keep stirring it one way till it is thick and smooth. Put in your collops, give them a toss up, 
take them out with a fork and lay them in a dish pour the sauce over them garnish with lemon and beetroot lamb chops larded cut the best end of a neck of lamb in chops and lard one side season them with beaten cloves mace and nutmeg a little pepper and salt put them into a stew pan the larded side uppermost put in half a pint of gravy a gill of white wine an onion a bundle of sweet herbs stew them gently till tender take the chops out skim the fat clean off and take out the onion and sweet herbs thicken the gravy with a little butter rolled in flour add a spoonful of browning a spoonful of ketchup and one of lemon pickle boil it up till it is smooth put in the chops larded side down stew them up gently for a minute or two take the chops out and put the larded side uppermost in the dish and the sauce over them garnish with lemon and pickles of any sort you may add truffles and morels and pickled mushrooms in the sauce if you please or you may do the chops without larding lamb chops on casserole cut a loin of lamb in chops put yolk of egg on both sides and strew bread crumbs over with a little cloves and mace pepper and salt mixed fry them of a nice light brown and put them round in a dish close as you can and leave a hole in the middle to put the following sauce in all sorts of sweet herbs and parsley chopped fine stewed a little in some good thick gravy garnish with fried parsley to stew a lamb's or calf's head first wash it and pick it very clean lay it in water for an hour take out the brains and with a sharp penknife carefully take out the bones and the tongue but be careful you do not break the meat then take out the two eyes and take two pounds of veal and two pounds of beef suet a very little thyme a good piece of lemon peel minced a nutmeg grated and two anchovies chop all very well together grate two stale rolls and mix all together with the yolks of four eggs save enough of this meat to make about twenty balls take half a pint of fresh mushrooms clean peeled and washed the yolks of six eggs chopped half a pint of oysters clean washed or pickled cockles mix all these together but first stew your oysters put the force meat into the head and close it tie it tight with pack thread and put it into a deep stew pan and put to it two quarts of gravy with a blade or two of mace cover it close and let it stew two hours in the meantime beat up the brains with some lemon peel cut fine a little parsley chopped half a nutmeg grated and the yolk of an egg have some dripping boiling fry half the brains in little cakes and fry the balls keep them both hot by the fire take half an ounce of truffles and morels then strain the gravy the head was stewed in put the truffles and morels to it with the liquor and a few mushrooms boil all together then put in the rest of the brains that are not fried stew them together for a minute or two pour it over the head and lay the fried brains and balls round it garnish with lemon you may fry about twelve oysters and put over to dress veal a la bourgeois cut pretty thick slices of veal lard them with bacon and season them with pepper salt beaten mace cloves nutmeg and chopped parsley then take the stew pan and cover the bottom with slices of fat bacon lay the veal upon them cover it and set it over a very slow fire for eight or ten minutes just to be hot and no more then brisk up your fire and brown your veal on both sides then shake some flour over it and brown it pour in a quart of good broth or gravy cover it close and let it stew gently till it is enough when enough take out the slices of bacon and skim all the fat off clean and beat up the yolks of three eggs with some of the gravy 
mix all together and keep it stirring one way till it is smooth and thick then take it up lay your meat in the dish and pour the sauce over it garnish with lemon a disguised leg of veal and bacon lard your veal all over with slips of bacon and a little lemon peel and boil it with a piece of bacon when enough take it up cut the bacon into slices and have ready some dried sage and pepper rubbed fine rub over the bacon lay the veal in the dish and the bacon round it strew it all over with fried parsley and have green sauce in cups made thus take two handfuls of sorrel pound it in a mortar and squeeze out the juice put it into a saucepan with some melted butter a little sugar and the juice of a lemon or you may make it thus beat two handfuls of sorrel in a mortar with two pippins quartered squeeze the juice out with the juice of a lemon or vinegar and sweeten it with sugar loin of veal in epigram roast a fine loin of veal as directed in the chapter for roasting take it up and carefully take the skin off the back part without breaking take and cut out all the lean meat but mind and leave the ends whole that it will hold the following mince meats mince all the meat very fine with the kidney part put it in a little veal gravy enough to moisten it with the gravy that comes from the loin put in a little pepper and salt some lemon peel shred fine the yolks of three eggs a spoonful of ketchup and thicken it with a little butter rolled in flour give it a shake or two over the fire and put it into the loin and then pull the skin over if the skin should not quite cover it give it a brown with a hot iron or put it in an oven for fifteen minutes send it up hot and garnish with barberries and lemon a pillow of veal take a neck or breast of veal half roast it then cut it into six pieces season it with pepper salt and nutmeg take a pound of rice put to it a quart of broth some mace and a little salt do it over a stove or very slow fire till it is thick but butter the bottom of the dish or pan you do it in beat up the yolks of six eggs and stir into it then take a little round deep dish butter it lay some of the rice at the bottom then lay the veal on a round heap and cover it all over with rice wash it over with the yolks of eggs and bake it an hour and a half then open the top and pour in a pint of good rich gravy garnish with a seville orange cut in quarters and send it to table hot bombarded veal you must get a fillet of veal cut out of it five lean pieces as thick as your hand round them up a little then lard them very thick on the round side with little narrow thin pieces of bacon and lard five sheep's tongues being first boiled and blanched lard them here and there with very little bits of lemon peel and make a well seasoned force meat of veal bacon ham beef suet and an anchovy beat well make another tender force meat of veal beef suet mushrooms spinach parsley thyme sweet marjoram winter savoury and green onions season with pepper salt and mace beat it well make a round ball of the other force meat and stuff in the middle of this roll it up in a veal call and bake it what is left tie up like a bologna sausage and boil it but first rub the caul with the yolk of an egg put the larded veal into a stew pan with some good gravy and stew it gently till it is enough skim off the fat and put in some truffles and morels and some mushrooms your force meat being baked enough lay it in the middle the veal round it and the tongues fried and laid between the boiled cut into slices and fried and throw all over pour on them the sauce you may add artichoke bottoms sweetbreads and coxcombs if you please 
garnish with lemon veal rolls take ten or twelve little thin slices of veal lay on them some force meat according to your fancy roll them up and tie them just across the middle with coarse thread put them on a bird spit rub them over with the yolks of eggs flour them and baste them with butter half an hour will do them lay them into a dish and have ready some good gravy with a few truffles and morels and some mushrooms garnish with lemon olives of veal the french way take two pounds of veal some marrow two anchovies the yolks of two hard eggs a few mushrooms and some oysters a little thyme marjoram parsley spinach lemon peel salt pepper nutmeg and mace finely beaten take your veal call lay a layer of bacon and a layer of the ingredients roll it in the veal call and either roast it or bake it an hour will do either when enough cut it into slices lay it into your dish and pour good gravy over it garnish with lemon scotch collops a la francois take a leg of veal cut it very thin lard it with bacon then take half a pint of ale boiling and pour over it till the blood is out and then pour the ale into a basin take a few sweet herbs chopped small strew them over the veal and fry it in butter flour it a little till enough then pour it into a dish and pour the butter away toast little thin pieces of bacon and lay round pour the ale into the stew pan with two anchovies and a glass of white wine then beat up the yolks of two eggs and stir in with a little nutmeg some pepper and a piece of butter shake all together till thick and then pour it into the dish garnish with lemon to make a savoury dish of veal cut large collops out of a leg of veal spread them abroad on a dresser hack them with the back of a knife and dip them in the yolks of eggs season them with cloves mace nutmeg and pepper beat fine make forcemeat with some of your veal beef suet oysters chopped sweet herbs shred fine and the aforesaid spice strew all these over your collops roll and tie them up put them on skewers tie them to a spit and roast them to the rest of your force meat add a raw egg or two roll them in balls and fry them put them in your dish with your meat when roasted and make the sauce with strong broth an anchovy a shallot a little white wine and some spice let it stew and thicken it with a piece of butter rolled in flour pour the sauce into the dish lay the meat in and garnish with lemon italian collops prepare a fillet of veal cut into thin slices cut off the skin and fat lard them with bacon fry them brown then take them out and lay them in a dish pour out all the butter take a quarter of a pound of butter and melt it in the pan then strew in a large spoonful of flour stir it till it is brown and pour in three pints of good gravy a bundle of sweet herbs and an onion which you must take out soon let it boil a little then put in the collops let them stew half a quarter of an hour put in some forcemeat balls fried and a few pickled mushrooms truffles and morels stir all together for a minute or two till it is thick and then dish it up garnish with lemon to do them white after you have cut your veal in thin slices lard it with bacon season it with cloves mace nutmeg pepper and salt some grated bread and sweet herbs stew the knuckle in as little liquor as you can a bunch of sweet herbs some whole pepper a blade of mace and four cloves then take a pint of the broth stew the cutlets in it and add to it some mushrooms a piece of butter rolled in flour and the yolks of two eggs and a gill of cream stir all together till it is thick and then dish it up garnish with lemon 
veal blankets roast a piece of fillet of veal cut off the skin and nervous parts cut it into little thin bits put some butter into a stew pan over the fire with some chopped onions fry them a little then add a dust of flour stir it together and put in some good broth or gravy and a bundle of sweet herbs season it with spice make it of a good taste and then put in your veal the yolks of two eggs beat up with the cream and grated nutmeg some chopped parsley a shallot some lemon peel grated and a little juice of lemon keep it stirring one way when enough dish it up a shoulder of veal a la piedmontoire take a shoulder of veal cut off the skin that it may hang at one end then lard the meat with bacon and ham and season it with pepper salt mace sweet herbs parsley and lemon peel cover it again with the skin stew it with gravy and when it is just tender take it up then take sorrel some lettuce chopped small and stew them in some butter with parsley onions and mushrooms the herbs being tender put to them some of the liquor some sweetbreads and some bits of ham let all stew together a little while then lift up the skin lay the stewed herbs over and under cover it with the skin again wet it with melted butter strew it over with crumbs of bread and send it to the oven to brown serve it hot with some good gravy in the dish the french strew it over with parmesan before it goes to the oven calf's head surprise take a calf's head with the skin on take a sharp knife and raise off the skin with as much meat from the bone as you can possibly get so that it may appear like a whole head when stuffed then make a force meat in the following manner take half a pound of veal a pound of beef suet the crumb of a tuppenny loaf half a pound of fat bacon beat them well in a mortar with some sweet herbs and parsley shred fine some cloves mace and nutmeg beat fine some salt and cayenne pepper enough to season it the yolks of four eggs beat up and mixed all together in a force meat stuff the head with it and skewer it tight at each end then put it into a deep pot or pan and put two quarts of water half a pint of white wine a blade or two of mace a bundle of sweet herbs an anchovy two spoonfuls of walnut and mushroom ketchup the same quantity of lemon pickle a little salt and pepper lay a coarse paste over it to keep in the steam and put it for two hours and a half in a sharp oven when you take it out lay the head in a soup dish skim off the fat from the gravy and strain it through a sieve into a stew pan thicken it with butter rolled in flour and when it has boiled a few minutes put in the yolks of four eggs well beaten and minced with half a pint of cream have ready boiled some force meat balls half an ounce of truffles and morels but don't put them into the gravy pour the gravy over the head and garnish with force meat balls truffles morels and mushrooms sweetbreads of veal a la dauphin take the largest sweetbreads you can get and lard them open them in such a manner as you can stuff in force meat three will make a fine dish make your force meat with a large fowl or young cock skin it and pick off all the flesh take half a pound of fat and lean bacon cut these very fine and beat them in a mortar season it with an anchovy some nutmeg a little lemon peel a very little thyme and some parsley mix these up with the yolks of two eggs fill your sweetbreads and fasten them with fine wooden skewers take the stew pan lay layers of bacon at the bottom of the pan season them with pepper salt mace cloves sweet herbs and a large onion sliced upon that lay thin slices of veal and then lay on your sweetbreads cover it close let it stand eight or ten minutes over a slow fire and then pour in a quart of boiling water or broth cover it close 
and let it stew two hours very softly then take out the sweetbreads keep them hot strain the gravy skim all the fat off boil it up till there is about half a pint put in the sweetbreads and give them two or three minutes stew in the gravy then lay them in the dish and pour the gravy over them garnish with lemon another way to dress sweetbreads do not put any water or gravy into the stew pan but put the same veal and bacon over the sweetbreads and season as under directed cover them close put fire over as well as under and when they are enough take out the sweetbreads put in a ladle full of gravy boil it and strain it skim off all the fat let it boil till it jellies then put in the sweetbreads to glaze lay essence of ham in the dish and lay the sweetbreads upon it or make a very rich gravy with mushrooms truffles and morels a glass of white wine and two spoonfuls of ketchup garnish with coxcombs forced and stewed in gravy note you may add to the first truffles morels mushrooms cockcombs pallets artichoke bottoms two spoonfuls of white wine two of ketchup or just as you please note well there are many ways of dressing sweetbreads you may lard them with thin slips of bacon and roast them with what sauce you please or you may marinate them cut them into thin slices flour them and fry them serve them up with fried parsley and either butter or gravy garnish with lemon sweetbreads on gordon air take three sweetbreads and parboil them take a stew pan and lay layers of bacon or ham and veal over that lay the sweetbreads on with the upper side downwards put a layer of veal and bacon over them a pint of veal broth three or four blades of mace stew them gently three quarters of an hour take the sweetbreads out strain off the gravy through a sieve and skim off the fat make an omelette of yolks of eggs in the following manner beat up four yolks of eggs put two in a plate and put them over a stew pan of water boiling over the fire put another plate over it and it will soon be done put a little spinach juice into the other half and serve it the same cut it out in sprigs or what form you please and put it over the sweetbreads in the dish and keep them as hot as you can put some butter rolled in flour to thicken the gravy two yolks of eggs beat up in a gill of cream put it over the fire and keep stirring it one way till it is thick and smooth put it under the sweetbreads and send them up garnish with lemon and beetroot calf's chitterlings or andouilles take some of the largest calf's nuts cleanse them cut them in pieces proportionable to the length of the puddings you design to make and tie one end to those pieces then take some bacon with a calf's udder and chaldron blanched and cut into dice or slices put them into a stew pan and season with fine spice pounded a bay leaf some salt pepper and shallot cut small and about half a pint of cream toss it up take off the pan and thicken your mixture with four or five yolks of eggs and some crumbs of bread then fill up your chitterlings with the stuffing keep it warm tie the other ends with pack thread blanch and boil them like hogs chitterlings let them grow cold in their own liquor before you serve them up boil them over a moderate fire and serve them up pretty hot these sort of andouilles or puddings must be made in summer when hogs are seldom killed to dress calf's chitterlings curiously cut a calf's nut in slices of its length and the thickness of a finger together with some ham bacon and the white of chickens cut after the same manner put the whole into a stew pan seasoned with salt pepper sweet herbs and spice then take the guts cleansed cut and divide them in parcels and fill them with your slices 
then lay in the bottom of a kettle or pan some slices of bacon and veal season them with some pepper salt a bay leaf and an onion and lay some bacon and veal over them then put in a pint of white wine and let it stew softly close covered with fire over and under it if the pot or pan will allow it then broil the puddings on a sheet of white paper well buttered on the inside end of section eight section nine of the art of cookery made plain and easy by hannah glass this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter two part five made dishes from to dress a ham a la braise clear the knuckle take off the sword and lay it in water to freshen then tie it about with string take slices of bacon and beef beat and season them well with spice and sweet herbs then lay them in the bottom of a kettle with onions with parsnips and carrots sliced with some sives and parsley lay in your ham the fat side uppermost and cover it with slices of beef and over that with slices of bacon then lay on some sliced roots and herbs the same as under it cover it close and stop it close with paste put fire both over and under it and let it stew with a very slow fire twelve hours put it in a pan drudge it well with grated bread and brown it with a hot iron or put it in the oven and bake it one hour then serve it upon a clean napkin garnish with raw parsley note if you eat it hot make a ragout thus take a veal sweetbread some livers of fowls coxcombs mushrooms and truffles toss them up in a pint of good gravy seasoned with spice as you like it thicken it with a piece of butter rolled in flour and a glass of red wine then brown your ham as above and let it stand a quarter of an hour to drain the fat out take the liquor it was stewed in strain it skim all the fat off put it to the gravy and boil it up with a spoonful of browning it will do as well as the essence of ham sometimes you may serve it up with a ragout of crawfish and sometimes with carp sauce to roast a ham or gammon take off the sword or what we call the skin or rind and lay it in lukewarm water for two or three hours then lay it in a pan pour upon it a quart of canary and let it steep in it for ten or twelve hours when you have spitted it put some sheets of white paper over the fat side pour the canary in which it was soaked in the dripping pan and baste with it all the time it is roasting when it is roasted enough pull off the paper and drudge it well with crumbled bread and parsley shred fine make the fire brisk and brown it well if you eat it hot garnish it with raspings of bread if cold serve it on a clean napkin and garnish it with green parsley for a second course or thus take off the skin of the ham or gammon when you have half boiled it and dredge it with oatmeal sifted very fine baste it with butter then roast it gently two hours stir up your fire and brown it quick when so done dish it up and pour brown gravy in the dish garnish with bread raspings if hot if cold garnish with parsley to stuff a chine of pork make a stuffing of the fat leaf of pork parsley thyme sage eggs crumbs of bread season it with pepper salt shallot and nutmeg and stuff it thick then roast it gently and when it is about a quarter roasted cut the skin in slips and make your sauce with apples lemon peel two or three cloves and a blade of mace sweeten it with sugar put some butter in and have mustard in a cup various ways of dressing a pig 
first skin your pig up to the ears whole then make a good plum pudding batter with good beef fat fruit eggs milk and flour fill the skin and sew it up it will look like a pig but you must bake it flour it very well and rub it all over with butter and when it is near enough draw it to the oven's mouth rub it dry and put it in again for a few minutes lay it in the dish and let the sauce be small gravy and butter in the dish cut the other part of the pig into four quarters roast them as you do lamb throw mint and parsley on it as it roasts then lay them on watercresses and have mint sauce in a basin any one of these quarters will make a pretty side dish or take one quarter and roast cut the other in steaks and fry them fine and brown have stewed spinach in the dish and lay the roast upon it and the fried in the middle garnish with hard eggs and seville oranges cut into quarters and have some butter in a cup or for a change you may have good gravy in the dish and garnish with fried parsley and lemon or you may make a ragout of sweetbreads artichoke bottoms truffles morels and good gravy and pour over them garnish with lemon either of these will do for a top dish of a first course you may fricassee it white for a second course at top or a side dish you may take a pig skin him and fill him with force meat made thus take two pounds of young pork fat and all two pounds of veal the same some sage thyme parsley a little lemon peel pepper salt mace cloves and a nutmeg mix them and beat them fine in a mortar then fill the pig and sew it up you may either roast or bake it have nothing but good gravy in the dish or you may cut it into slices and lay the head in the middle save the head whole with the skin on and roast it by itself when it is enough cut it in two and lay it in your dish have ready some good gravy and dried sage rubbed in it thicken it with a piece of butter rolled in flour take out the brains beat them up with the gravy and pour them into the dish note you may make a very good pie of it as you may see in the directions for pies which you may either make a bottom or side dish you must observe in your white fricassee that you take off the fat or you may make a very good dish thus take a quarter of a pig skinned cut it into chops season them with spice and wash them with the yolks of eggs butter the bottom of a dish lay these steaks on the dish and upon every steak lay some force meat the thickness of half a crown made thus take half a pound of veal and of fat pork the same quantity chop them very well together and beat them in a mortar fine add some sweet herbs and sage a little lemon peel nutmeg pepper and salt and a little beaten mace upon this lay a layer of bacon or ham and then a bay leaf take a little fine skewer and stick just in about two inches long to hold them together then pour a little melted butter over them and send them to the oven to bake when they are enough lay them in your dish and pour good gravy over them with mushrooms and garnish with lemon a pig in jelly cut it into quarters and lay it into your stew pan put in one calf's foot and the pig's feet a pint of rhenish wine the juice of four lemons and one quart of water three or four blades of mace two or three cloves some salt and a very little piece of lemon peel stove it or do it over a slow fire two hours then take it up lay the pig into the dish you intended for it then strain the liquor and when the jelly is cold skim off the fat and leave the settling at the bottom beat up the whites of six eggs and boil up with the jelly about ten minutes and put it through a bag till it is clear then pour the jelly over the pig 
then serve it up cold in the jelly collard pig kill a fine young roasting pig dress off the hair and draw it and wash it clean rip it open from one end to the other and take out all the bones rub it all over with pepper and salt a little cloves and mace beat fine six sage leaves and sweet herbs chopped small roll up your pig tight and bind it with a fillet fill the pot you intend to boil it in with soft water a bunch of sweet herbs some peppercorns some cloves and mace a handful of salt and a pint of vinegar when the liquor boils put in your pig boil it till it is tender take it up and when it is almost cold bind it over again put it into an earthen pan and pour the liquor your pig was boiled in over it and always keep it covered when you want it take it out of the pan untie the fillet as far as you want to cut it then cut it in slices and lay it in your dish garnish with parsley to dress a pig the french way spit your pig lay it down to the fire let it roast till it is thoroughly warm then cut it off the spit and divide it in twenty pieces set them to stew in half a pint of white wine and a pint of strong broth seasoned with grated nutmeg pepper two onions cut small and some stripped thyme let it stew an hour then put to it half a pint of strong gravy a piece of butter rolled in flour some anchovies and a spoonful of vinegar or mushroom pickle when it is enough lay it in your dish and pour the gravy over it then garnish with orange and lemon to dress a pig or pear douille cut off the head and divide it into quarters lard them with bacon season them well with mace cloves pepper nutmeg and salt lay a layer of fat bacon at the bottom of a kettle lay the head in the middle and the quarters round then put in a bay leaf an onion sliced lemon carrots parsnips parsley and sives cover it again with bacon put in a quart of broth stew it over the fire for an hour and then take it up put your pig into a stew pan or kettle pour in a bottle of white wine cover it close and let it stew for an hour very softly if you would serve it cold let it stand till it is cold then drain it well and wipe it that it may look white and lay it in a dish with the head in the middle and the quarters round then throw some green parsley all over or any one of the quarters is a pretty little dish laid on watercresses if you would have it hot whilst your pig is stewing in the wine take the first gravy it was stewed and strain it skim off all the fat then take a sweetbread cut into five or six slices some truffles morels and mushrooms stew all together till they are enough thicken it with the yolks of two eggs or a piece of butter rolled in flour and when your pig is enough take it out and lay it in your dish put the wine it was stewed in to the ragu then pour all over the pig and garnish with lemon a pig matalo gut and scold your pig cut off the head and petty toes then cut your pig in four quarters put them with the head and toes into cold water cover the bottom of a stew pan with slices of bacon and place over them the said quarters with the petty toes and the head cut in two season the whole with pepper salt thyme bay leaf an onion and a bottle of white wine lay over more slices of bacon put over it a quart of water and let it boil take two large eels skin and gut them and cut them about five or six inches long when your pig is half done put in your eels then boil a dozen of large crawfish cut off the claws and take off the shells of the tails and when your pig and eels are enough lay first your pig and the petty toes round it but do not put in the head it will be a pretty dish cold then lay your eels and crawfish over them and take the liquor they were stewed in 
skim off all the fat then add to it half a pint of strong gravy thickened with a little piece of butter rolled in flour and a spoonful of browning and pour over it then garnish with crawfish and lemon this will do for a first course or remove fry the brains and lay round and all over the dish to dress a pig like a fat lamb take a fat pig cut off his head slit and truss him up like a lamb when he is slit through the middle and skinned parboil him a little then throw some parsley over him roast it and drudge it let your sauce be half a pound of butter and a pint of cream stirring all together till it is smooth then pour it over and send it to table barbecued pig having dressed a pig ten or twelve weeks old as if you intended to roast it make a force meat in the following manner take the liver of the pig two anchovies and six sage leaves chopped small put them into a marble mortar with the crumbs of a penny loaf half a pint of madeira wine four ounces of butter and half a teaspoonful of cayenne pepper beat them all together to a paste put it into your pig's belly and sew it up lay your pig down at a good distance before a large brisk fire put into your dripping pan two bottles of red wine and one of madeira baste it with the wine all the time it is roasting and when it is half roasted put two penny loaves under the pig if there is not wine enough put in more and when the pig is near done take the loaves and sauce out of the pan and put to the sauce half a lemon a bundle of sweet herbs an anchovy chopped small boil it five minutes and then draw your pig when it has roasted four hours put into the pig's mouth an orange or lemon and a loaf on each side skim off the fat and strain your sauce through a sieve and pour over the pig boiling hot serve it up garnished with lemon and barberries or you may bake it only keep it basting with wine to make a pretty dish of a breast of venison take half a pound of butter flour your venison and fry it of a fine brown on both sides then take it up and keep it hot covered in the dish take some flour and stir it into the butter till it is quite thick and brown but take great care it do not burn stir in half a pound of lump sugar beat fine and pour in as much red wine as will make it of the thickness of a ragout squeeze in the juice of a lemon give it a boil up and pour it over the venison do not garnish the dish but send it to table to boil a haunch or neck of venison lay it in salt for a week then boil it in a cloth well floured for every pound of venison allow a quarter of an hour for the boiling for sauce you must boil some cauliflowers poured into little sprigs in milk and water some fine white cabbage some turnips cut into dice with some beetroot cut into long narrow pieces about an inch and a half long and half an inch thick lay a sprig of cauliflower and some of the turnips mashed with some cream and a little butter let your cabbage be boiled and then beat in a saucepan with a piece of butter and salt lay that next the cauliflower then the turnips then the cabbage and so on till the dish is full place the beetroot here and there just as you fancy it looks very pretty and is a fine dish have a little melted butter in a cup if wanted note a leg of mutton cut venison fashion and dressed the same way is a pretty dish or a fine neck with the scrag cut off this eats well boiled or hashed with gravy and sweet sauce the next day to dress poultry to roast a turkey the best way to roast a turkey is to loosen the skin on the breast of the turkey and fill it with force meat made thus take a quarter of a pound of beef suet as many crumbs of bread a little lemon peel 
an anchovy, some nutmeg, pepper, parsley, and a little thyme. Chop and beat them all well together. Mix them with the yolk of an egg and stuff it up the breast. When you have no suet, butter will do. Or you may make your force meat thus. Spread bread and butter thin and grate some nutmeg over it. When you have enough, roll it up and stuff the breast of the turkey then roast it of a fine brown but be sure to pin some white paper on the breast till it is near enough you must have good gravy in the dish and bread sauce made thus take a good piece of crumb put it into a pint of water with a blade or two of mace two or three cloves and some whole pepper boil it up five or six times then with a spoon take out the spice you had before put in and then you must pour off the water you may boil an onion in it if you please then beat up the bread with a good piece of butter and a little salt or onion sauce made thus take some onions peel them and cut them into thin slices and boil them half an hour in milk and water then drain the water from them and beat them up with a good piece of butter shake a little flour in and stir it all together with a little cream if you have it or milk will do put the sauce into boats and garnish with lemon another way to make sauce take half a pint of oysters strain the liquor and put the oysters with the liquor into a saucepan with a blade or two of mace let them just lump then pour in a glass of white wine let it boil once and thicken it with a piece of butter rolled in flour serve this up in a basin by itself with good gravy in the dish for everybody does not love oyster sauce this makes a pretty side dish for supper or a corner dish of a table for dinner if you chafe it in the dish add half a pint of gravy to it and boil it up together this sauce is good either with boiled or roasted turkeys or fowls but you may leave the gravy out adding as much butter as will do for sauce and garnishing with lemon another bread sauce take some crumbs of bread rub through a fine cullender put to it a pint of milk a little butter and some salt a few corns of white pepper and an onion boil them for 15 minutes take out the onion and beat it up well then toss it up and put it in your sauce boats a white sauce for fowls or chickens take a little strong veal gravy with a little white pepper mace and salt boiled in it have it clear from any skin or fat as much cream with a little flour mixed in the cream a little mountain wine to your liking boil it up gently for five minutes then strain it over your chickens or fowls or in boats to make a mock oyster sauce either for turkeys or fowls boiled force the turkeys or fowls as above and make your sauce thus take a quarter of a pint of water an anchovy a blade or two of mace a piece of lemon peel and five or six whole peppercorns boil these together then strain them add as much butter with a little flour as will do for sauce let it boil and lay sausages round the fowl or turkey garnish with lemon to make mushroom sauce for white fowls of all sorts take a quart of fresh mushrooms well cleaned and washed cut them in two put them in a stew pan with a little butter a blade of mace and a little salt stew it gently for half an hour then add a pint of cream and the yolks of two eggs beat very well and keep stirring it till it boils up then squeeze half a lemon put it over your fowls or turkeys or in basins or in a dish with a piece of french bread first buttered then toasted brown and just dip it in boiling water put it in the dish and the mushrooms over mushroom sauce for white fowls boiled take half a pint of cream and a quarter of a pound of butter stir them together one way till it is thick 
then add a spoonful of mushroom pickle pickled mushrooms or fresh if you have them garnish only with lemon to make celery sauce either for roasted or boiled fowls turkeys partridges or any other game take a large bunch of celery wash and pare it very clean cut it into little thin bits and boil it softly in a little water till it is tender then add a little beaten mace some nutmeg pepper and salt thickened with a good piece of butter rolled in flour then boil it up and pour in your dish you may make it with cream thus boil your celery as above and add some mace nutmeg a piece of butter as big as a walnut rolled in flour and half a pint of cream boil them all together to make brown celery sauce stew the celery as above then add mace nutmeg pepper salt a piece of butter rolled in flour with a glass of red wine a spoonful of ketchup and half a pint of good gravy boil all these together and pour into the dish garnish with lemon to stew a turkey or fowl in celery sauce you must judge according to the largeness of your turkey or fowl what celery or sauce you want take a large fowl put it into a saucepan or pot and put to it one quart of good broth or gravy a bunch of celery washed clean and cut small with some mace cloves pepper and allspice tied loose in a muslin rag put in an onion and a sprig of thyme a little salt and cayenne pepper let these stew softly till they are enough then add a piece of butter rolled in flour take up your fowl and pour the sauce over it an hour will do a large fowl or a small turkey but a very large turkey will take two hours to do it softly if it is overdone or dry it is spoiled but you may be a judge of that if you look at it now and then mind to take out the onion thyme and spice before you send it to table note a neck of veal done this way is very good and will take two hours doing to make egg sauce proper for roasted chickens melt your butter thick and fine chop two or three hard-boiled eggs fine put them into a basin pour the butter over them and have good gravy in the dish shallot sauce for roasted fowls take six shallots chopped fine put them into a saucepan with a gill of gravy a spoonful of vinegar some pepper and salt stew them for a minute then pour them into your dish or put it in sauce boats carrier sauce take a spanish onion and cut it in thin slices put it into a deep plate take half a pint of boiling water with a spoonful of vinegar a little pepper and salt and pour it over the onion shallot sauce for a scrag of mutton boiled take two spoonfuls of the liquor the mutton is boiled in two spoonfuls of vinegar two or three shallots cut fine with a little salt put it into a saucepan with a piece of butter as big as a walnut rolled in a little flour stir it together and give it a boil for those who love shallot it is the prettiest sauce that can be made to a scrag of mutton to dress livers with mushroom sauce take some pickled or fresh mushrooms cut small both if you have them and let the livers be bruised fine with a good deal of parsley chopped small a spoonful or two of ketchup a glass of white wine and as much good gravy as will make sauce enough thicken it with a piece of butter rolled in flour this does either for roasted or boiled a pretty little sauce take the liver of the fowl bruise it with a little of the liquor cut a little lemon peel fine melt some good butter and mix the liver by degrees give it a boil and pour it into the dish to make lemon sauce for boiled fowls take a lemon and pare off the rind cut it into slices and take the kernels out 
cut it into square bits blanch the liver of the fowl and chop it fine mix the lemon and liver together in a boat and pour some hot melted butter on it and stir it up boiling of it will make it go to oil a german way of dressing fowls take a turkey or fowl stuff the breast with what forcemeat you like and fill the body with roasted chestnuts peeled roast it and have some more roasted chestnuts peeled put them in half a pint of good gravy with a little piece of butter rolled in flour boil these together with some small turnips and sausages cut in slices and fried or boiled garnish with chestnuts you may leave the turnips out note you may dress ducks the same way to dress a turkey or fowl to perfection bone them and make a force meat thus take the flesh of a fowl cut it small then take a pound of veal beat it in a mortar with half a pound of beef suet as much crumbs of bread some mushrooms truffles and morels cut small a few sweet herbs and parsley with some nutmeg pepper and salt a little mace beaten some lemon peel cut fine mix all these together with the yolks of two eggs then fill your turkey and roast it this will do for a large turkey and so in proportion for a fowl let your sauce be good gravy with mushrooms truffles and morels in it then garnish with lemon and for variety sake you may lard your fowl or turkey to stew a turkey brown take your turkey after it is nicely picked and drawn fill the skin of the breast with force meat and put an anchovy a shallot and a little thyme in the belly lard the breast with bacon then put a good piece of butter in the stew pan flour the turkey and fry it just of a fine brown then take it out and put it into a deep stew pan or little pot that will just hold it and put in as much gravy as will barely cover it a glass of white wine some whole pepper mace two or three cloves and a little bundle of sweet herbs cover it close and stew it for an hour then take up the turkey and keep it hot covered by the fire and boil the sauce to about a pint strain it off add the yolks of two eggs and a piece of butter rolled in flour stir it till it is thick and then lay your turkey in the dish and pour your sauce over it you may have ready some little french loaves about the bigness of an egg cut off the tops and take out the crumb then fry them of a fine brown fill them with stewed oysters lay them round the dish and garnish with lemon end of section nine section ten of the art of cookery made plain and easy by hannah glass this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter two part six made dishes from to stew a turkey brown the nice way bone it and fill it with a force meat made thus take the flesh of a fowl half a pound of veal and the flesh of two pigeons with a well pickled or dried tongue peel it and chop it all together then beat in a mortar with the marrow of a beef bone or a pound of the fat of the loin of veal season it with two or three blades of mace two or three cloves and half a nutmeg dried at a good distance from the fire and pounded with a little pepper and salt mix all these well together fill your turkey fry them of a fine brown and put it into a little pot that will just hold it lay four or five skewers at the bottom of the pot to keep the turkey from sticking put in a quart of good beef and veal gravy wherein was boiled spice and sweet herbs cover it close and let it stew half an hour and then put in a glass of white wine one spoonful of ketchup a large spoonful of pickled mushrooms and a few fresh ones if you have them a few truffles and morels 
a piece of butter as big as a walnut rolled in flour cover it close and let it stew half an hour longer get the little french rolls ready fried take some oysters and strain the liquor from them then put the oysters and liquor into a saucepan with a blade of mace a little white wine and a piece of butter rolled in flour let them stew till it is thick then fill the loaves lay the turkey in the dish and pour the sauce over it if there is any fat on the gravy take it off and lay the loaves on each side of the turkey garnish with lemon when you have no loaves and take oysters dipped in butter and fried note the same will do for any white fowl a fowl a la braise truss your fowl with the leg turned into the belly season it both inside and out with beaten mace nutmeg pepper and salt lay a layer of bacon at the bottom of a deep stew pan then a layer of veal and afterwards the fowl then put in an onion two or three cloves stuck in a little bundle of sweet herbs with a piece of carrot then put at the top a layer of bacon another of veal and a third of beef cover it close and let it stand over the fire for two or three minutes then pour in a pint of broth or hot water cover it close and let it stew an hour afterwards take up your fowl strain the sauce and after you have skimmed off the fat boil it down till it is of a glaze then put it over the fowl you may add just what you please to the sauce a ragout of sweetbreads coxcombs truffles and morels or mushrooms with forcemeat balls look very very pretty or any of the sauces above to force a fowl take a good fowl pick and draw it slit the skin down the back and take the flesh from the bones mince it very small and mix it with one pound of beef suet shred a pint of large oysters chopped two anchovies a shallot a little grated bread and some sweet herbs shred all this very well mix them together and make it up with the yolks of eggs then turn all these ingredients on the bones again and draw the skin over again then sew up the back and either boil the fowl in a bladder an hour and a quarter or roast it then stew some more oysters in gravy bruise in a little of your force meat mix it up with a little fresh butter and a very little flour then give it a boil lay your fowl in the dish and pour the sauce over it garnishing with lemon to roast a fowl with chestnuts first take some chestnuts roast them very carefully so as not to burn them take off the skin and peel them take about a dozen of them cut small and bruise them in a mortar parboil the liver of the fowl bruise it cut about a quarter of a pound of ham or bacon and pound it then mix them all together with a good deal of parsley chopped small a little sweet herbs some mace pepper salt and nutmeg mix these together and put into your fowl and roast it the best way of doing it is to tie the neck and hang it up by the legs to roast with a string and baste it with butter for sauce take the rest of the chestnuts peeled and skinned put them into some good gravy with a little white wine and thicken it with a piece of butter rolled in flour then take up your fowl lay it in the dish and pour in the sauce garnish with lemon pullets a la sainte menu after having trussed the legs in the body slit them along the back spread them open on a table take out the thigh bones and beat them with a rolling pin then season them with pepper salt mace nutmeg and sweet herbs after that take a pound and a half of veal cut it into thin slices and lay it in a stew pan of a convenient size to stew the pullets in cover it and set it over a stove or slow fire and when it begins to cleave to the pan stir in a little flour 
shake the pan about till it be a little brown then pour in as much broth as will stew the fowls stir it together put in a little whole pepper an onion and a little piece of bacon or ham then lay in your fowls cover them close and let them stew half an hour then take them out lay them on the gridiron to brown on the inside then lay them before the fire to do on the outside strew them over with the yolk of an egg some crumbs of bread and baste them with a little butter let them be of a fine brown and boil the gravy till there is about enough for sauce strain it put a few mushrooms in and a little piece of butter rolled in flour lay the pullets in the dish and pour in the sauce garnish with lemon note you may brown them in the oven or fry them which you please chicken surprise if a small dish one large fowl will do roast it and take the lean from the bone cut it in thin slices about an inch long toss it up with six or seven spoonfuls of cream and a piece of butter rolled in flour as big as a walnut boil it up and set it to cool then cut six or seven thin slices of bacon round place them in a petty pan and put some force meat on each side work them up in the form of a french roll with a raw egg in your hand leaving a hollow place in the middle put in your fowl and cover them with some of the same force meat rubbing them smooth with your hand and a raw egg make them of the height and bigness of a french roll and throw a little fine grated bread over them bake them three quarters or an hour in a gentle oven or under a baking cover till they come to a fine brown and place them on your mazarine that they may not touch one another but place them so that they may not fall flat in the baking or you may form them on your table with a broad kitchen knife and place them on the thing you intend to bake them on you may put the leg of a chicken into one of the loaves you intend for the middle let your sauce be gravy thickened with butter and a little juice of lemon this is a pretty side dish for a first course summer or winter if you can get them mutton chops in disguise take as many mutton chops as you want rub them with pepper salt nutmeg and a little parsley roll each chop in half a sheet of white paper well buttered on the inside and rolled on each end close have some hog's lard or beef dripping boiling in a stew pan put in the steaks fry them of a fine brown lay them in your dish and garnish with fried parsley throw some all over have a little good gravy in a cup but take great care you do not break the paper nor have any fat in the dish but let them be well drained chickens roasted with forcemeat and cucumbers take two chickens dress them very neatly break the breastbone and make forcemeat thus take the flesh of a fowl and of two pigeons with some slices of ham or bacon chop them all well together take the crumb of a penny loaf soaked in milk and boiled then set to cool when it is cool mix it all together season it with beaten mace nutmeg pepper and a little salt a very little thyme some parsley and a little lemon peel with the yolks of two eggs then fill your fowls spit them and tie them at both ends after you have papered the breast take four cucumbers cut them in two and lay them in salt and water two or three hours before then dry them and fill them with some of the force meat which you must take care to save and tie them with a pack thread flour them and fry them of a fine brown when your chickens are enough lay them in the dish and untie your cucumbers but take care the meat do not come out then lay them round the chickens with the flat side downwards and the narrow end upwards you must have some rich fried gravy and pour into the dish then garnish with lemon note one large fowl done this way with the cucumbers laid round it 
looks pretty and is a very good dish chickens a la braise you must take a couple of fine chickens lard them and season them with pepper salt and mace then lay a layer of veal in the bottom of a deep stew pan with a slice or two of bacon an onion cut to pieces a piece of carrot and a layer of beef then lay in the chickens with the breast downward and a bundle of sweet herbs after that a layer of beef and put in a quart of broth or water cover it close let it stew very softly for an hour after it begins to simmer in the meantime get ready a ragout thus take a good veal sweetbread or two cut them small set them on the fire with a very little broth or water a few coxcombs truffles and morels cut small with an ox palate if you have it stew them all together till they are enough and when your chickens are done take them up and keep them hot then strain the liquor they were stewed in skim the fat off and pour into your ragout add a glass of red wine a spoonful of ketchup and a few mushrooms then boil all together with a few artichoke bottoms cut in four and asparagus tops if your sauce is not thick enough take a little piece of butter rolled in flour and when enough lay your chickens in the dish and pour the ragout over them garnish with lemon or you may make your sauce thus take the gravy the fowls were stewed in strain it skim off the fat have ready half a pint of oysters with the liquor strained put them to your gravy with a glass of white wine a good piece of butter rolled in flour then boil them all together and pour over your fowls garnish with lemon to marinate fowls take a fine large fowl or turkey raise the skin from the breastbone with your finger then take a veal sweetbread and cut it small a few oysters a few mushrooms an anchovy some pepper a little nutmeg some lemon peel and a little thyme chop all together small and mix it with the yolk of an egg stuff it in between the skin and the flesh but take great care you do not break the skin and then stuff what oysters you please into the body of the fowl you may lard the breast of the fowl with bacon if you choose it paper the breast and roast it make good gravy and garnish with lemon you may add a few mushrooms to the sauce to broil chickens slit them down the back and season them with pepper and salt lay them on a very clear fire and at a great distance let the inside lie next the fire till it is above half done then turn them round and take great care the fleshy side do not burn and let them be of a fine brown let your sauce be good gravy with mushrooms and garnish with lemon and the livers broiled the gizzards cut slashed and broiled with pepper and salt or this sauce take a handful of sorrel dipped in boiling water drain it and have ready half a pint of good gravy a shallot shred small and some parsley boiled very green thicken it with a piece of butter rolled in flour and add a glass of red wine then lay your sorrel in heaps round the fowls and pour the sauce over them garnish with lemon note you may make just what sauce you fancy pulled chickens take three chickens boil them just fit for eating but not too much when they are boiled enough flay all the skin off and take the white flesh off the bones pull it into pieces about as thick as a large quill and half as long as your finger have ready a quarter of a pint of good cream and a piece of fresh butter about as big as an egg stir them together till the butter is all melted and then put in your chicken with the gravy that came from them give them two or three tosses round on the fire put them into a dish and send them up hot note the legs pinions and rump 
must be peppered and salted done over with the yolk of an egg and bread crumbs and broiled on a clear fire put the white meat with the rump in the middle and the legs and pinions round a pretty way of stewing chickens take two fine chickens half boil them then take them up in a pewter or silver dish if you have one cut up your fowls and separate all the joint bones one from another and then take out the breast bones if there is not liquor enough from the fowls add a few spoonfuls of the water they were boiled in put in a blade of mace and a little salt cover it close with another dish set it over a stove or chafing dish of coals let it stew till the chickens are enough and then send them hot to the table in the same dish they were stewed in note this is a very pretty dish for any sick person or for a lying in lady for change it is better than butter and the sauce is very agreeable and pretty note well you may do rabbits partridges or more game this way chickens chiringate cut off their feet break the breastbone flat with a rolling pin but take care you do not break the skin flour them fry them of a fine brown in butter then drain all the fat out of the pan but leave the chickens in lay a pound of gravy beef cut very thin over your chickens and a piece of veal cut very thin a little mace two or three cloves some whole pepper an onion a little bundle of sweet herbs and a piece of carrot and then pour in a quart of boiling water cover it close let it stew for a quarter of an hour then take out the chickens and keep them hot let the gravy boil till it is quite rich and good then strain it off and put it into your pan again with two spoonfuls of red wine and a few mushrooms put in your chickens to heat then take them up lay them into your dish and pour your sauce over them garnish with lemon and a few slices of cold ham broiled note you may fill your chickens with force meat and lard them with bacon and add truffles morels and sweetbreads cut small but then it will be a very high dish chickens boiled with bacon and celery boil two chickens very white in a pot by themselves and a piece of ham or good thick bacon boil two bunches of celery tender then cut them about two inches long all the white part put it into a saucepan with half a pint of cream a piece of butter rolled in flour and some pepper and salt set it on the fire and shake it often when it is thick and fine lay your chickens in the dish and pour your sauce in the middle that the celery may lie between the fowls and garnish the dish all round with slices of ham or bacon note if you have cold ham in the house that cut into slices and broiled does full as well or better to lay round the dish chickens with tongues a good dish for a great deal of company take six small chickens boiled very white six hog's tongues boiled and peeled a cauliflower boiled very white in milk and water whole and a good deal of spinach boiled green then lay your cauliflower in the middle the chickens close all round and the tongues round them with the roots outward and the spinach in little heaps between the tongues garnish with little pieces of bacon toasted and lay a little piece on each of the tongues scotch chickens first wash your chickens dry them in a clean cloth and singe them then cut them into quarters put them into a stew pan or saucepan and just cover them with water put in a blade or two of mace and a little bundle of parsley cover them close and let them stew half an hour then chop half a handful of clean washed parsley and throw in and have ready six eggs whites and all beat fine let your liquor boil up 
and pour the eggs all over them as it boils then send all together hot in a deep dish but take out the bundle of parsley first you must be sure to skim them well before you put in your mace and the broth will be fine and clear note this is also a very pretty dish for sick people but the scotch gentlemen are very fond of it to stew chickens the dutch way take two chickens truss them as for boiling beat fine six cloves and four blades of mace a handful of parsley shred fine some pepper and salt mix all together and put into the inside of your chickens singe them and flour them put them into a stew pan clarify as much butter as will cover them stew them gently one hour put them into a china bowl with the butter and send them up hot to stew chickens take two chickens cut them into quarters wash them clean and then put them into a saucepan put to them a quarter of a pint of water half a pint of red wine some mace pepper a bundle of sweet herbs an onion and a few raspings cover them close let them stew half an hour then take a piece of butter about as big as an egg rolled in flour put in and cover it close for five or six minutes shake the saucepan about then take out the sweet herbs and onion you may take the yolks of two eggs beat and mixed with them if you do not like it leave them out garnish with lemon ducks a la mode take two fine ducks cut them into quarters fry them in butter a little brown then pour out all the fat and throw a little flour over them and half a pint of good gravy a quarter of a pint of red wine two shallots an anchovy and a bundle of sweet herbs cover them close and let them stew a quarter of an hour take out the herbs skim off the fat and let your sauce be as thick as cream send it to table and garnish with lemon to dress a wild duck the best way first half roast it then lay it in a dish carve it but leave the joints hanging together throw a little pepper and salt and squeeze the juice of a lemon over it turn it on the breast and press it hard with a plate and add to its own gravy two or three spoonfuls of good gravy cover it close with another dish and set it over a stove ten minutes then send it to table hot in the dish it was done in and garnish with lemon you may add a little red wine and a shallot cut small if you like it but it is apt to make the duck eat hard unless you first heat the wine and pour it in just as it is done another way to dress a wild duck take a wild duck put some pepper and salt in the inside and half roast it have ready the following sauce a gill of good gravy and a gill of red wine put it in a stew pan with three or four shallots cut fine boil it up then cut the duck in small pieces and put it in with a little cayenne pepper and salt be careful to put in all the gravy that comes from the duck simmer it for three minutes and squeeze in a seville orange if no orange a lemon put it in the dish and garnish with lemon to boil a duck or a rabbit with onions boil your duck or rabbit in a good deal of water be sure to skim your water for there will always rise a scum which if it boils down will discolour your fowls etc they will take about half an hour boiling for sauce your onions must be peeled and throw them into water as you peel them then cut them into thin slices boil them in milk and water and skim the liquor half an hour will boil them throw them into a clean sieve to drain chop them and rub them through a colander put them into a saucepan shake in a little flour put to them two or three spoonfuls of cream a good piece of butter 
stew all together over the fire till they are thick and fine lay the duck or rabbit in the dish and pour the sauce all over if a rabbit you must pluck out the jaw bones and stick one in each eye the small end inwards or you may make this sauce for a change take one large onion cut it small half a handful of parsley clean washed and picked chop it small a lettuce cut small a quarter of a pint of good gravy a good piece of butter rolled in a little flour add a little juice of lemon a little pepper and salt let all stew together for half an hour then add two spoonfuls of red wine this sauce is most proper for a duck lay your duck in the dish and pour your sauce over it to dress a duck with green peas put a deep stew pan over the fire with a piece of fresh butter singe your duck and flour it turn it in the pan two or three minutes then pour out all the fat but let the duck remain in the pan put to it a pint of good gravy a pint of peas two lettuces cut small a small bundle of sweet herbs a little pepper and salt cover them close and let them stew for half an hour now and then give the pan a shake when they are just done grate in a little nutmeg and put in a very little beaten mace and thicken it either with a piece of butter rolled in flour or the yolk of an egg beat up with two or three spoonfuls of cream shake it all together for three or four minutes take out the sweet herbs lay the duck in the dish and pour the sauce over it you may garnish with boiled mint chopped or let it alone to dress a duck with cucumbers take three or four cucumbers pare them take out the seeds cut them into little pieces lay them in vinegar for two or three hours before with two large onions peeled and sliced then do your duck as above then take the duck out and put in the cucumbers and onions first drain them in a cloth let them be a little brown shake a little flour over them in the meantime let your duck be stewing in the saucepan with a pint of gravy for a quarter of an hour then add to it the cucumbers and onions with pepper and salt to your palate a good piece of butter rolled in flour and two or three spoonfuls of red wine shake all together and let it stew for eight or ten minutes then take up your duck and pour the sauce over it or you may roast your duck and make this sauce and pour over it but then half a pint of gravy will be enough to dress a duck a la braise take a duck lard it with little pieces of bacon season it inside and out with pepper and salt lay a layer of bacon cut thin in the bottom of a stew pan and then a layer of lean beef cut thin then lay your duck with some carrot an onion a little bundle of sweet herbs a blade or two of mace and a thin layer of beef over the duck cover it close and set it over a slow fire for eight or ten minutes then take off the cover and shake in a little flour give the pan a shake pour in a pint of small broth or boiling water give the pan a shake or two cover it close again and let it stew half an hour then take off the cover take out the duck and keep it hot let the sauce boil till there is about a quarter of a pint or a little better then strain it and put it into the stew pan again with a glass of red wine put in your duck shake the pan and let it stew four or five minutes then lay your duck in the dish and pour the sauce over it and garnish with lemon if you love your duck very high you may fill it with the following ingredients take a veal sweetbread cut in eight or ten pieces a few truffles some oysters a few sweet herbs and parsley chopped fine a little pepper salt and beaten mace fill your duck with the above ingredients tie both ends tight and dress as above 
or you may fill it with force meat made thus take a little piece of veal take all the skin and fat off beat it in a mortar with as much suet and an equal quantity of crumbs of bread a few sweet herbs some parsley chopped a little lemon peel pepper salt beaten mace and nutmeg and mix it up with the yolk of an egg you may stew an ox's palate tender and cut it into pieces with some artichoke bottoms cut into four and tossed up in the sauce you may large your duck or let it alone just as you please for my part i think it best without end of section ten section eleven of the art of cookery made plain and easy by hannah glass this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter two part seven made dishes from to boil ducks the french way let your ducks be larded and half roasted then take them off the spit put them into a large earthen pipkin with half a pint of red wine and a pint of good gravy some chestnuts first roasted and peeled half a pint of large oysters the liquor strained and the beards taken off two or three little onions minced small a very little stripped thyme mace pepper and a little ginger beet fine cover it close and let them stew half an hour over a slow fire and the crust of a french roll grated when you put in your gravy and wine when they are enough take them up and pour the sauce over them to dress a goose with onions or cabbage salt the goose for a week then boil it it will take an hour you may either make onion sauce as we do for ducks or cabbage boiled chopped and stewed in butter with a little pepper and salt lay the goose in the dish and pour the sauce over it it eats very good with either directions for roasting a goose take some sage wash and pick it clean and an onion chop them very fine with some pepper and salt and put them into the belly let your goose be clean picked and wiped dry with a dry cloth inside and out put it down to the fire and roast it brown one hour will roast a large goose three quarters of an hour a small one serve it in your dish with some brown gravy apple sauce in a boat and some gravy in another a green goose never put anything but a little pepper and salt unless desired put gravy in the dish and green sauce in a boat made thus take half a pint of the juice of sorrel if no sorrel spinach juice have ready a cullis of veal broth about half a pint some sugar the juice of an orange or lemon boil it up for five or six minutes then put your sorrel juice in and just boil it up be careful to keep it stirring all the time or it will curdle then put it in your boat to dry a goose get a fat goose take a handful of common salt a quarter of an ounce of saltpetre a quarter of a pound of coarse sugar mix all together and rub your goose very well let it lie in this pickle a fortnight turning and rubbing it every day then roll it in bran and hang it up in a chimney where wood smoke is for a week if you have not that conveniency send it to the baker's the smoke of the oven will dry it or you may hang it in your own chimney not too near the fire but make a fire under it and lay horse dung and sawdust on it and that will smother and smoke dry it when it is well dried keep it in a dry place you may keep it two or three months or more when you boil it put in a good deal of water and be sure to skim it well note you may boil turnips or cabbage boiled and stewed in butter or onion sauce 
to dress a goose in ragu flat the breast down with a cleaver then press it down with your hand skin it dip it into scalding water let it be cold lard it with bacon season it well with pepper salt and a little beaten mace then flour it all over take a pound of good beef suet cut small put it into a deep stew pan let it be melted then put in your goose let it be brown on both sides when it is brown put in a quart of boiling gravy an onion or two a bundle of sweet herbs a bay leaf some whole pepper and a few cloves cover it close and let it stew softly till it is tender about an hour will do it if small if a large one an hour and a half in the meantime make a ragu boil some turnips almost enough some carrots and onions quite enough cut your turnips and carrots the same as for haricot of mutton put them into a saucepan with half a pint of good beef gravy a little pepper and salt a piece of butter rolled in flour and let this stew altogether a quarter of an hour take the goose and drain it well then lay it in the dish and pour the ragu over it where the onion is disliked leave it out you may add cabbage boiled and chopped small a goose a la mode take a large fine goose pick it clean skin it bone it nicely take the fat off then take a dried tongue boil it and peel it take a fowl and do it in the same manner as the goose season it with pepper salt and beaten mace roll it round the tongue season the goose with the same put the tongue and fowl in the goose put it into a little pot that will just hold it put to it two quarts of beef gravy a bundle of sweet herbs and an onion put some slices of ham or good bacon between the fowl and the goose cover it close and let it stew an hour over a good fire when it begins to boil let it do very softly then take up your goose and skim off all the fat strain it put in a glass of red wine two spoonfuls of ketchup a veal sweetbread cut small some truffles morels and mushrooms a piece of butter rolled in flour and some pepper and salt if wanted put in the goose again cover it close and let it stew half an hour longer then take it up and pour the ragu over it garnish with lemon note this is a very fine dish you must mind to save the bones of the goose and fowl and put them into the gravy when it is first set on and it will be better if you roll some beef marrow between the tongue and the fowl and between the fowl and the goose it will make them mellow and eat fine you may add six or seven yolks of hard eggs whole in the dish they are a pretty addition take care to skim off the fat note well the best method to bone a goose or fowl of any sort is to begin at the breast and take all off the bones without cutting the back for when it is sewed up and when you come to stew it it generally bursts in the back and spoils the shape of it to stew giblets let them be nicely scalded and picked cut the pinions in two cut the head and the neck and legs in two and the gizzards in four wash them very clean put them into a stew pan or soup pot with three pounds of scrag of veal just cover them with water let them boil up take all the scum clean off then put three onions two turnips one carrot a little thyme and parsley stew them till they are tender strain them through a sieve wash the giblets clean with some warm water out of the herbs etc then take a piece of butter as big as a large walnut put it in a stew pan melt it and put in a large spoonful of flour keep it stirring till it is smooth then put in your broth and giblets stew them for a quarter of an hour season with salt 
or you may add a gill of lisbon and just before you serve them up chop a handful of green parsley and put in give them a boil up and serve them in a tureen or soup dish note well three pair will make a handsome tureen full to make giblets a la turtle let three pair of giblets be done as before well cleaned put them into your stew pan with four pounds of scrag of veal and two pounds of lean beef covered with water let them boil up and skim them very clean then put in six cloves four blades of mace eight corns of allspice beat very fine some basil sweet marjoram winter savoury and a little thyme chopped very fine three onions two turnips and one carrot stew them till tender then strain them through a sieve and wash them clean out of the herbs in some warm water then take a piece of butter put it in your stew pan melt it and put in as much flour as will thicken it stir it till it is smooth then put your liquor in and keep stirring it all the time you pour it in or else it will go into lumps which if it happens you must strain it through a sieve then put in a pint of madeira wine some pepper and salt and some cayenne pepper stew it for ten minutes then put in your giblets add the juice of a lemon and stew them fifteen minutes then serve them in a tureen you may put in some egg balls made thus boil six eggs hard take out the yolks put them in a mortar and beat them throw in a spoonful of flour and the yolk of a raw egg beat them together till smooth then roll them in little balls and scald them in boiling water and just before you serve the giblets up put them in note well never put your livers in at first but boil them in a saucepan of water by themselves to roast pigeons fill them with parsley clean washed and chopped and some pepper and salt rolled in butter fill the bellies tie the neck end close so that nothing can run out put a skewer through the legs and have a little iron on purpose with six hooks to it and on each hook hang a pigeon fasten one end of the string to the chimney and the other end to the iron this is what we call the poor man's spit flour them baste them with butter and turn them gently for fear of hitting the bars they will roast nicely and be full of gravy take care how you take them off not to lose any of the liquor you may melt a very little butter and put into the dish your pigeons ought to be quite fresh and not too much done this is by much the best way of doing them for then they will swim in their own gravy and a very little melted butter will do note well you may spit them on a long small spit only tie both ends close and send parsley and butter in one boat and gravy in another when you roast them on a spit all the gravy runs out or if you stuff them and broil them whole you cannot save the gravy so well though they will be very good with parsley and butter in the dish or split and broiled with pepper and salt to boil pigeons boil them by themselves for fifteen minutes then boil a handsome square piece of bacon and lay in the middle stew some spinach to lay round and lay the pigeons on the spinach garnish your dish with parsley laid in a plate before the fire to crisp or you may lay one pigeon in the middle and the rest round and the spinach between each pigeon and a slice of bacon on each pigeon garnish with slices of bacon and melted butter in a cup to a la daub pigeons take a large saucepan lay a layer of bacon then a layer of veal a layer of coarse beef and another little layer of veal about a pound of veal and a pound of beef cut very thin a piece of carrot a bundle of sweet herbs an onion some black and white pepper a blade or two of mace four or five cloves 
cover the saucepan close set it over a slow fire draw it till it is brown to make the gravy of a fine light brown then put in a quart of boiling water and let it stew till the gravy is quite rich and good then strain it off and skim off all the fat in the meantime stuff the bellies of the pigeons with force meat made thus take a pound of veal a pound of beef suet beat both in a mortar fine an equal quantity of crumbs of bread some pepper salt nutmeg beaten mace a little lemon peel cut small some parsley cut small and a very little thyme stripped mix all together with the yolks of two eggs fill the pigeons and flat the breasts down flour them and fry them in fresh butter a little brown then pour the fat clean out of the pan and put the gravy to the pigeons cover them close and let them stew a quarter of an hour or till you think they are quite enough then take them up lay them in a dish and pour in your sauce on each pigeon lay a bay leaf and on the leaf a slice of bacon you may garnish with a lemon notched or let it alone note you may leave out the stuffing they will be very rich and good without it and it is the best way of dressing them for a fine made dish pigeons au poire make a good force meat as above cut off the feet quite stuff them in the shape of a pear roll them in the yolk of an egg and then in crumbs of bread stick the leg at the top and butter a dish to lay them in then send them to an oven to bake but do not let them touch each other when they are enough lay them in a dish and pour in good gravy thickened with the yolk of an egg or butter rolled in flour do not pour your gravy over the pigeons you may garnish with lemon it is a pretty genteel dish or for a change lay one pigeon in the middle the rest round and stewed spinach between poached eggs on the spinach garnish with notched lemon and orange cut into quarters and have melted butter in boats or thus bone your pigeons and stuff them with force meat make them in the shape of a pear with one foot stuck at the small end to appear like the stalk of a pear rub them over with the yolk of an egg and strew some crumbs of bread on fry them in a pan of good dripping a nice light brown put them in a drainer to drain all the fat off then put them in a stew pan with a pint of gravy a gill of white wine an onion stuck with cloves cover them close and stew them for half an hour take them out skim off all the fat and take out the onion put in some butter rolled in flour a spoonful of ketchup the same of browning some truffles and morels pickled mushrooms two artichoke bottoms cut in six pieces each a little salt and cayenne pepper the juice of half a lemon stew it five minutes put in your pigeons and make them hot put them in your dish and pour the sauce over them garnish with fried forcemeat balls or with a lemon cut in quarters pigeons stoved take a small cabbage lettuce just cut out the heart and make a forcemeat as before only chop the heart of the cabbage and mix with it then fill up the place and tie it across with a pack thread fry it of a light brown in fresh butter pour out all the fat lay the pigeons round flat them with your hand season them with a little pepper salt and beaten mace take great care not to put too much salt pour in half a pint of rhenish wine cover it close and let it stew about five or six minutes then put in half a pint of good gravy cover them close and let them stew half an hour take a good piece of butter rolled in flour shake it in when it is fine and thick take it up untie it lay the lettuce in the middle and the pigeons round squeeze in a little lemon juice and pour the sauce all over them 
stew a little lettuce and cut it into pieces for garnish with pickled red cabbage note or for change you may stuff your pigeons with the same forcemeat and cut two cabbage lettuces into quarters and stew it as above so lay the lettuce between each pigeon and one in the middle with the lettuce round it and pour the sauce all over them pigeons sir too force your pigeons as above then lay a slice of bacon on the breast and a slice of veal beat with the back of a knife and seasoned with mace pepper and salt tie it on with a small pack thread or two little fine skewers is better spit them on a fine bird spit roast them and baste with a piece of butter then with the yolk of an egg and then baste them again with crumbs of bread a little nutmeg and sweet herbs when enough lay them in your dish have good gravy ready with truffles morels and mushrooms to pour into your dish garnish with lemon pigeons compote take six young pigeons and skewer them as for boiling make a force meat thus grate the crumb of a penny loaf half a pound of fat bacon shred some sweet herbs and parsley fine two shallots or a little onion a little lemon peel a little grated nutmeg season it with pepper and salt and mix it up with the yolks of two eggs put it into the craws and bellies lard them down the breast and fry them brown with a little butter then put them in a stew pan with a pint of strong brown gravy a gill of white wine stew them three quarters of an hour thicken it with a little butter rolled in flour season with salt and cayenne pepper put the pigeons in the dish and strain the gravy over them lay some hot forcemeat balls round them and send them up hot a french pupton of pigeons take savoury forcemeat rolled out like paste put it in a butter dish lay a layer of very thin bacon squab pigeons sliced sweetbread asparagus tops mushrooms coxcombs a palate boiled tender and cut into pieces and the yolks of hard eggs make another force meat and lay over like a pie bake it and when enough turn it into a dish and pour gravy round it pigeons boiled with rice take six pigeons stuff their bellies with parsley pepper and salt rolled in a very little piece of butter put them into a quart of mutton broth with a little beaten mace a bundle of sweet herbs and an onion cover them close and let them boil a full quarter of an hour then take out the onion and sweet herbs and take a good piece of butter rolled in flour put it in and give it a shake season with salt if it wants it then have ready half a pound of rice boiled tender in milk when it begins to be thick but take great care it does not burn take the yolks of two or three eggs beat up with two or three spoonfuls of cream and a little nutmeg stir it together till it is quite thick then take up the pigeons and lay them in a dish pour the gravy to the rice stir all together and pour over the pigeons garnish with hard eggs cut into quarters pigeons transmogrified take your pigeons season them with pepper and salt take a large piece of butter make a puff paste and roll each pigeon in a piece of paste tie them in a cloth so that the paste do not break boil them in a good deal of water they will take an hour and a half boiling untie them carefully that they do not break lay them in the dish and you may pour a little good gravy in the dish they will eat exceeding good and nice and will yield sauce enough of a very agreeable relish pigeons in fricando after having trussed your pigeons with their legs in their bodies divide them in two and lard them with bacon then lay them in a stew pan with the larded side downwards and two whole leeks cut small two ladlefuls of mutton broth or veal gravy cover them close over a very slow fire 
and when they are enough make your fire very brisk to waste away what liquor remains when they are of a fine brown take them up and pour out all the fat that is left in the pan then pour in some veal gravy to loosen what sticks to the pan and a little pepper stir it about for two or three minutes and pour it over the pigeons this is a pretty little side dish to roast pigeons with a farce make a farce with the livers mint small as much sweet suet or marrow grated bread and hard egg an equal quantity of each season with beaten mace nutmeg a little pepper salt and sweet herbs mix all these together with the yolk of an egg then cut the skin of your pigeon between the legs and the body and very carefully with your finger raise the skin from the flesh but take care you do not break it then force them with this farce between the skin and flesh then truss the legs close to keep it in spit them and roast them trudge them with a little flour and baste them with a piece of butter save the gravy which runs from them and mix it up with a little red wine a little of the forcemeat and some nutmeg let it boil then thicken it with a piece of butter rolled in flour and the yolk of an egg beat up and some minced lemon when enough lay the pigeons in the dish and pour in the sauce garnish with lemon pigeons a la Sousel. take four pigeons and bone them make a forcemeat as for pigeons compote and stuff them put them in a stew pan with a pint of veal gravy stew them half an hour very gently then take them out in the meantime make a veal forcemeat and wrap all round them rub it over with the yolk of an egg and fry them in good dripping of a nice brown take the gravy they were stewed in skim off the fat thicken it with a little butter rolled in flour the yolk of an egg and a gill of cream beat up season it with pepper and salt mix it all together and keep it stirring one way till it is smooth strain it into your dish and put the pigeons on garnish with plenty of fried parsley you may leave out the egg and cream and put in a spoonful of browning a little lemon pickle and ketchup if you like it best pigeons in pimlico take the livers with some fat and lean of ham or bacon mushrooms truffles parsley and sweet herbs season with beaten mace pepper and salt beat all this together with two raw eggs put it into the bellies roll them all in a thin slice of veal over that a thin slice of bacon wrap them up in white paper spit them on a small spit and roast them in the meantime make for them a ragout of truffles and mushrooms chopped small with parsley cut small put to it half a pint of good veal gravy thicken with a piece of butter rolled in flour an hour will do your pigeons baste them when enough lay them in your dish take off the paper and pour your sauce over them garnish with patties made thus take veal and cold ham beef suet an equal quantity some mushrooms sweet herbs and spice chop them small set them on the fire and moisten with milk or cream then make a little puff paste roll it and make little patties about an inch deep and two inches long fill them with the above ingredients cover them close and bake them lay six of them round a dish this makes a fine dish for a first course to jug pigeons pull crop and draw pigeons but do not wash them save the livers and put them in scalding water and set them on the fire for a minute or two then take them out and mince them small and bruise them with the back of a spoon mix them with a little pepper salt grated nutmeg and lemon peel shred very fine chopped parsley and two yolks of eggs very hard bruise them as you do the liver and put as much suet as liver shaved exceeding fine and as much grated bread 
work these together with raw eggs and roll it in fresh butter put a piece into the crops and bellies and sew up the necks and vents then dip your pigeons in water and season them with pepper and salt as for a pie put them in your jug with a piece of celery a bundle of sweet herbs four cloves and three blades of mace beat fine stop them close and set them in a kettle of cold water first cover them close and lay a tile on the top of the jug and let it boil three hours then take them out of the jug and lay them in a dish take out the celery and sweet herbs put in a piece of butter rolled in flour shake it about till it is thick and pour it on your pigeons garnish with lemon to stew pigeons season your pigeons with pepper and salt a few cloves and mace and some sweet herbs wrap this seasoning up in a piece of butter and put it in their bellies then tie up the neck and vent and half roast them put them in a stew pan with a quart of good gravy a little white wine a few peppercorns three or four blades of mace a bit of lemon a bunch of sweet herbs and a small onion stew them gently till they are enough then take the pigeons out and strain the liquor through a sieve skim it and thicken it in your stew pan put in the pigeons with some pickled mushrooms and oysters stew it five minutes and put the pigeons in a dish and the sauce over to dress a calf's liver in a caul take off the underskins and shred the liver very small then take an ounce of truffles and morels chopped small with parsley roast two or three onions take off their outermost coats pound six cloves and a dozen coriander seeds and add them to the onions and pound them together in a marble mortar then take them out and mix them with the liver take a pint of cream half a pint of milk and seven or eight new laid eggs beat them together boil them but do not let them curdle shred a pound of suet as small as you can half melt it in a pan and pour it into your egg and cream then pour it into your liver then mix all well together season it with pepper salt nutmeg and a little thyme and let it stand till it is cold spread a caul over the bottom and sides of the stew pan and put in your hash liver and cream altogether fold it up in the caul in the shape of a calf's liver then turn it upside down carefully lay it in a dish that will bear the oven and do it over with beaten egg drudge it with grated bread and bake it in an oven serve it up hot for a first course end of section 11section twelve of the art of cookery made plain and easy by hannah glass this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter two part eight made dishes from to roast a calf's liver lard it with bacon spit it first and roast it serve it up with good gravy to roast partridges let them be nicely roasted but not too much baste them gently with a little butter and drudge with flour sprinkle a little salt on and froth them nicely up have good gravy in the dish with bread sauce in a boat made thus take about a handful or two of crumbs of bread put in a pint of milk or more a small whole onion a little whole white pepper a little salt and a bit of butter boil it all well up then take the onion out and beat it well with a spoon take poveroy sauce in a boat made thus chop four shallots fine a gel of good gravy and a spoonful of vinegar a little pepper and salt boil them up one minute then put it in a boat to boil partridges boil them in a good deal of water let them boil quick fifteen minutes will be sufficient 
for sauce take a quarter of a pint of cream and a piece of fresh butter as big as a walnut stir it one way till it is melted and pour it into the dish or this sauce take a bunch of celery clean washed cut all the white very small wash it again very clean put it into a saucepan with a blade of mace a little beaten pepper and a very little salt put to it a pint of water let it boil till the water is just wasted away then add a quarter of a pint of cream and a piece of butter rolled in flour stir all together and when it is thick and fine pour it over the birds or this sauce take the livers and bruise them fine some parsley chopped fine melt a little nice fresh butter and then add the livers and parsley to it squeeze in a little lemon just give it a boil and pour over your birds or this sauce take a quarter of a pint of cream the yolk of an egg beat fine a little grated nutmeg a little beaten mace a piece of butter as big as a nutmeg rolled in flour and one spoonful of white wine stir all together one way when fine and thick pour it over the birds you may add a few mushrooms or this sauce take a few mushrooms fresh peeled and wash them clean put them in a saucepan with a little salt put them over a quick fire let them boil up then put in a quarter of a pint of cream and a little nutmeg shake them together with a very little piece of butter rolled in flour give it two or three shakes over the fire three or four minutes will do then pour it over the birds or this sauce boil half a pound of rice very tender in beef gravy season it with pepper and salt and pour over your birds these sauces do for boiled fowls a quart of gravy will be enough and let it boil till it is quite thick to dress partridges a la braise take two brace truss the legs into the bodies lard them season with beaten mace pepper and salt take a stew pan lay slices of bacon at the bottom then slices of beef and then slices of veal all cut thin a piece of carrot an onion cut small a bundle of sweet herbs and some whole pepper lay the partridges with the breast downward lay some thin slices of beef and veal over them and some parsley shred fine cover them and let them stew eight or ten minutes over a slow fire then give your pan a shake and pour in a pint of boiling water cover it close and let it stew half an hour over a little quicker fire then take out your birds keep them hot pour into the pan a pint of thin gravy let them boil till there is about half a pint then strain it off and skim off all the fat in the meantime have a veal sweetbread cut small truffles and morels cocks combs and fowls livers stewed in a pint of good gravy half an hour some artichoke bottoms and asparagus tops both blanched in warm water and a few mushrooms then add the other gravy to this and put in your partridges to heat if it is not thick enough take a piece of butter rolled in flour and toss up in it if you will be at the expense thicken it with veal and ham cullis but it will be full as good without to make partridge panes take two roasted partridges and the flesh of a large fowl a little parboiled bacon a little marrow or sweet suet chopped very fine a few mushrooms and morels chopped fine truffles and artichoke bottoms season with beaten mace pepper a little nutmeg salt sweet herbs chopped fine and the crumb of a tuppenny loaf soaked in hot gravy mix all well together with the yolks of two eggs make your panes on paper of a round figure and the thickness of an egg at a proper distance one from another dip the point of a knife in the yolk of an egg in order to shape them bread them neatly and bake them a quarter of an hour in a quick oven 
observed that the truffles and morels be boiled tender in the gravy you soak the bread in. Serve them up for a side dish, or they will serve to garnish the above dish, which will be a very fine one for a first course. Note, when you have cold fowls in the house, this makes a pretty addition in an entertainment. To roast pheasants. Pick and draw your pheasants and singe them. Lard one with bacon, but not the other. Spit them, roast them fine, and paper them all over the breast. When they are just done, flour and baste them with a little nice butter, and let them have a fine white froth. Then take them up and pour good gravy in the dish and bread sauce in boats or basins. Or you may put watercresses with gravy in the dish and lay the cresses under the pheasants. Or you may make celery sauce, stewed tender, strained and mixed with cream and poured into the dish. If you have but one pheasant, take a large fowl about the bigness of a pheasant Pick it nicely with the head on, draw it, and truss it with the head turned as you do a pheasant's. Lard the fowl all over the breast and legs with bacon cut in little pieces. When roasted, put them both in a dish, and nobody will know it. They will take three quarters of an hour doing, as the fire must not be too brisk. Put gravy in the dish, and garnish with watercresses. A STEWED PHEASANT Take your pheasant and stew it in veal gravy. Take artichoke bottoms parboiled, some chestnuts roasted and blanched. When your pheasant is enough, but it must stew till there is just enough for sauce, then skim it. Put in the chestnuts and artichoke bottoms, a little beaten mace, pepper and salt enough to season it, and a glass of white wine. If you do not think it thick enough, thicken it with a little piece of butter rolled in flour. Squeeze in a little lemon, pour the sauce over the pheasant, and have some forcemeat balls fried and put into the dish. Note, a good fowl will do full as well, trussed with the head on, like a pheasant. You may fry sausages instead of forcemeat balls. To dress a pheasant a la braise. Lay a layer of beef all over your pan, then a layer of veal, a little piece of bacon, a piece of carrot, an onion stuck with cloves, a blade or two of mace, a spoonful of pepper, black and white, and a bundle of sweet herbs. Then lay in the pheasant, lay a layer of veal, and then a layer of beef to cover it. Set it on the fire five or six minutes, then pour in two quarts of boiling gravy. Cover it close and let it stew very softly an hour and a half. Then take up your pheasant, keep it hot and let the gravy boil till there is about a pint. Then strain it off and put it in again and put in a veal sweetbread, first being stewed with the pheasant. Then put in some truffles and morels, some livers of fowls, artichoke bottoms and asparagus tops if you have them. Let these simmer in the gravy about five or six minutes. Then add two spoonfuls of ketchup, two of red wine, and a little piece of butter rolled in flour, a spoonful of browning. Shake all together, put in your pheasant, let them stew all together with a few mushrooms about five or six minutes more. Then take up your pheasant and pour your ragu all over with a few forcemeat balls. Garnish with lemon. You may lard it if you choose. To boil a pheasant. Take a fine pheasant, boil it in a good deal of water, keep your water boiling. Half an hour will do a small one, and three quarters of an hour a large one. Let your sauce be celery stewed and thickened with cream, and a little piece of butter rolled in flour. Take up the pheasant and pour the sauce all over. Garnish with lemon. Observe to stew your celery so that the liquor will not be all wasted away before you put your cream in. If it wants salt, put in some to your palate. To Selmac a Snipe or Woodcock 
half roast them and cut them in quarters put them in a stew pan with a little gravy two shallots chopped fine a glass of red wine a little salt and cayenne pepper the juice of half a lemon stew them gently for ten minutes and put them on a toast serve the same as for roasting and send them up hot garnish with lemon snipes in a surtout or woodcocks take force meat made with veal as much beef suet chopped and beat in a mortar with an equal quantity of crumbs of bread mix in a little beaten mace pepper and salt some parsley and a little sweet herbs mix it with the yolk of an egg lay some of this meat round the dish then lay in the snipes being first drawn and half roasted take care of the trail chop it and throw it all over the dish take some good gravy according to the bigness of your surtout some truffles and morels a few mushrooms a sweetbread cut into pieces and artichoke bottoms cut small let all stew together shake them and take the yolks of two or three eggs according as you want them beat them up with a spoonful or two of white wine stir all together one way when it is thick take it off let it cool and pour it into the surtout have the yolks of a few hard eggs put in here and there season with beaten mace pepper and salt to your taste cover it with the force meat all over rub the yolks of eggs all over to colour it then send it to the oven half an hour does it and send it hot to table to boil snipes or woodcocks boil them in a good strong broth or beef gravy made thus take a pound of beef cut it into little pieces put it into two quarts of water an onion a bundle of sweet herbs a blade or two of mace six cloves and some whole pepper cover it close let it boil till about half wasted then strain it off put the gravy into a saucepan with salt enough to season it take the snipes and gut them clean but take care of the guts put them into the gravy and let them boil cover them close and ten minutes will boil them in the meantime chop the guts and liver small take a little of the gravy the snipes are boiling in and stew the guts in with a blade of mace take some crumbs of bread and have them ready fried in a little fresh butter crisp of a fine light brown you must take about as much bread as the inside of a stale roll and rub them small into a clean cloth when they are done let them stand ready in a plate before the fire when your snipes are ready take about half a pint of the liquor they are boiled in and add to the guts two spoonfuls of red wine and a piece of butter as big as a walnut rolled in a little flour set them on the fire shake your saucepan often but do not stir it with a spoon till the butter is all melted then put in the crumbs give your saucepan a shake take up your birds lay them in the dish and pour this sauce over them garnish with lemon to dress autolands spit them sideways with a vine leaf between baste them with butter and have fried crumbs of bread round the dish dress quails the same way to dress ruffs and reefs these birds are found in lincolnshire and the isle of ely the food proper for them is new milk boiled and put over white bread with a little fine sugar and be careful to keep them in separate cages they feed very fast and will die of their fat if not killed in time truss them as you do a woodcock but draw them and cover them with vine leaves to dress larks put them on a bird spit tie them on another spit and roast them twenty-five minutes with a gentle fire put them in a dish with crumbs of bread fried brown or you may put a toast under with gravy and butter or gravy only to dress plovers to two plovers take two artichoke bottoms boiled some chestnuts roasted and blanched some skirrets boiled 
cut all very small mix with it some marrow or beef suet the yolks of two hard eggs chop all together season with pepper and salt nutmeg and a little sweet herbs fill the bodies of the plovers lay them in a saucepan put to them a pint of gravy a glass of white wine a blade or two of mace some roasted chestnuts blanched and artichoke bottoms cut into quarters two or three yolks of eggs and a little juice of lemon cover them close and let them stew very softly an hour if you find the sauce is not thick enough take a piece of butter rolled in flour and put into the sauce shake it round and when it is thick take up your plovers and pour the sauce over them garnish with roasted chestnuts ducks are very good done this way if they are well fed they need no butter being fat enough of themselves or boil them in good celery sauce either white or brown just as you like the same way you may dress widgeons note well the best way to dress plovers is to roast them the same as woodcocks with a toast under them and gravy and butter to dress larks pear fashion you must truss the larks close and cut off the legs season them with salt pepper cloves and mace make a forcemeat thus take a veal sweetbread as much beef suet a few morels and mushrooms chop all fine together some crumbs of bread and a few sweet herbs a little lemon peel cut small mix all together with the yolk of an egg wrap up the larks in forcemeat and shape them like a pear stick one leg in the top like the stalk of a pear rub them over with the yolk of an egg and crumbs of bread bake them in a gentle oven serve them without sauce or they make a good garnish to a very fine dish you may use veal if you have not a sweetbread jugged hare cut it into little pieces lard them here and there with little slips of bacon season them with cayenne pepper and salt put them into an earthen jug with a blade or two of mace an onion stuck with cloves and a bundle of sweet herbs cover the jug or jar that you do it in so close that nothing can get in then set it in a pot of boiling water and three hours will do it then turn it out into the dish and take out the onion and sweet herbs and send it to table hot if you do not like it larded leave it out florendine hair let your hair be full grown and let it hang four or five days before you case it leave the ears on and take out all the bones except the head which must be left whole lay the hair on the dresser and put in the following forcemeat take the crumbs of a penny loaf the liver shred fine half a pound of fat bacon scraped a glass of red wine some sweet herbs chopped fine season with pepper salt and nutmeg an anchovy chopped fine the yolks of two eggs mix all together and put into your hare's belly roll it up to the head skewer it with the head and ears leaning back and tie it with pack thread as you would a collar reveal wrap it in a cloth and boil it one hour and a half in a stew pan covered close with two quarts of water as soon as the liquor is reduced to a quart add a pint of red wine a spoonful of lemon pickle one of ketchup and one of browning then take out your hair and stew the gravy till it is reduced to a pint thicken it with butter rolled in flour put the hair in the dish and pour the sauce over it pull the jaw bones out and put them in the eyes put some forcemeat balls and truffles round it and garnish with watercresses to scare a hare lard a hare and put a pudding in the belly put it into a pot or fish kettle then put to it two quarts of strong drawn gravy one of red wine a whole lemon cut a faggot of sweet herbs nutmeg pepper a little salt and six cloves cover it close and stew it over a slow fire till it is three parts done 
then take it up put it into a dish and strew it over with crumbs of bread sweet herbs chopped fine some lemon peel grated and half a nutmeg set it before the fire and baste it till it is of a fine light brown in the meantime take the fat off your gravy and thicken it with the yolk of an egg take six eggs boiled hard and chopped small some pickled cucumbers cut very thin mix these with the sauce and pour it into the dish a fillet of mutton or neck of venison may be done the same way note you may do rabbits the same way but it must be veal gravy and white wine adding mushrooms for cucumbers to stew a hare cut it into pieces and put it into a stew pan with a blade or two of mace some whole pepper black and white an onion stuck with cloves a bundle of sweet herbs and a nutmeg cut to pieces and cover it with water cover the stew pan close let it stew till the hare is tender but not too much done then take it up and with a fork take out the hare into a clean pan strain the sauce through a coarse sieve empty all out of the pan put in the hare again with the sauce take a piece of butter as big as a walnut rolled in flour and put in likewise one spoonful of ketchup and a gill of red wine stew all together with a few fresh mushrooms or pickled ones if you have any till it is thick and smooth then dish it up and send it to table you may cut a hare in two and stew the four quarters thus and roast the hindquarters with a pudding in the belly a hare civet bone the hare and take out all the sinews cut one half in thin slices and the other half in pieces an inch thick flour them and fry them in a little fresh butter as collops quick and have ready some gravy made good with the bones of the hare and beef put a pint of it into the pan to the hare some mustard and a little elder vinegar cover it close and let it do softly till it is as thick as cream then dish it up with the head in the middle portuguese rabbits i have in the beginning of my book given directions for boiled and roasted get some rabbits truss them chicken fashion the head must be cut off and the rabbit turned with its back upwards and two of the legs stripped to the claw end and so trussed with two skewers lard them and roast them with what sauce you please if you want chickens and they are to appear as such they must be dressed in this manner send them up hot with gravy in the dish and garnish with lemon and beetroot rabbits surprise roast two half-grown rabbits cut off the heads close to the shoulders and the first joints then take off all the lean meat from the backbones cut it small and toss it up with six or seven spoonfuls of cream and milk and a piece of butter as big as a walnut rolled in flour a little nutmeg and a little salt shake all together till it is as good as thick cream and set it to cool then make a force meat with a pound of veal a pound of suet as much crumbs of bread two anchovies a little piece of lemon peel cut fine a little sprig of thyme and a little nutmeg grated let the veal and suet be chopped very fine and beat in a mortar then mix it all together with the yolks of two raw eggs place it all round the rabbits leaving a long trough in the backbone open that you think will hold the meat you cut out with the sauce pour it in and cover it with the force meat smooth it all over with your hand as well as you can with a raw egg square at both ends throw on a little grated bread and butter a mazarine or pan and take them from the dresser where you form them and place them on it very carefully bake them three quarters of an hour till they are of a fine brown colour let your sauce be gravy thickened with butter and the juice of a lemon lay them into the dish and pour in the sauce garnish with an orange cut into quarters and serve it up for a first course to dress rabbits in casserole 
divide the rabbits into quarters you may lard them or let them alone just as you please shake some flour over them and fry them with lard or butter then put them into an earthen pipkin with a quart of good broth a glass of white wine a little pepper and salt if wanted a bunch of sweet herbs and a piece of butter as big as a walnut rolled in flour cover them close and let them stew half an hour then dish them up and pour the sauce over them garnish with seville orange cut into thin slices and notched the peel that is cut out lay prettily between the slices mutton kebobbed take a loin of mutton and joint it between every bone season it with pepper and salt moderately grate a small nutmeg all over dip them in the yolks of three eggs and have ready crumbs of bread and sweet herbs dip them in and clap them together in the same shape again and put it on a small spit roast them before a quick fire set a dish under and baste it with a little piece of butter and then keep basting with what comes from it and throw some crumbs of bread and sweet herbs all over them as it is roasting when it is enough take it up lay it in the dish and have ready half a pint of good gravy and what comes from it take two spoonfuls of ketchup and mix a teaspoonful of flour with it and put to the gravy stir it together and give it a boil and pour over the mutton note you must observe to take off all the fat of the inside and the skin of the top of the meat and some of the fat if there be too much when you put in what comes from your meat into the gravy observe to pour out all the fat a neck of mutton called the hasty dish take a large pewter or silver dish made like a deep soup dish with an edge about an inch deep on the inside on which the lid fixes with an handle at top so fast that you may lift it up full by that handle without falling this dish is called a necromancer take a neck of mutton about six pounds take off the skin cut it into chops not too thick slice a french roll thin peel and slice a very large onion pare and slice three or four turnips lay a row of mutton in the dish on that a row of roll and then a row of turnips and then onions a little salt then the meat and so on put in a little bundle of sweet herbs and two or three blades of mace have a tea kettle of water boiling fill the dish and cover it close hang the dish on the back of two chairs by the rim have ready three sheets of brown paper tear each sheet into five pieces and draw them through your hand light one piece and hold it under the bottom of the dish moving the paper about as fast as the paper burns light another till all is burnt and your meat will be enough fifteen minutes just does it send it to table hot in the dish note this dish was first contrived by mr rich and is much admired by the nobility to make a curry the indian way take two small chickens skin them and cut them as for a fricassee wash them clean and stew them in about a quart of water for about five minutes then strain off the liquor and put the chickens in a clean dish take three large onions chop them small and fry them in about two ounces of butter then put in the chickens and fry them together till they are brown take a quarter of an ounce of turmeric a large spoonful of ginger and beaten pepper together and a little salt to your palate strew all these ingredients over the chickens whilst frying then pour in the liquor and let it stew about half an hour then put in a quarter of a pint of cream and the juice of two lemons and serve it up the ginger pepper and turmeric must be beat very fine to boil rice put two quarts of water to a pint of rice let it boil till you think it is done enough then throw in a spoonful of salt and turn it out into a colander then let it stand about five minutes before the fire to dry 
and serve it up in a dish by itself dish it up and send it to table the rice in a dish by itself to make a pillow the indian way take three pounds of rice pick and wash it very clean put it into a cullender and let it drain very dry take three quarters of a pound of butter and put it into a pan over a very slow fire till it melts then put in the rice and cover it over very close that it may keep all the steam in add to it a little salt some whole pepper half a dozen blades of mace and a few cloves you must put in a little water to keep it from burning then stir it up very often and let it stew till the rice is soft boil two fowls and a fine piece of bacon of about two pounds weight as common cut the bacon in two pieces lay it in the dish with the fowls cover it over with the rice and garnish it with about half a dozen hard eggs and a dozen of onions fried whole and very brown note this is the true indian way of dressing them another way to make a pillow take a leg of veal about twelve or fourteen pounds weight an old cock skinned chop both to pieces put it into a pot with five or six blades of mace some whole white pepper and three gallons of water half a pound of bacon two onions and six cloves cover it close and when it boils let it do very softly till the meat is good for nothing and above two-thirds wasted then strain it the next day put this soup into a saucepan with a pound of rice set it over a very slow fire take great care it do not burn when the rice is very thick and dry turn it into a dish garnish with hard eggs cut in two and have roasted fowls in another dish note you are to observe if your rice simmers too fast it will burn when it comes to be thick it must be very thick and dry and the rice not boiled to a mummy to make essence of ham take a ham and cut off all the fat cut the lean in thin pieces and lay them in the bottom of your stew pan put over them six onions sliced two carrots and one parsnip two or three leeks a few fresh mushrooms a little parsley and sweet herbs four or five shallots and some cloves and mace put a little water at the bottom set it on a gentle stove till it begins to stick then put in a gallon of veal broth to a ham of fourteen pounds more or less broth according to the size of the ham let it stew very gently for one hour then strain it off and put it away for use rules to be observed in all made dishes first that the stew pans or saucepans and covers be very clean free from sand and well tinned and that all the white sauces have a little tartness and be very smooth and of a fine thickness and all the time any white sauce is over the fire keep stirring it one way and as to brown sauce take great care no fat swims at the top but that it be all smooth alike and about as thick as good cream and not to taste of one thing more than another as to pepper and salt season to your palate but do not put too much of either for that will take away the fine flavour of everything as to most made dishes you may put in what you think proper to enlarge it or make it good as mushrooms pickled dried fresh or powdered truffles morels coxcombs stewed ox palates cut in small bits artichoke bottoms either pickled fresh boiled or dried ones softened in warm water each cut in four pieces asparagus tops the yolks of hard eggs forcemeat balls etc the best things to give a sauce tartness are mushroom pickle white walnut pickle elder vinegar or lemon juice end of section 12section thirteen of the art of cookery made plain and easy by hannah glass 
This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 3 Read this chapter and you will find how expensive a French cook's sauce is. The French way of dressing partridges. When they are newly picked and drawn, singe them. You must mince their livers with a bit of butter, some scraped bacon, green truffles if you have any, parsley, chimble, salt, pepper, sweet herbs, and allspice. The whole being minced together, put it into the inside of your partridges, then stop both ends of them, after which give them a fry in the stew pan. That being done, spit them and wrap them up in slices of bacon and paper. Then take a stew pan, and having put in an onion cut into slices, a carrot cut into little bits, with a little oil, give them a few tosses over the fire. Then moisten them with gravy, cullis, and a little essence of ham. Put therein half a lemon cut in slices, four cloves of garlic, a little sweet basil, thyme, a bay leaf, a little parsley, chimble, two glasses of white wine, and four of the carcasses of the partridges. Let them be pounded and put them in this sauce. When the fat of your cullis is taken away, be careful to make it relishing. And after your pounded livers are put into your cullis, you must strain them through a sieve. Your partridges being done, take them off, as also take off the bacon and paper, and lay them in your dish with your sauce over them. This dish I do not recommend, for I think it an odd jumble of trash. By that time the cullis, the essence of ham, and all other ingredients are reckoned, the partridges will come to a fine penny. But such receipts as this are what you have in most books of cookery yet printed. To make essence of ham. Take the fat off a Westphalia ham, cut the lean in slices, beat them well, and lay them in the bottom of a stew pan with slices of carrots, parsnips, and onions. Cover your pan and set it over a gentle fire. Let them stew till they begin to stick, then sprinkle on a little flour and turn them, then moisten with broth and veal gravy. Season with three or four mushrooms, as many truffles, a whole leek, some basil, parsley, and half a dozen cloves, or, instead of the leek, you may put a clove of garlic. Put in some crusts of bread, and let them simmer over the fire for three quarters of an hour. Strain it, and set it by for use. A cullis for all sorts of ragout. Having cut three pounds of lean veal and half a pound of ham into slices, lay it into the bottom of a stew pan. Put in carrots and parsnips and an onion sliced. Cover it and set it a stewing over a stove. When it has a good colour and begins to stick, put to it a little melted butter and shake in a little flour. Keep it moving a little while till the flour is fried. Then moisten it with gravy and broth, of each a like quantity. Then put in some parsley and basil, a whole leek, a bay leaf, some mushrooms, and truffles minced small, three or four cloves, and the crust of two French rolls. Let all these simmer together for three quarters of an hour. Then take out the slices of veal, strain it, and keep it for all sorts of ragouts. Now compute the expense, and see if this dish cannot be dressed full as well without this expense. A cullis for all sorts of butcher's meat. You must take meat according to your company. If ten or twelve, you cannot take less than a leg of veal and a ham with all the fat, skin, and outside cut off. Cut the leg of veal in pieces, about the bigness of your fist. Place them in your stew pan, and then the slices of ham, two carrots, an onion cut in two. Cover it close, let it stew softly at first, and as it begins to be brown, take off the cover and turn it, to colour it on all sides the same. But take care not to burn the meat. When it has a pretty brown colour, 
moisten your cullis with broth made of beef or other meat season your cullis with a little sweet basil some cloves with some garlic pare a lemon cut it in slices and put it into your cullis with some mushrooms put into a stew pan a good lump of butter and set it over a slow fire put into it two or three handfuls of flour stir it with a wooden ladle and let it take a colour if your cullis be pretty brown you must put in some flour your flour being brown with your cullis pour it very softly into your cullis keeping it stirring with a wooden ladle then let your cullis stew softly and skim off all the fat put in two glasses of champagne or other white wine but take care to keep your cullis very thin so that you may take the fat well off and clarify it to clarify it you must put it in a stove that draws well and cover it close and let it boil without uncovering till it boils over then uncover it and take off the fat that is round the stew pan then wipe it off the cover also and cover it again when your cullis is done take out the meat and strain your cullis through a silk strainer this cullis is for all sorts of ragouts fowls pies and terrines cullis the italian way put into a stew pan half a ladle full of cullis as much essence of ham half a ladle full of gravy as much of broth three or four onions cut into slices four or five cloves of garlic a little beaten coriander seed with a lemon pared and cut into slices a little sweet basil mushrooms and good oil put all over the fire let it stew a quarter of an hour take the fat well off let it be of a good taste and you may use it with all sorts of meat and fish particularly with glazed fish this sauce will do for two chickens six pigeons quails or duckling and all sorts of tame and wild fowl now this italian or french sauce is saucy cullis of crawfish you must get the middling sort of crawfish put them over the fire seasoned with salt pepper and onion cut in slices being done take them out pick them and keep the tails after they are scalded pound the rest together in a mortar the more they are pounded the finer your cullis will be take a bit of veal the bigness of your fist with a small bit of ham an onion cut into four put it in to sweat gently if it sticks but a very little to the pan powder it a little moisten it with broth put in it some cloves sweet basil in branches some mushrooms with lemon pared and cut in slices being done skim the fat well off let it be of a good taste then take out your meat with a skimmer and go on to thicken it a little with essence of ham then put in your crawfish and strain it off being strained keep it for a first course of crawfish a white cullis take a piece of veal cut it into small bits with some thin slices of ham and two onions cut into four pieces moisten it with broth seasoned with mushrooms a bunch of parsley green onions three cloves and so let it stew being stewed take out all your meat and roots with a skimmer put in a few crumbs of bread and let it stew softly take the white of a fowl or two chickens and pound it in a mortar being well pounded mix it in your cullis but it must not boil and your cullis must be very white but if it is not white enough you must pound two dozen of sweet almonds blanched and put into your cullis then boil a glass of milk and put it into your cullis let it be of a good taste and strain it off then put it in a small kettle and keep it warm you may use it for white loaves white crust of bread and biscuits sauce for a brace of partridges pheasants or anything you please roast a partridge pound it well in a mortar 
with the pinions of four turkeys with a quart of strong gravy and the livers of the partridges and some truffles and let it simmer till it be pretty thick let it stand in a dish for a while then put two glasses of burgundy into a stew pan with two or three slices of onions a clove or two of garlic and the above sauce let it simmer a few minutes then press it through a hair bag into a stew pan add the essence of ham let it boil for some time season it with good spice and pepper lay your partridges etc in the dish and pour your sauce in they will use as many fine ingredients to stew a pigeon or fowl as will make a very fine dish which is equal to boiling a leg of mutton in champagne it would be needless to name any more though you have much more expensive sauce than this however i think here is enough to shew the folly of these fine french cooks in their own country they will make a grand entertainment with the expense of one of these dishes but here they want the little petty profit and by this sort of ledger domain some fine estates are juggled into france End of section 13. Section 14 of The Art of Cookery Made Plain and Easy by Hannah Glass. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 4 To Make a Number of Pretty Little Dishes Fit for a Supper or Side Dish and Little Corner Dishes for a Great Table and the rest you have in the chapter for lent hogs ears forced take four hogs ears and half boil them or take them soused make a force meat thus take half a pound of beef suet as much crumbs of bread an anchovy some sage boil and chop very fine a little parsley mix all together with the yolk of an egg a little pepper slit your ears very carefully to make a place for your stuffing fill them flour them and fry them in fresh butter till they are of a fine brown then pour out all the fat clean and put to them half a pint of gravy a glass of white wine three teaspoonfuls of mustard a piece of butter as big as a nutmeg rolled in flour a little pepper a small onion whole cover them close and let them stew softly for half an hour shaking your pan now and then when they are enough lay them in your dish and pour your sauce over them but first take out the onion this makes a very pretty dish but if you would make a fine large dish take the feet and cut all the meat into small thin pieces and stew with the ears season with salt to your palate to force cock's combs parboil your cock's combs then open them with a point of a knife at the great end take the white of a fowl as much bacon and beef marrow cut these small and beat them fine in a marble mortar season them with salt pepper and grated nutmeg and mix it with an egg fill the cock's combs and stew them in a little strong gravy softly for half an hour then slice in some fresh mushrooms and a few pickled ones then beat up the yolk of an egg in a little gravy stirring it season with salt when they are enough dish them up in little dishes or plates to preserve cock's combs let them be well cleaned then put them into a pot with some melted bacon and boil them a little about half an hour after add a little bay salt some pepper a little vinegar a lemon sliced and an onion stuck with cloves when the bacon begins to stick to the pot take them up put them into the pan you would keep in lay a clean linen cloth over them and pour melted butter clarified over them to keep them close from the air these make a pretty plate at a supper to preserve or pickle pig's feet and ears take your feet and ears single and wash them well split the feet in two 
put a bay leaf between every foot put in almost as much water as will cover them when they are well steamed add to them cloves mace whole pepper and ginger coriander seed and salt according to your discretion put to them a bottle or two of rhenish wine according to the quantity you do half a score of bay leaves and a bunch of sweet herbs let them boil softly till they are very tender then take them out of the liquor lay them in an earthen pot then strain the liquor over them when they are cold cover them down close and keep them for use you should let them stand to be cold skim off all the fat and then put in the wine and spice pig's feet and ears another way take two pig's ears soused cut them into long slips about three inches and about as thick as a goose quill put them in a stew pan with a pint of good gravy and half an onion cut very fine stew them till they are tender then add a little butter rolled in flour a spoonful of mustard some pepper and salt a little elder vinegar toss them up and put them in a dish have the feet cut in two and put a bay leaf between tie them up and boil them very tender in water and a little vinegar with an onion or two rub them over with the yolk of an egg and sprinkle bread crumbs on them broil or fry them and put them round the ears to pickle ox palates take your palates wash them well with salt and water and put them in a pipkin with water and some salt and when they are ready to boil skim them well and put to them pepper cloves and mace as much as will give them a quick taste when they are boiled tender which will require four or five hours peel them and cut them into small pieces and let them cool then make the pickle of white wine and vinegar an equal quantity boil the pickle and put in the spices that were boiled in the palates when both the pickle and palates are cold lay your palates in a jar and put to them a few bay leaves and a little fresh spice pour the pickle over them cover them close and keep them for use of these you may at any time make a pretty little dish either with brown sauce or white or butter and mustard and a spoonful of white wine or they are ready to put in made dishes to stew cucumbers take six cucumbers pare them and cut them in two lengthways take out the seeds take a dozen small round-headed onions peeled put some butter in a stew pan melt it put in your onions and fry them brown then put a spoonful of flour in stir it till it is smooth put in three quarters of a pint of brown gravy and stir it all the time then put in your cucumbers with a glass of lisbon stew them till they are tender season with pepper and salt and a little cayenne pepper to your liking observe to skim it well because the butter will rise to the top send them to table in a dish or under your meat two ragu cucumbers take two cucumbers two onions slice them and fry them in a little butter then drain them in a sieve put them into a saucepan add six spoonfuls of gravy two of white wine a blade of mace let them stew five or six minutes then take a piece of butter as big as a walnut rolled in flour a little salt and cayenne pepper shake them together and when it is thick dish them up a fricassee of kidney beans take a quart of the seed when dry soak them all night in river water then boil them on a slow fire till quite tender take a quarter of a peck of onions slice them thin fry them in butter till brown then take them out of the butter and put them in a quart of strong drawn gravy boil them till you may mash them fine then put in your beans and give them a boil or two season with pepper salt and nutmeg to dress windsor beans take the seed boil them till they are tender 
then blanch them and fry them in clarified butter milk butter with a drop of vinegar and pour over them stew them with salt pepper and nutmeg or you may eat them with butter sack sugar and a little powder of cinnamon to make jumbles take a pound of fine flour and a pound of fine powder sugar make them into a light paste with whites of eggs beat fine then add half a pint of cream half a pound of fresh butter melted and a pound of blanched almonds well beat knead them together thoroughly with a little rose water and cut out your jumbles in what figures you fancy and either bake them in a gentle oven or fry them in fresh butter and they make a pretty side or corner dish you may melt a little butter with a spoonful of sack and throw fine sugar all over the dish if you make them in pretty figures they make a fine little dish to make a ragout of onions take a pint of little young onions peel them and take four large ones peel them and cut them very small put a quarter of a pound of good butter into a stew pan when it is melted and done making a noise throw in your onions and fry them till they begin to look a little brown then shake in a little flour and shake them round till they are thick throw in a little salt a little beaten pepper a quarter of a pint of good gravy and a teaspoonful of mustard stir all together and when it is well tasted and of good thickness pour it into your dish and garnish it with fried crumbs of bread they make a pretty little dish and are very good you may stew raspings in the room of flour if you please a ragout of oysters open twenty large oysters take them out of their liquor save the liquor and dip the oysters in a batter made thus take two eggs beat them well a little lemon peel grated a little nutmeg grated a blade of mace pounded fine a little parsley chopped fine beat all together with a little flour have ready some butter or dripping in a stew pan when it boils dip in your oysters one by one into the batter and fry them of a fine brown then with an egg slice take them out and lay them in a dish before the fire pour the fat out of the pan and shake a little flour over the bottom of the pan then rub a little piece of butter as big as a small walnut all over with your knife whilst it is over the fire then pour in three spoonfuls of the oyster liquor strained one spoonful of white wine and a quarter of a pint of gravy grate a little nutmeg stir all together throw in the oysters give the pan a toss round and when the sauce is of a good thickness pour all into the dish and garnish with raspings a ragout of asparagus scrape a hundred of grass very clean and throw it into cold water when you have scraped all cut as far as is good and green about an inch long and take two heads of endive clean washed and picked cut it very small a young lettuce clean washed and cut small a large onion peeled and cut small put a quarter of a pound of butter into a stew pan when it is melted throw in the above things toss them about and fry them ten minutes then season them with a little pepper and salt shake in a little flour toss them about then pour in half a pint of gravy let them stew till the sauce is very thick and good then pour all into your dish save a few of the little tops of the grass to garnish the dish note well you must not fry the asparagus boil it in a little water and put them into your ragout and then they will look green a ragout of livers take as many livers as you would have for your dish a turkey's liver and six fowl's livers will make a pretty dish pick the galls from them and throw them into cold water take the six livers put them in a saucepan with a quarter of a pint of gravy a spoonful of mushrooms either pickled or fresh a spoonful of ketchup 
a little piece of butter as big as a nutmeg rolled in flour season them with pepper and salt to your palate let them stew softly ten minutes in the meanwhile butter one side of a piece of writing paper and wrap the turkey's liver on it and broil it nicely lay it in the middle and the stewed livers round pour the sauce all over and garnish with lemon to ragout cauliflowers take a large cauliflower wash it very clean and pick it in pieces as for pickling make a nice brown cullis and stew them till tender season with pepper and salt put them into your dish with the sauce over boil a few sprigs of the cauliflower in water to garnish with stewed peas and lettuce take a quart of green peas two large cabbage lettuces cut small across and washed very clean put them in a stew pan with a quart of gravy and stew them till tender put in some butter rolled in flour season with pepper and salt when of a proper thickness dish them up note well some like them thickened with the yolks of four eggs others like an onion chopped very fine and stewed with them with two or three rashers of lean ham another way to stew peas take a pint of peas put them in a stew pan with a handful of chopped parsley just cover them with water stew them till tender then beat up the yolks of two eggs put in some double refined sugar to sweeten them put in the eggs and toss them up then put them in your dish cod sounds broiled with gravy scald them in hot water and rub them with salt well blanch them that is take off the black dirty skin then set them on in cold water and let them simmer till they begin to be tender take them out and flour them and broil them on the gridiron in the meantime take a little good gravy a little mustard a little bit of butter rolled in flour give it a boil season it with pepper and salt lay the sounds in your dish and pour your sauce over them a forced cabbage take a fine white heart cabbage about as big as a quarter of a peck lay it in water two or three hours then half boil it set it in a cullender to drain then very carefully cut out the heart but take great care not to break off any of the outside leaves fill it with force meat made thus take a pound of veal half a pound of bacon fat and lean together cut them small and beat them fine in a mortar with four eggs boiled hard season it with pepper and salt a little beaten mace a very little lemon peel cut fine some parsley chopped fine a very little thyme and two anchovies when they are beat fine take the crumb of a stale roll some mushrooms if you have them either pickled or fresh and the heart of the cabbage you cut out chopped fine mix all together with the yolk of an egg then fill the hollow part of the cabbage and tie it with a pack thread then lay some slices of bacon to the bottom of a stew pan or saucepan and on that a pound of coarse lean beef cut thin put in the cabbage cover it close and let it stew over a slow fire till the bacon begins to stick to the pan shake in a little flour then pour in a quart of broth an onion stuck with cloves two blades of mace some whole pepper a little bundle of sweet herbs cover it close and let it stew very softly an hour and a half put in a glass of red wine give it a boil then take it up lay it in the dish and strain the gravy and pour over untie it first this is a fine side dish and the next day makes a fine hash with a veal steak nicely broiled and laid on it stewed red cabbage take red cabbage lay it in cold water an hour then cut it into thin slices across and cut it into little pieces put it into a stew pan with a pound of sausages a pint of gravy a little bit of ham or lean bacon 
cover it close and let it stew half an hour then take the pan off the fire and skim off the fat shake in a little flour and set it on again let it stew two or three minutes then lay the sausages in your dish and pour the rest all over you may before you take it up put in half a spoonful of vinegar savoys forced and stewed take two savoys fill one with force meat and the other without stew them with gravy season them with pepper and salt and when they are near enough take a piece of butter as big as a walnut rolled in flour and put in let them stew till they are enough and the sauce thick then lay them in your dish and pour the sauce over them these things are best done on a stove to force cucumbers take three large cucumbers scoop out the pith fill them with fried oysters seasoned with pepper and salt put on the piece again you cut off sew it with a coarse thread and fry them in the butter the oysters are fried in then pour out the butter and shake in a little flour pour in half a pint of gravy shake it round and put in the cucumbers season it with a little pepper and salt let them stew softly till they are tender then lay them in a plate and pour the gravy over them or you may force them with any sort of force meat you fancy and fry them in hog's lard and then stew them in gravy and red wine fried sausages take half a pound of sausages and six apples slice four about as thick as a crown cut the other two in quarters fry them with the sausages of a fine light brown lay the sausages in the middle of the dish and the apples round garnish with the quartered apples stewed cabbage and sausages fried is a good dish collops and eggs cut either bacon hung beef or hung mutton into thin slices broil them nicely lay them in a dish before the fire have ready a stew pan of water boiling break as many eggs as you have collops break them one by one in a cup and pour them into the stew pan when the whites of the eggs begin to harden and all look of a clear white take them up one by one in an egg slice and lay them on the collops to dress cold fowl or pigeon cut them in four quarters beat up an egg or two according to what you dress grate a little nutmeg in a little salt some parsley chopped a few crumbs of bread beat them well together dip them in this batter and have ready some dripping hot in a stew pan in which fry them of a fine light brown have ready a little good gravy thickened with a little flour mixed with a spoonful of ketchup lay the fry in the dish and pour the sauce over garnish with lemon and a few mushrooms if you have any a cold rabbit eats well done thus to mince veal cut your veal as fine as possible but do not chop it grate a little nutmeg over it shred a little lemon peel very fine throw a very little salt on it drudge a little flour over it to a large plate of veal take four or five spoonfuls of water let it boil then put in the veal with a piece of butter as big as an egg stir it well together when it is all thorough hot it is enough have ready a very thin piece of bread toasted brown cut it into three corner sippets lay it round the plate and pour in the veal just before you pour it in squeeze in half a lemon or half a spoonful of vinegar garnish with lemon you may put gravy in the room of water if you love it strong but it is better without to fry cold veal cut it in pieces about as thick as half a crown and as long as you please dip them in the yolk of an egg and then in crumbs of bread with a few sweet herbs and shred lemon peel in it grate a little nutmeg over them and fry them in fresh butter the butter must be hot just enough to fry them in in the meantime make a little gravy of the bone of the veal 
when the meat is fried take it out with a fork and lay it in a dish before the fire then shake a little flour into the pan and stir it round then put in a little gravy squeeze in a little lemon and pour it over the veal garnish with lemon to toss up cold veal white cut the veal into little thin bits put milk enough to it for sauce grate in a little nutmeg a very little salt a little piece of butter rolled in flour to half a pint of milk the yolks of two eggs well beat a spoonful of mushroom pickle stir all together till it is thick then pour it into your dish and garnish with lemon cold fowl skinned and done this way eats well or the best end of a cold breast of veal first fry it drain it from the fat then pour this sauce to it to hash cold mutton cut your mutton with a very sharp knife in very little bits as thin as possible then boil the bones with an onion a little sweet herbs a blade of mace a very little whole pepper a little salt a piece of crust toasted very crisp let it boil till there is just enough for sauce strain it and put it into a saucepan with a piece of butter rolled in flour put in the meat when it is very hot it is enough season with pepper and salt have ready some thin bread toasted brown cut three corner ways lay them round the dish and pour in the hash as to walnut pickle and all sorts of pickles you must put in according to your fancy garnish with pickles some love a small onion peeled and cut very small and done in the hash or you may use made gravy if you have not time to boil the bones to hash mutton like venison cut it very thin as above boil the bones as above strain the liquor where there is just enough for the hash to a quarter of a pint of gravy put a large spoonful of red wine an onion peeled and chopped fine a very little lemon peel shred fine a piece of butter as big as a small walnut rolled in flour put it into a saucepan with the meat shake it all together and when it is thoroughly hot pour it into your dish hash beef the same way to make collops of cold beef if you have any cold inside of a sirloin of beef take off all the fat cut it very thin in little bits cut an onion very small boil as much water or gravy as you think will do for sauce season it with a little pepper and salt and a bundle of sweet herbs let the water boil then put in the meat with a good piece of butter rolled in flour shake it round and stir it when the sauce is thick and the meat done take out the sweet herbs and pour it into your dish they do better than fresh meat to make a florentine of veal take two kidneys of veal fat and all and mince them very fine then chop a few herbs and put to it and add a few currants season it with cloves mace nutmeg and a little salt four or five yolks of eggs chopped fine and some crumbs of bread a pippin or two chopped some candied lemon peel cut small a little sack and orange flower water lay a sheet of puff paste at the bottom of your dish and put in the ingredients and cover it with another sheet of puff paste bake it in a slack oven scrape sugar on the top and serve it up hot a salamagundi take two pickled herrings and bone them a handful of parsley four eggs boiled hard the white of one roasted chicken or fowl chop all very fine separately that is the yolks of eggs by themselves and the whites the same scrape some lean boiled ham very fine hung beef or dutch beef scraped turn a small china basin or deep saucer into your dish make some butter into the shape of a pineapple or any other shape you please and set it on the top of the basin or saucer lay round your basin a ring of shred parsley then whites of eggs 
then ham, then chicken, then beef, then yolks of eggs, then herrings, till you have covered the basin and used all your ingredients. Garnish the dish with whole capers and pickles of any sort you choose, chopped fine. Or you may leave out the butter and put the ingredients on and put a flour of any sort at the top or a sprig of myrtle. Another way. Mince veal or fowl very small, a pickled herring boned and picked small, cucumber minced small, apples minced small, an onion peeled and minced small, some pickled red cabbage chopped small, cold pork minced small, or cold duck or pigeons minced small, boiled parsley chopped fine, celery cut small, the yolks of hard eggs chopped small, and the whites chopped small, and either lay all the ingredients by themselves separate on saucers or in heaps in a dish. Dish them out with what pickles you have and sliced lemon nicely cut, and if you can get nasturtium flowers, lay them round it. This is a fine middle dish for supper, but you may always make salamagundi of such things as you have, according to your fancy. The other sorts you have in the chapter of fasts. To make little pasties. Take the kidney of a loin of veal cut very fine, with as much of the fat, the yolks of two hard eggs, seasoned with a little salt and half a small nutmeg. Mix them well together, then roll it well in a puff paste crust. Make three of it, and fry them nicely in hog's lard or butter. They make a pretty little dish for change. You may put in some carrots, and a little sugar and spice, with the juice of an orange, and sometimes apples, first boiled and sweetened with a little juice of lemon, or any fruit you please. Petite pasties for garnishing dishes. Make a short crust, roll it thick, make them as about as big as the bowl of a spoon and about an inch deep. Take a piece of veal, enough to fill the patty, as much bacon and beef suet, shred them all very fine, season them with pepper and salt and a little sweet herbs. Put them into a little stew pan, keep turning them about with a few mushrooms chopped small for eight or ten minutes. Then fill your petty patties and cover them with some crust. Colour them with the yolk of an egg and bake them. Sometimes fill them with oysters for fish, of the melts of the fish pounded, and seasoned with pepper and salt. Fill them with lobsters or what you fancy. They make a fine garnishing and give a dish a fine look. If for a calf's head, the brain seasoned is most proper, and some with oysters. End of section 14section 15 of the art of cookery made plain and easy by hannah glass this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter 5 to dress fish as to boiled fish of all sorts you have full directions in the lent chapter but here we can fry fish much better because we have beef dripping or hog's lard Observe always in the frying of any sort of fish. First, that you dry your fish very well in a clean cloth. Then do your fish in this manner. Beat up the yolks of two or three eggs, according to your quantity of fish. Take a small pastry brush and put the egg on. Shake some crumbs of bread and flour mixed over the fish and then fry it. Let your stew pan you fry them in be very nice and clean, and put in as much beef dripping or hog's lard as will almost cover your fish, and be sure it boils before you put in your fish. Let it fry quick, and let it be of a fine light brown, but not too dark a colour. Have your fish slice ready, and if there is occasion, turn it. When it is enough, take it up and lay a coarse cloth on a dish on which lay your fish to drain all the grease from it if you fry parsley do it quick and take great care to whip it out of the pan as soon as it is crisp 
or it will lose its fine colour. Take great care that your dripping be very nice and clean. You have directions in the eleventh chapter how to make it fit for use, and have it always in readiness. Some love fish in batter, then you must beat an egg fine, and dip your fish in just as you are going to put it in the pan. Or as good a batter as any is a little ale and flour beat up, just as you are ready for it, and dip the fish to fry it. Lobster Sauce Take a fine hen lobster, take out all the spawn, and bruise it in a mortar very fine, with a little butter. Take all the meat out of the claws and tail, and cut it in small square pieces. Put the spawn and meat in a stew pan, with a spoonful of anchovy liquor, and one spoonful of ketchup, a blade of mace, a piece of a stick of horseradish, half a lemon, a gill of gravy, a little butter rolled in flour, just enough to thicken it. Put in half a pound of butter nicely melted. Boil it gently up for six or seven minutes. Take out the horseradish, mace and lemon, and squeeze the juice of the lemon into the sauce. Just simmer it up, and then put it in your boats. Shrimp Sauce Take half a pint of shrimps, wash them very clean, put them in a stew pan with a spoonful of fish leer, or anchovy liquor, a pound of butter melted thick, boil it up for five minutes, and squeeze in half a lemon. Toss it up, and then put it in your cups or boats. To make oyster sauce for fish. Take a pint of large oysters, scald them, and then strain them through a sieve. Wash the oysters very clean in cold water, and take the beards off. Put them in a stew pan, pour the liquor over them, but be careful to pour the liquor gently out of the vessel you have strained it into, and you will leave all the sediment at the bottom, which you must be careful not to put into your stew pan. Then add a large spoonful of anchovy liquor, two blades of mace, half a lemon, some butter rolled in flour, enough to thicken it. Then put in half a pound of butter, boil it up till the butter is melted. Then take out the mace and lemon, squeeze the lemon juice into the sauce, give it a boil up, stir it all the time, and then put it into your boats or basins. Note well, you may put in a spoonful of ketchup or a spoonful of mountain wine. To make anchovy sauce. Take a pint of gravy, put in an anchovy, take a quarter of a pound of butter rolled in a little flour, and stir all together till it boils. You may add a little juice of lemon, ketchup, red wine, and walnut liquor, just as you please. Plain butter melted thick, with a spoonful of walnut pickle or ketchup, is a good sauce, or anchovy. In short, you may put as many things as you fancy into sauce. All other sauce for fish you have in the Lent chapter. To dress a brace of carp. Take a piece of butter and put into a stew pan. Melt it and put in a large spoonful of flour. Keep it stirring till it is smooth. Then put in a pint of gravy and a pint of red port or claret, a little horseradish scraped, eight cloves, four blades of mace, and a dozen corns of allspice. Tie them in a little linen rag, a bundle of sweet herbs, half a lemon, three anchovies, a little onion chopped very fine. Season with pepper, salt, and cayenne pepper to your liking. Stew it for half an hour, then strain it through a sieve into the pan you intend to put your fish in. Let your carp be well cleaned and scaled, then put the fish in with the sauce, and stew them very gently for half an hour. Then turn them, and stew them fifteen minutes longer. Put in along with your fish, some truffles and morels scalded, some pickled mushrooms, an artichoke bottom, and about a dozen large oysters. Squeeze the juice of half a lemon in, stew it five minutes. Then put your carp in your dish and pour all the sauce over. Garnish with fried sippets and the row of the fish done thus. 
beat the roe up well with the yolks of two eggs a little flour a little lemon peel chopped fine some pepper salt and a little anchovy liquor have ready a pan of beef dripping boiling drop the roe in to be about as big as a crown piece fry it of a light brown and put it round the dish with some oysters fried in batter and some scraped horseradish note well stick your fried sippets in the fish you may fry the carp first if you please but the above is the most modern way or if you are in a great hurry while the sauce is making you may boil the fish with spring water half a pint of vinegar a little horseradish and bay leaf put your fish in the dish and pour the sauce over to dress carp or bleu take a brace of carp alive and gut them but not wash nor scale them tie them to a fish strainer and put them into a fish kettle and pour boiling vinegar over till they are blue or you may hold them down in a fish kettle with two forks and another person pour the vinegar over them put in a quart of boiling water a handful of salt some horseradish cut in slices boil them gently twenty minutes put a fish plate in the dish a napkin over that and send them up hot garnish with horseradish boil half a pint of cream and sweeten it with fine sugar for sauce in a boat or basin end of section 15section 16 of the art of cookery made plain and easy by hannah glass this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter 6 of soups and broths to make strong broth for soup or gravy take a shin of beef a knuckle of veal and a scrag of mutton put them in 5 gallons of water then let it boil up skim it clean and season it with six large onions four good leeks four heads of celery two carrots two turnips a bundle of sweet herbs six cloves a dozen corns of allspice and some salt skim it very clean and let it stew gently for six hours then strain it off and put it by for use when you want very strong gravy take a slice of bacon lay it in a stew pan take a pound of beef cut it thin lay it on the bacon slice a good piece of carrot in an onion sliced a good crust of bread a few sweet herbs a little mace cloves nutmeg and whole pepper an anchovy cover it and set it on a slow fire five or six minutes and pour in a quart of the above gravy cover it close and let it boil softly till half is wasted this will be a rich high brown sauce for fish fowl or ragu gravy for white sauce take a pound of any part of the veal cut it into small pieces boil it in a quart of water with an onion a blade of mace two cloves and a few whole peppercorns boil it till it is as rich as you would have it gravy for turkey fowl or ragu take a pound of lean beef cut and hack it well then flour it well put a piece of butter as big as a hen's egg in a stew pan when it is melted put in your beef fry it on all sides a little brown then pour in three pints of boiling water and a bundle of sweet herbs two or three blades of mace three or four cloves twelve whole peppercorns a little bit of carrot a little piece of crust of bread toasted brown cover it close and let it boil till there is about a pint or less season it with salt and strain it off gravy for a fowl when you have no meat nor gravy ready take the neck liver and gizzard boil them in half a pint of water with a little piece of bread toasted brown a little pepper and salt and a little bit of thyme let them boil till there is about a quarter of a pint then pour in half a glass of red wine 
boil it and strain it then bruise the liver well in and strain it again thicken it with a little piece of butter rolled in flour and it will be very good an ox's kidney makes good gravy cut all to pieces and boiled with spice etc as in the foregoing receipts you have a receipt in the beginning of the book in the preface for gravies vermicelli soup take three quarts of the broth and one of the gravy mixed together a quarter of a pound of vermicelli blanched in two quarts of water put it into the soup boil it up for ten minutes and season with salt if it wants any put it in your tureen with a crust of french roll baked macaroni soup take three quarts of the strong broth and one of the gravy mixed together take half a pound of small pipe macaroni and boil it in three quarts of water with a little butter in it till it is tender then strain it through a sieve cut it in pieces of about two inches long put it in your soup and boil it up for ten minutes and then send it to table in a tureen with the crust of a french roll toasted soup cressu take a pound of lean ham and cut it into small bits and put at the bottom of a stew pan then cut a french roll and put over the ham take two dozen heads of celery cut small six onions two turnips one carrot cut and washed very clean six cloves four blades of mace two handfuls of watercresses put them all into the stew pan with a pint of good broth cover them close and sweat it gently for twenty minutes then fill it up with veal broth and stew it four hours rub it through a fine sieve or cloth Put it in your pan again season it with salt and a little cayenne pepper give it a simmer up and send it to table hot with some french roll toasted hard in it boil a handful of cresses till tender in water and put in over the bread to make mutton or veal gravy cut and hack your veal well set it on the fire with water sweet herbs mace and pepper let it boil till it is as good as you would have it then strain it off your fine cooks always if they can chop a partridge or two and put into gravies to make a strong fish gravy take two or three eels or any fish you have skin or scale them gut them and wash them from grit cut them into little pieces put them into a saucepan cover them with water a little crust of bread toasted brown a blade or two of mace and some whole pepper a few sweet herbs and a very little bit of lemon peel let it boil till it is rich and good then have ready a piece of butter according to your gravy if a pint as big as a walnut melt it in the saucepan then shake in a little flour and toss it about till it is brown and then strain in the gravy to it let it boil a few minutes and it will be good to make plum porridge for christmas take a leg and shin of beef put them into eight gallons of water and boil them till they are very tender and when the broth is strong strain it out wipe the pot and put in the broth again then slice six penny loaves thin cut off the top and bottom put some of the liquor to it cover it up and let it stand a quarter of an hour boil it and strain it and then put it into your pot let it boil a quarter of an hour then put in five pounds of currants clean washed and picked let them boil a little and put in five pounds of raisins of the sun stoned and two pounds of prunes and let them boil till they swell then put in three quarters of an ounce of mace half an ounce of cloves two nutmegs all of them beat fine and mix it with a little liquor cold and put them in a very little while and take off the pot 
then put in three pounds of sugar a little salt a quart of sack a quart of claret and the juice of two or three lemons you may thicken with sago instead of bread if you please pour them into earthen pans and keep them for use to make strong broth to keep for use take part of a leg of beef and the scrag end of a neck of mutton break the bones in pieces and put to it as much water as will cover it and a little salt and when it boils skim it clean and put into it a whole onion stuck with cloves a bunch of sweet herbs some pepper and a nutmeg quartered let these boil till the meat is boiled in pieces and the strength boiled out of it strain it out and keep it for use a crawfish soup take a gallon of water and set it a boiling put in it a bunch of sweet herbs three or four blades of mace an onion stuck with cloves pepper and salt then have about two hundred crawfish save about twenty then pick the rest from the shells save the tails whole beat the body and shells in a mortar with a pint of peas green or dry first boiled tender in fair water put your boiling water to it and strain it boiling hot through a cloth till you have all the goodness out of it set it over a slow fire or stew hole have ready a french roll cut very thin and let it be very dry put it to your soup let it stew till half is wasted then put a piece of butter as big as an egg into a saucepan let it simmer till it has done making a noise shake in two teaspoonfuls of flour stirring it about and an onion put in the tails of the fish give them a shake round put to them a pint of good gravy let it boil four or five minutes softly take out the onion and put to it a pint of the soup stir it well together bruise the live spawn of a hen lobster and put it all together and let it simmer very softly a quarter of an hour fry a french roll very nice and brown and the twenty crawfish pour your soup into the dish and lay the roll in the middle and the crawfish round the dish fine cooks boil a brace of carp and tench and maybe a lobster or two and many more rich things to make a crawfish soup but the above is full as good and wants no addition to make soup santé or gravy soup take six good rashers of lean ham put it in the bottom of a stew pan then put over it three pounds of lean beef and over the beef three pounds of lean veal six onions cut in slices two carrots and two turnips sliced two heads of celery and a bundle of sweet herbs six cloves and two blades of mace put a little water at the bottom draw it very gently till it sticks then put in a gallon of boiling water let it stew for two hours season with salt and strain it off then have ready a carrot cut in small slices of two inches long and about as thick as a goose quill a turnip two heads of leeks two heads of celery two heads of endive cut across two cabbage lettuces cut across a very little sorrel and chervil put them in a stew pan and sweat them for fifteen minutes gently then put them in your soup boil it up gently for ten minutes put it in your tureen with a crust of french roll note well you may boil the herbs in two quarts of water for ten minutes if you like them best so your soup will be the clearer or you may take one quart of the broth from page one hundred and twenty five and one of the fowling gravy and boil the herbs that are cut fine in it for a quarter of an hour a green peas soup take a knuckle of veal and one pound of lean ham cut them in thin slices lay the ham at the bottom of a soup pot the veal upon the ham then cut six onions in slices and put on two or three turnips two carrots 
three heads of celery cut small, a little thyme, four cloves, and four blades of mace. Put a little water at the bottom, cover the pot close, and draw it gently, but do not let it stick. Then put in six quarts of boiling water. Let it stew gently for four hours, and skim it well. Take two quarts of green peas, and stew them in some of the broth till tender. Then strain them off, and put them in a marble mortar, and beat them fine. Put the liquor in, and mix them up. If you have no mortar, you must bruise them in the best manner you can. Take a tammy, or a fine cloth, and rub them through till you have rubbed all the pulp out, and then put your soup in a clean pot, with half a pint of spinach juice, and boil it up for fifteen minutes. Season with salt and a little pepper. If your soup is not thick enough, take the crumb of a French roll, and boil it in a little of the soup. Beat it in the mortar, and rub it through your tammy or cloth. Then put it in your soup, and boil it up. Then put it in your tureen, with dice of bread toasted very hard. Another way to make green peas soup. Take a gallon of water, make it boil. Then put in six onions, four turnips, two carrots, and two heads of celery cut in slices, four cloves, four blades of mace, four cabbage lettuces cut small. Stew them for an hour. Then strain it off and put in two quarts of old green peas, and boil them in the liquor till tender. Then beat or bruise them, and mix them up with the broth, and rub them through a tammy or cloth, and put it in a clean pot, with half a pint of spinach juice, and boil it up fifteen minutes. Season with pepper and salt to your liking. Then put your soup in your tureen, with small dices of bread, toasted very hard. A peas soup for winter. Take about four pounds of lean beef, cut it in small pieces, about a pound of lean bacon or pickled pork, set it on the fire with two gallons of water, let it boil and skim it well. Then put in six onions, two turnips, one carrot and four heads of celery cut small and put in a quart of split peas. Boil it gently for three hours. Then strain them through a sieve, and rub the peas well through. Then put your soup in a clean pot, and put in some dried mint rubbed very fine to powder. Cut the white of four heads of celery, and two turnips in dices, and boil them in a quart of water for fifteen minutes. Then strain them off and put them in your soup. Take about a dozen small rashers of bacon fried and put them into your soup. Season with pepper and salt to your liking. Boil it up for 15 minutes. Then put it in your tureen with dices of bread fried very crisp. Another way to make it. When you boil a leg of pork or a good piece of beef, save the liquor. When it is cold, take off the fat. The next day, boil a leg of mutton, save the liquor, and when it is cold, take off the fat. Set it on the fire with two quarts of peas. Let them boil till they are tender. Then put in the pork or beef liquor, with the ingredients as above, and let it boil till it is as thick as you would have it, allowing for the boiling again. Then strain it off, and add the ingredients as above. You may make your soup of veal or mutton gravy if you please, that is according to your fancy. A chestnut soup. Take half a hundred of chestnuts, pick them, put them in an earthen pan, and set them in the oven half an hour, or roast them gently over a slow fire, but take care they do not burn. Then peel them, and set them to stew in a quart of good beef, veal, or mutton broth, till they are quite tender. In the meantime, take a piece or slice of ham or bacon, a pound of veal, a pigeon beat to pieces, a bundle of sweet herbs, an onion, a little pepper and mace, and a piece of carrot. 
lay the bacon at the bottom of a stew pan and lay the meat and ingredients at top set it over a slow fire till it begins to stick to the pan then put in a crust of bread and pour in two quarts of broth let it boil softly till one third is wasted then strain it off and add it to the chestnuts season it with salt and let it boil till it is well tasted stew two pigeons in it and fry a french roll crisp lay the roll in the middle of the dish and the pigeons on each side pour in the soup and send it away hot hare soup take and cut a large hare into pieces and put it into an earthen mug with three blades of mace two large onions a little salt a red herring half a dozen large morels a pint of red wine and three quarts of water bake it three hours in a quick oven and then strain it into a stew pan have ready boiled four ounces of french barley and put in just scald the liver and rub it through a sieve with a wooden spoon put it into the soup set it over the fire and keep it stirring but it must not boil send it up with crisp bread in it soup a la reine take a pound of lean ham and cut it small and put it at the bottom of a soup pot cut a knuckle of veal into pieces and put in and an old fowl cut in pieces put three blades of mace four onions six heads of celery two turnips one carrot a bundle of sweet herbs washed clean put in half a pint of water and cover it close and sweat it gently for half an hour but be careful it don't burn for that will spoil it then pour in boiling water enough to cover it and let it stew till all the goodness is out then strain it into a clean pan and let it stand half an hour to settle then skim it well and pour it off the settlings into a clean pan boil half a pint of cream and pour upon the crumbs of a halfpenny roll and let it soak well take half a pound of almonds blanch them and beat them in a marble mortar as fine as you can putting now and then a little cream to keep them from oiling take the yolks of six hard eggs and the roll and cream and put to the almonds and beat them up together in your broth rub it through a fine hair sieve or cloth till all the goodness is rubbed through and put it in a stew pan keep stirring it till it boils and skim off the froth as it rises season with salt and then pour it into your tureen with three slices of french roll crisped before the fire to make mutton broth take a neck of mutton about six pounds cut it into two boil the scrag in a gallon of water skim it well then put in a little bundle of sweet herbs an onion and a good crust of bread let it boil an hour then put in the other part of the mutton a turnip or two some dried marigolds a few scythes chopped fine a little parsley chopped small then put these in about a quarter of an hour before your broth is enough season it with salt or you may put in a quarter of a pound of barley or rice at first some love it thickened with oatmeal and some with bread and some love it seasoned with mace instead of sweet herbs and onion all this is fancy and different palates if you boil turnips for sauce do not boil all in the pot it makes the broth too strong of them but boil them in a saucepan beef broth take a leg of beef crack the bone in two or three parts wash it clean put it into a pot with a gallon of water skim it well then put in two or three blades of mace a little bundle of parsley and a good crust of bread let it boil till the beef is quite tender and the sinews toast some bread and cut it in dice and put it in your tureen lay in the meat and pour the soup in to make scotch barley broth take a leg of beef chop it all to pieces 
boil it in three gallons of water with a piece of carrot and a crust of bread till it is half boiled away then strain it off and put it into the pot again with half a pound of barley four or five heads of celery washed clean and cut small a large onion a bundle of sweet herbs a little parsley chopped small and a few marigolds let this boil an hour take a cock or a large fowl clean picked and washed and put into the pot boil it till the broth is quite good then season with salt and send it to table with the fowl in the middle this broth is very good without the fowl take out the onion and sweet herbs before you send it to table some make this broth with a sheep's head instead of a leg of beef and it is very good but you must chop the head all to pieces the thick flank about six pounds to six quarts of water makes good broth then put the barley in with the meat first skim it well boil it an hour very softly then put in the above ingredients with turnips and carrots clean scraped and pared and cut in little pieces boil all together softly till the broth is very good then season it with salt and send it to table with the beef in the middle turnips and carrots round and pour the broth over all to make hodge podge take a piece of beef fat and lean together about a pound of veal a pound of scrag of mutton cut all into little pieces set it on the fire with two quarts of water an ounce of barley an onion a little bundle of sweet herbs three or four heads of celery washed clean and cut small a little mace two or three cloves some whole pepper tied all in a muslin rag and put to the meat three turnips pared and cut in two a large carrot scraped clean and cut in six pieces a little lettuce cut small put all in the pot and cover it close let it stew very softly over a slow fire five or six hours take out the spice sweet herbs and onion and pour all into a soup dish and send it to table first season it with salt half a pint of green peas when it is the season for them is very good if you let this boil fast it will waste too much therefore you cannot do it too slow if it does but simmer all other stews you have in the foregoing chapter and soups in the chapter of lent hodgepodge of mutton take a neck of mutton of about six pounds cut about two pounds of the best end whole cut the rest into chops put them into a stew pan or little pot put in two large onions whole two heads of celery four turnips whole a carrot cut in pieces a small savoy or cabbage all washed clean stew it gently till you have drawn all the gravy out but be sure it don't burn put in about three quarts of boiling water and let it stew gently for three hours put in a spoonful of browning and season it with salt skim off all the fat clean put your meat in a soup dish and put the herbs over and pour the soup over all garnish with toasted sippets you put only the best end and leave out the chops partridge soup take two large old partridges skin them and cut them into pieces with three or four slices of ham a little celery and three large onions cut in slices fry them in butter till they are brown be sure not to burn them then put them to three quarts of boiling water with a few peppercorns and a little salt stew it very gently for two hours then strain it and put some stewed celery and fried bread serve it up hot in a tureen to make portable soup take two legs of beef of about fifty pounds weight take off all the skin and fat as well as you can then take all the meat and sinews clean from the bones which meat put into a large pot and put it to eight or nine gallons of soft water 
first make it boil then put in twelve anchovies an ounce of mace a quarter of an ounce of cloves an ounce of whole pepper black and white together six large onions peeled and cut in two a little bundle of thyme sweet marjoram and winter savoury the dry hard crust of a tuppenny loaf stir it all together and cover it close lay a weight on the cover to keep it close down and let it boil softly for eight or nine hours then uncover it and stir it together cover it close again and let it boil till it is a very rich good jelly which you will know by taking a little out now and then and letting it cool when you think it is a thick jelly take it off strain it through a coarse hair bag and press it hard then strain it through a hair sieve into a large earthen pan when it is quite cold take off the scum and fat and take the fine jelly clear from the settlings at bottom and then put the jelly into a large deep well tinned stew pan set it over a stove with a slow fire keep stirring it often and take great care it neither sticks to the pan or burns when you find the jelly very stiff and thick as it will be in lumps about the pan take it out and put it into large deep china cups or well glazed earthenware fill the pan two-thirds full of water and when the water boils set it in your cups be sure no water gets into the cups and keep the water boiling softly all the time till you find the jelly is like a stiff glue take out the cups and when they are cool turn out the glue into a coarse new flannel let it lay eight or nine hours keeping it in a dry warm place turning every two hours and then put it into the sun till it is quite hard and dry put it into tin boxes with a piece of writing paper between each piece and keep them in a dry place when you use it pour boiling water on it and stir it all the time till it is melted season with salt to your palate a piece as big as a large walnut will make a pint of water very rich but as to that you are to make it as good as you please if for soup fry a french roll and lay it in the middle of the dish and when the glue is dissolved in the water give it a boil and pour it into the dish if you choose it for a change you may boil either rice or barley vermicelli celery cut small or truffles or morels but let them be very tenderly boiled in the water before you stir in the glue and then give it a boil altogether you may when you would have it very fine add forcemeat balls coxcombs or a palate boiled very tender and cut into little bits but it will be very rich and good without any of these ingredients if for gravy pour the boiling water onto what quantity you think proper and when it is dissolved add what ingredients you please as in other sauces this is only in the room of a rich good gravy you may make your sauce either weak or strong by adding more or less or you may make it of veal or of mutton the same way rules to be observed in making soups or broths first take great care the pots or saucepans and covers be very clean and free from all grease and sand and that they be well tinned for fear of giving the broths and soups any brassy taste if you have time to stew as softly as you can it will both have a finer flavour and the meat will be tenderer but then observe when you make soups or broths for present use if it is to be done softly do not put much more water than you intend to have soup or broth and if you have the convenience of an earthen pan or pipkin set it on wood embers till it boils then skim it and put in your seasoning cover it close and set it on embers so that it may do very softly for some time and both the meat and broths will be delicious you must observe in all broths and soups 
that one thing does not taste more than another, but that the taste be equal, and it has a fine agreeable relish, according to what you design it for and you must be sure that all the greens and herbs you put in be cleaned washed and picked end of section sixteen section seventeen of the art of cookery made plain and easy by hannah glass this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter seven of puddings an oat pudding to bake of oats decorticated take two pounds and new milk enough to drown it eight ounces of raisins of the sun stoned an equal quantity of currants neatly picked a pound of sweet suet finely shred six new laid eggs well beat season with nutmeg beaten ginger and salt Mix it all well together. It will make a better pudding than rice. To make a calf's foot pudding. Take of calf's feet one pound minced very fine, the fat and the brown to be taken out, a pound and a half of suet, pick off all the skin and shred it small. Six eggs, but half the whites. Beat them well, the crumb of a halfpenny roll grated, a pound of currants clean picked and washed and rubbed in a cloth milk as much as will moisten it with the eggs a handful of flour a little salt nutmeg and sugar to season it to your taste boil it nine hours with your meat when it is done lay it in your dish and pour melted butter over it it is very good with white wine and sugar in the butter to make a pith pudding take a quantity of the pith of an ox and let it lie all night in water to soak out the blood the next morning strip it out of the skin and beat it with the back of a spoon in orange water till it is as fine as pap then take three pints of thick cream and boil in it two or three blades of mace a nutmeg quartered a stick of cinnamon then take half a pound of the best jordan almonds blanched in cold water then beat them with a little of the cream and as it dries put in more cream and when they are all beaten strain the cream from them to the pith then take the yolks of ten eggs the white of but two beat them very well and put them to the ingredients take a spoonful of grated bread or naples biscuit mingle all these together with half a pound of fine sugar and the marrow of four large bones and a little salt fill them in a small ox or hog's guts or bake in a dish with a puff paste under it and round the edges to make a marrow pudding take a quart of cream or milk and a quarter of a pound of naples biscuit put them on the fire in a stew pan and boil them up then take the yolks of eight eggs the whites of four beat up very fine a little moist sugar some marrow chopped mix all well together and put them on the fire keep it stirring till it is thick then take it off the fire and keep stirring it till it is cold when it is almost cold put in a small glass of brandy one of sack and a spoonful of orange flower water then have ready your dish rimmed with puff paste put your stuff in sprinkle some currants that have been well washed in cold water and rubbed clean in a cloth some marrow cut in slices and some candied lemon orange and citron cut in shreds and send it to the oven three quarters of an hour will bake it send it up hot a boiled suet pudding take a quart of milk four spoonfuls of flour a pound of suet shred small four eggs one spoonful of beaten ginger a teaspoonful of salt mix the eggs and flour with a pint of the milk very thick and with the seasoning mix in the rest of the milk and suet let your batter be pretty thick and boil it two hours 
a boiled plum pudding take a pound of suet cut in little pieces not too fine a pound of currants and a pound of raisins stoned eight eggs half the whites half a nutmeg grated and a teaspoonful of beaten ginger a pound of flour a pint of milk beat the eggs first then half the milk beat them together and by degrees stir in the flour then the suet spice and fruit and as much milk as will mix it well together very thick boil it five hours a hunting pudding take ten eggs the whites of six and all the yolks beat them up well with half a pint of cream six spoonfuls of flour one pound of beef suet chopped small a pound of currants well washed and picked a pound of jar raisins stoned and chopped small two ounces of candied citron orange and lemon shred fine put two ounces of fine sugar a spoonful of rose water and a glass of brandy half a nutmeg grated mix all well together tie it up in a cloth and boil it four hours be sure to put it in when the water boils and kept it boiling all the time turn it out into a dish and garnish with powder sugar a yorkshire pudding take a quart of milk and five eggs beat them up well together and mix them with flour till it is of a good pancake batter and very smooth put in a little salt some grated nutmeg and ginger butter a dripping or frying pan and put it under a piece of beef or mutton or a loin of veal that is roasting and then put in your batter and when the top side is brown cut it in square pieces and turn it and then let the underside be brown then put it in a hot dish as clean of fat as you can and send it to table hot vermicelli pudding take a quarter of a pound of vermicelli and boil it in a pint of milk till it is tender with a stick of cinnamon then take out the cinnamon and put in half a pint of cream a quarter of a pound of butter melted a quarter of a pound of sugar with the yolks of four eggs well beat put it in a dish with or without paste round the rim and bake it three quarters of an hour or if you like it for variety you may add half a pound of currants clean washed and picked or a handful of marrow chopped fine or both a steak pudding make a good crust with suet shred fine with flour and mix it up with cold water season it with a little salt and make a pretty stiff crust about two pounds of suet to a quarter of a peck of flour let your steaks be either beef or mutton well seasoned with pepper and salt make it up as you do an apple pudding tie it in a cloth and put it into the water boiling if it be a large pudding it will take five hours if a small one three hours this is the best crust for an apple pudding pigeons eat well this way suet dumplings take a pint of milk four eggs a pound of suet and a pound of currants two teaspoonfuls of salt three of ginger first take half the milk and mix it like a thick batter then put the eggs and the salt and ginger then the rest of the milk by degrees with the suet and currants and flour to make it like a light paste when the water boils make them in rolls as big as a large turkey's egg with a little flour then flat them and throw them into boiling water move them softly that they do not stick together keep the water boiling all the time and half an hour will boil them an oxford pudding a quarter of a pound of biscuit grated a quarter of a pound of currants clean washed and picked a quarter of a pound of suet shred small half a large spoonful of powder sugar a very little salt and some grated nutmeg mix all well together then take two yolks of eggs and make it up in balls as big as a turkey's egg fry them in fresh butter of a fine light brown for sauce have melted butter and sugar with a little sack or white wine 
you must mind to keep the pan shaking about that they may be all of a fine light brown all other puddings you have in the lent chapter rules to be observed in making puddings etc in boiled puddings take great care the bag or cloth be very clean not soapy but dipped in hot water and well floured if a bread pudding tie it loose if a batter pudding tie it close and be sure the water boils when you put the pudding in and you should move the puddings in the pot now and then for fear they stick when you make a batter pudding first mix the flour well with a little milk then put in the ingredients by degrees and it will be smooth and not have lumps but for a plain batter pudding the best way is to strain it through a coarse hair sieve that it may neither have lumps nor the treadles of the eggs and for all other puddings strain the eggs when they are beat if you boil them in wooden bowls or china dishes butter the inside before you put in your batter and for all baked puddings butter the pan or dish before the pudding is put in End of section 17